And uh, the next uh, bit of controversy we'll talk about after the break. Ah, uh, nice to We'll show you how ridiculous regular radio has become. We love yeah. being back on regular radio. I'm not going to lie to you, but God, it, but it's so ridiculous. But there are certain aspects of it that are a bit frustrating. Everyone is talking about this Kramer thing today. Everybody. Yep. Everybody. The Daily News has KKK -K -K Raymer. KKK Kramer, right? Yeah, it's KKK -K -K Raymer. Right. <laughs> like he's like he's in the clan. But see, for the see the company uh, we work for, we're not allowed to say the N word over here. Yeah, they're very... It has nothing very, to do with the FCC, by the way. Very, very nervous about that word being used in any context, even if it's to report a story that everybody's talking about. It's not used as a hateful uh, speech. It's just, it's reporting what was said, what everyone knows. Everyone knows the word that was used. Everyone knows everything. Uh, but, you know, in order to play the clip and then maybe do a little, little comedy, a little fun with it, uh, uh, taboo. And, and and the thing that's annoying is I guarantee you black hosts, and again, we've talked about not being allowed to say the N-word. Most times you don't need it, but in this case, it's legitimate to really need it to, you know... You yeah, you really need it to make like the impact of the story. The N -word. Yeah, yeah. It's a real thing, and it really happened, and if it was a black host, they would allow it. This is a purely a corporate thing, and it's not it's not the FCC. Yeah, I got a message to Joel Hollander. You got to push back with these lawyers. You got to push back with these lawyers, or you're going to... You're, 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 the business is going to be ruined. Yeah. Your own lawyers are effing up talk radio. They're dooming You it. want a show like ours that are going to talk about the topics of the day. This is one of the biggest stories. It's the lead story on all the morning shows this morning. It almost made the front page of the New York Papers. It's on page three. you got to push back yeah. with the lawyers. I'm telling you. Don't worry. We're not doing stuff There's that the sorts... FCC is going to swoop in and fine and take away license for. It's not anything about that. It's the, the, your, 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 your own lawyers that have just castrated uh, talk radio. And you've allowed it. Yeah. And believe me, if it was Kike or if it was any other uh, Dago, uh, a WAP, anything else, Mick, mm -hmm. you'd allow us to talk about it and do anything. But because it's nigger, we can't say it oh, because that's it terrible. Guaranteed, it's gone. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, they just dumped out of here. Of course I, they did. You know, Joel, you got to wake up, man. I'm telling you, there's all sorts of competition out there. And you yep. want a talk show that's going to talk about the, the issues of the day. Here's a huge story. And, and your and your your top show we can, we're we're cash, we we can't use the word yeah not that, allowed you know how ridiculous that is we, we should we have to report it like Good Morning America why would you listen to this show when you can go to Good Morning America and here's the, the same stupid coverage yeah and they give it a little disclaimer what you might be hearing right uh, what yeah. you uh, hear might offend you the language in the next segment might offend some people so please you know to, and then they can play it. Satellite radio is creeping up, and there's a reason for it. You know, later on this morning, we're going to do the same exact story, and trust me, we're, 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 we're going to have no rules. We're going to have no rules over there. I bet that got dumb, too. We're going to have no corporate rules. Yeah, it's kidding. happened before. Huh? Are you kidding? Yeah, no, I'm not kidding. They I, would dump that if we said that? They better Yeah, not. yeah, I bet they'd... They better not. It's a, it's a, it's, it's a message. they got to get the message. It's a huge story. Wow. We should be allowed to talk about it. And then we got some kind of rules where, like, if Patrice is in studio because he's black, he could say maybe once, maybe twice. Yeah, it's a, a weird Nonsense. double standard based on nothing but lawyers in, in a room somewhere. What, the advertisers the hell? are not going to leave. Huh? The advertisers are not going to leave. Not under that circumstance. No. It's, no, not, under... it's not like we're going on the, uh, the show today and we just feel like saying the word over and over again. Yeah. And, and doing, you know, maybe just... You know, off-color jokes about it or something. Yeah. We're, you know, we're discussing it. Discussing if, a huge story. Or if you're saying it in anger, like if a caller calls up and you're and you you fire it at him angrily, that's different. It's a, it's right. a different intent, and everybody knows. It's different. Yep. All right, well, that's what the lawyers are just you just garbage. Yeah, you're it's like garbage. They take one circumstance that might come up, like Jimmy just said. Some guy calls up and you get pissed at him and you just throw the word out, which you know we wouldn't do. Would not do. But the lawyers see that and say, all right, since that might happen, ban the word from ever being used ever. in any context. And it's like, oh, come on already. Which, by the way, come gives on. the word so much more power. Yeah. Why, it, why are you powering these words? They're just words in the end. I don't even care what we talk about it over here. It would be able to be funny with it on, on XM. Some things you can't do on Terrestrial. All right, yeah. why don't we, uh, we'll take a break. We'll get into it. Uh, Kramer did apologize on Letterman last night. There's... Oh. Anthony stayed up and watched. Yeah, very, very tired today. I uh, I could not 
resist watching. And, uh, oh, my God, it was uncomfortable. All right, we'll get into the whole controversy and, next. And by the way, I bet you that they'll, they'll say N-word on TV. I bet you that they will. Uh, yeah, they will. They're bleepy. They won't even write it. I'm watching TV right now. He's an N star, 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 star. Star, 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 star. Star, 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 star. Wait. Wait. He's a navigator. N star, 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 star. N star, double G star, star. <laughs> no. Yes. No. No. You and can't was, do that. There was a murder committed in in uh, in in, in Iraq, Chappaqua, which oh. really bothered. Me. Oh, the comic. Really, really. All right, we'll get into that too. Everything that is wrong with us. We got a lot to do. Also, uh, the top ten worst toys this holiday season. Number one, of course, the uh, the talking uh, Kramer doll. Talking Kramer doll. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So yeah, bad one. <laughs> you want to make you don't sure you don't get that. That one. <laughs> want to make sure you don't get that one for your kids. Yikes! Uh, this holiday season, this Kramer thing is getting out of hand. Well, it's very hard to report, but uh, yeah, other other uh, uh, the the TV news stations uh, are using transcripts, and then uh, like Jimmy saw before. It says N star 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 star. Did I get the right amount of stars? One more. Uh, and and star, we got to use the star, N word. Star star. star. Got to say the N word. You know and what? We were, we were we were saying. Could we go to maybe the N I word? Can you say the N I word? Just so no one confuses it with like navigator or you know something like that. Yeah. Everyone else says the N word. We're gonna say the N I. The N I word. <laughs> that way, at least you, you're a little. You got a little more knowledge there, a little more input, and you might actually know what we're talking about. Can you say the N I G dot 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 word? No, I bet. I bet. Why not? not? That could be night. Could be night crawler. It could. In some cases, it is. <laughs> I don't think Kramer was yelling at a guy in a suit of armor, though. <laughs> Well, he was yelling at a worm, <laughs> trying to do some fishing. So uh, where do we begin with this? Everyone knows the story by now, uh, you know. Oh yeah, uh, Mr. Richards there hasn't done much since Seinfeld, season no. seven, by the way, available on DVD, just in time for the holiday. Just in time for all this hoopla. You know, I got a thought about this. Jerry told Kramer to create some controversy to help the sales of the. Season 7 DVD. You know, you read message boards and, and uh, <laughs> blogs. There are people that actually believe that this is all a staged thing between, you know, the Seinfeld cast uh, to sell more yes. of the just-released Season 7 DVD. Well, what happened is the Seinfeld cast... Uh, was going to uh, a fake a plane crash into the Pentagon, and when they couldn't pull that off, right. they decided to do this yeah. uh, because you have to get some kind of a buzz going. These idiots out there. They just want something to be happening yeah. beyond what they can see. Kramer, call people. <laughs> 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 Who are these? <laughs> and, uh, Elaine, you go after the. <laughs> and uh, I'm going to go after the. And Kramer, Kramer, go after that. <laughs> <laughs> We've got to boost sales of the DVDs. Got to boost sales. How did season six sell? Uh, go after that. <laughs> <laughs> I like to trail off. <laughs> well, Making a bit. I'm trying. Uh, let's see how to Tony in Pennsylvania. Tony, what's up? Hey, boys, what's going on? Hey, Tony. Hey, I saw that video last night. I just wanted to ask Jim, uh, being that he's a comic, like, what happened on stage there? Was he was he trying for a joke and he got flustered? What do you think happened? I don't know. Um, first of all, every comic has wanted to yell out at an audience member at one point. Oh. It's the most hurtful, awful thing you can do. Yeah. It's a woman you want to drop the C-bomb. Um, no matter what's going on as a comedian, there are times where you just want to hurt an audience member. And I worked the Laugh Factory in L.A. It's 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 a tough room, Jimmy. Huh? It, it, I mean, it's, it's the type of room you can murder in. You can really kill. It's, it's built to destroy in. I mean, it's a it's a good a club to perform in, but the crowds don't typically like me. Uh, you got to explain though. It has a balcony, which is a very balcony very up rare up. for a comedy club. You have the audience in front of you, and then there's a balcony up, and you can see Richards was looking up to the left and yelling into the balcony. I believe that's where yeah. the heckler was. 
it, it just seemed like he had nothing. Well, I don't know what was going on, though. What was the guy yelling? Was the guy saying the N-word himself? There were black guys. The guy going, yo, I, I, you know, yo, man, this this nigga ain't funny. He, I said it. Get dumped. There's nothing I can do about it. Um, or was uh, the guy saying something like, uh, yo, white boy, you're not funny. Was the guy being racial at all, uh, either uh, against Michael Richards, or was the guy just being a, a douche and Richards snapped? I don't know. Yeah, it seemed at first that uh, Richards was uh, trying to be uh, profound with the with the whole "it's just a word, man" thing, but then uh, it just turned into what seemed to be uh, just just yelling a racial wait, epithet wait, at somebody. Did, did he use the word during his act, or when he got flustered? And people started heckling him, and then that's how he fought back. I don't know. I don't know because we don't know what the beginning of the tape was. But well, we got to get Jamie on the phone. We got the owner of uh, uh, Laugh Factory calling the show today. He also owns the Laugh Factory here in New York. I didn't know where it was at first. I'm like, oh yeah, Mike Richards in L.A. Um, Jamie Masada, who was uh, he was like he was like kind of in, in the Michael Jackson case too. He introduced the, the kid to Michael. He did some weird thing. Oof. I don't know how Jamie gets that Laugh Factory sign up, but man, he's a marketing. <laughs> hey, have you ever seen uh, Michael Richards perform? No, Maybe? he was supposed to do it. I was doing uh, the improv one night, and he was supposed to come in, and for whatever reason, he canceled the last minute. So I've never seen him on stage. We'll get the owner of the meeting. Wolf. Did he have a meeting? <laughs> yeah, we'll get the owner of the Laugh Factory on at seven thirty today. Okay, Jamie. Yeah. Jamie will be calling the show. Uh, well, here, I mean. You know, here's the actual set. It's only a couple minutes. We got two parts here. Yeah, it's gonna be bleep to crap because you know lawyers uh, <laughs> know what makes good radio. Yeah, they do. Just keep listening. Oh, to lawyers. what is that about? This is a display in a store window that was <laughs> that was stopped. It's some kind oh my of God. Nazi gingerbread display at a hardware store that uh, <laughs> had to be taken down. Just incredible. Why would anyone have a Nazi gingerbread display? I don't know. Apparently, this guy is one of these like artistic people and does controversial art. All right. So he uh, made a gingerbread oh, village it's that just, looked like uh, Hitler at Nuremberg giving the speeches. It's just brilliant. Complete with Nazi flags and everything. How do you think that's going to be received? <laughs> you know what? No. But I'm so... I'm but it's gingerbread. <laughs> they're so delicious. No, they're not. Gingerbread stinks. I they love, love gingerbread, gingerbread. Bread. You take that back. No. You know, like ginger snaps? No, it's, it's G, the G word. The, no, the G word. They they look adorable, but they taste like crap. Look at that. It's on this uh, TV now. <laughs> it's a big highlight. It, it, looks, yeah. it looks like Cartman as Hitler. <laughs> yeah. It's a little gingerbread Hitler. See, what I love about this is uh, we're getting so politically correct that when someone just goes completely the other way, it just makes me laugh uncontrollably. Yeah. And it makes the news. Yeah. Instantly. Yeah. Look at that book. That's Ro Frosty the Jew hater. There's no reason. <laughs> no. No. Can we get the story with the, uh, with the, the Nazi, Nazi uh, gingerbread, gingerbread. <laughs> cookies or whatever? What do you think people are going to do when they see that? Go, well, it's cute. Aw, now that's what Christmas is all about. <laughs> hey, man. It's tough out there if you're a small business owner. Now everyone knows uh, what this guy's about. That's what it is. God bless him. All right, Michael Richards at the Laugh Factory in L.A. Uh, here we go. Dane's home club, by the way. This is Dane Cook's home club in Los Angeles. Oh, really? Yeah. Ooh. Shut up! 50 years ago, you had your own tied down with a f***ing fork up your <laughs> <laughs> Now, okay. All right. That's kind of funny. Got a big laugh. That at least is, um, like, it's such, it's completely outrageous, but the the imagery and everything is uh, ridiculous, and, and it got a laugh. So, you know, you thought, okay, he's going to do some cutting-edge racial uh, humor. No, 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 no. At this point, he wasn't doing it. He was just... Just taking on the audience. He got lucky with a good one. He got lucky. Yeah, yeah. He got so pissed off, he went after the heckler, and he got a big laugh there. This was not part of his act. That was this a little was, more fuel. This was him just fighting back, and then uh, and then it just goes from here. That was yeah. a little more fuel for the fire. Let me tell you something. When you're on stage, I, every comic has wanted to do this. And I don't mean with blacks or Jews. You, you've wanted to just unload the most vile thing you possibly can. Yeah. And uh, it's unfortunate you got to grovel and apologize. It's only a moment in your life. It doesn't mean anything. That's what it is to... When you're pissed at somebody uh, and you don't know them from a hole in the wall, you can't pick out something uh, personal about them because you don't know them. You're, you're pissed at an anonymous stranger on the street because of something or in a club as a heckler or in any situation where you don't know this person personally. What do you got to work with? You're looking at them. So all you have to work with is their looks, what they are, 
uh, uh, what they look like. So you dredge up the most hurtful thing you can find. Right. Hey, you, you fat bastard. Hey, you, you friggin' look at you, you cross-eyed son of a bitch. Like, you, you find the most hurtful thing, and that's what you use. With black people, it's the N-word. That's what you use. I'm not saying it's the the right thing to do. I think there's a, a circuit breaker in your head that is supposed to trip and keep you from doing that. But it at least goes through the people's heads. There, I, I don't care who you are. If someone wrongs you, you're gonna you're gonna pick whatever you can to hurt them the most, whether you say it or not. Yes. It's gonna be in your head. The most liberal thinking person, if they get almost killed by somebody that's black, it's at least gonna pop. The word is gonna pop in your head. You're going to go for the jugular, basically. Right, because that's human nature. Yeah. Hey, this is coming in a lot. I don't know how true this is. Boys, a friend was at the show and said that uh, the two black guys were heckling him. Kramer said something stupid, and they told him, uh, shut, uh, sh told him, shut his cracker ass up. That's when Kramer started calling them uh, the N-word. Oh. You see, he should have just, if, if that's the truth, if it was just, ah, shut your cracker ass up. C-word. C that's not a harsh enough thing to merit that response, to be honest with you. Because that was, a, like, well, the, the, one, the first line, fine. But then they just keep going with it. So if, if that's all that happened, if it was one stupid line like that, it's like, come on, man, you got to know how to hit back. Unfortunately for black people, they, they really don't have that atomic bomb of words to use well maybe they uh, do with oh, whitey i almost stole a joke you've used <laughs> oh <laughs> maybe they do i say this today i say this today let's have the black uh Fine. let's have let's have some of the black listeners call up uh with the uh the the atom bomb for let, me white people. let me correct that let's have the black listener call up <laughs> the one black listener yeah, yeah where is he yeah someone wake him up because i'm sure he has another day off because <laughs> we've all heard them. You should give out the number because some people might not uh, be just be kind of casual listeners. Uh, one eight six six three one three free. What is the atom bomb for white people? See, see, we don't care what you call us. Son in law. That's the difference. We don't care what you call us. <laughs> yeah, we it really we don't have any words that really are. Uh... Uh, the biggie, the big one. It's hard when you've been dominant. I guess that's what it is. I mean, I'm not saying white people haven't kind of brought on themselves, uh, them like themselves, but me too, uh, by abusing the word. It's not like it's not like it's an innocent word that white people are now victimized. We can't use it. Sorry, geez, so sorry to be white. So sorry to you know know how to make a wrench and then turn it and make a wheel and and make cars and and, and build wonderful things for the world. Instead of putting tires full of gasoline around each other's necks and lighting it on fire or hacking each other apart with a, uh, a machete uh, because uh, you're, you're of a, a different country. Absolutely. Or, 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 uh, or massacring six million Jews. Oh, bad. Oh, well, right. yeah. There people, All right. There have that. been a couple of instances like, in history no, where whitey has gone a little crazy. Why do white people get blamed for everything? It's not like white people slaughtered the American Indians. Uh, did we really? Oh, yeah, we did. They were we after were the first each terrorists. other. Let me tell you we something. We were the first terrorists. Were the we. American Indians were very much like Africa right now. Very territorial, very uh, warlike, and uh, they they would beat the crap out of each other for a long time before we got here. You're right, but they, we kind of did white people kind of yeah. came along with ah, We just gave the old express. <laughs> the old yeah, express here, extinction. The old slate cleaner. Right. <laughs> Here's the difference, though. They old took... Whitey was able to build a train that we could shoot out the windows yeah. of. Have Here's the right. difference, though. They, they took care of each other, and they, they fought each other, but they continued to flourish. Did they? Absolutely. We, and would we they have? We completely wiped them out. Don't say we. we the didn't do Travoy. It. We stop. We completely Invent wiped them out. Invent wheels and stop dragging crap. We did that. <laughs> I agree. Ugh. Before that. Stupid Travoy. Who said white people invented the wheel, by the way? I don't know where that was. I did. <laughs> I have a mic in front of me, and I know it had to be some white guy that decided this rolls better. Probably Africa or Asia. I, gotta, I hate to play devil's advocate, but the wheel has been around for a while, yeah. long before. I, I'd have to say. I would say Dr. Yaka, the cradle of civilization, case. Mesopotamia. Nope. Jersey. Big Bigfoot. <laughs> Jersey. Bigfoot invented the wheel. Bigfoot invented Bigfoot the wheel. Bigfoot doesn't have a wheel. Bigfoot oh. invented the wheel. I will not even stand for that. Bigfoot invented the wheel. Then why isn't Bigfoot driving or riding on his wheel? Because his feet are too big for the gas pedals. That's right. He's hiding. He can't fit in it. <laughs> it's previous. in the garage. The batteries won't charge. <laughs> He's hiding in the Pacific Northwest. No, if Steve, were, if Steve were in the Northwest, he'd be big dope. <laughs> big. And he understands how flawed we are. Big so, arms. So he decides to continue to hide.
but he's got a wheel. This but he has a wheel guy. out there. The Sasquatch is a queer. <laughs> yeah, I, I dare the, the S word to come after me. <laughs> <laughs> Kick him right in his Yeti bag. <laughs> <laughs> How many names do you need for this stupid thing? Exactly. You know, Harry Beast. I, I gotta agree with you though. Yetis are queer. Oh, they're the worst. Big the foot. Yeti. The abominable Big, snow. Isn't man. the Yeti the snow one? Yeah. yeah. Well, the, the white. The, the, the one. white one. Yeah, oh, the white one. Yeah. Now he probably has a wheel. Uh, <laughs> just hangs out in the snow. No, no, he has a, not the Bigfoot. No, he has a snowmobile. That's how he's already up to snowmobile. Yeah, he has to have the snowmobile. That's good. But Bigfoot. Yeah. It's all about Bigfoot. You ever hear that? Uh, see it on YouTube? That uh, Yeti just heckling uh, or yelling? Oh, hold on, hold on. <laughs> Thank you. Oh, I'll, I'll just funny. stop right there. Why? I had a thought in my head, but somewhere between my brain and my mouth. It got all tripped up. It just went through a humor filter and the humor yeah. stayed on top and then yeah. the <laughs> it happens. Believe me, it happens to me a lot. I hope the humor is able to be recycled <laughs> back into the system. All right, why don't we uh, continue? Here's that Mike. devoid of any. <laughs> Here's Michael Richards from the Laugh Factory in L.A. Shut up! 50 years ago, they had you upside down with a f***ing fork up your <laughs> <laughs> Best part is that woman. Oh my god! Oh my god! That is. I, I mean, look. As much as I want to hug him, for just being such a dick on stage. I mean, that really is a little. You, you can't throw him out. He's a. He's a. He's a. <laughs> he forgot. Throw him out is what you say. The rest is what you think. <laughs> yeah. Sometimes you have to have things that you just keep to your own self. Yeah, like. perhaps you just keep your mouth shut. Wow. You no, know, it was interesting. He went on such a tirade that people uh, got up and left. And uh, Jimmy made a great point that I wasn't thinking this morning. This is why I hate Los Angeles. Uh, the fact, I mean, I understood people objected. Here's how you object. That was a, a kind of a rough moment. You don't have to laugh at it. Kind of a rough moment. But you don't get up and leave, you dumb white people. I'm talking about the white people filing out of the club. Yeah. People go to comedy clubs to see something alive and in the moment. You have the guy from Seinfeld screaming the N-word. How much more alive can you get than that? Coming much... apart at the seams. He's unraveling. Why wouldn't you want to watch that happen? What do you, what do you want to do? See, You want to see another polite set? You're watching Kramer scream the N-bomb at a man in a balcony. How do you walk out yeah, on that? You're watching him self-destruct right there you're in front of the, your eyes live. You're watching the greatest comedy show ever. And you don't even know it. A Los historic Angeles moment. Dummies. Right. They walked out. They walked out. Yeah. Harumph. I won't have this. Uh -huh. but, uh -huh. but, Jimmy, you made a pretty good point that you think some of these people were walking out because they were nervous that maybe the guys that were getting heckled might have some weapons a in there or something. A pistol in the car or come back with a, a gang. You know, believe me, that's hey, the way know. white people think. They're going to come back and spray the entire club with bullets because of Michael Richards. I mean, you know. Because why would you leave unless you were scared for your life? That's the only, that's the only reason. L.A. is so racially... You know, like they're just so racially hypersensitive. I've done, I've performed there. I mean, yeah. anything that's uh, remotely doesn't sound like it's a hundred percent pro race, hundred percent pro uh, gay. Anything that's not a hundred percent PC, they, they they step back a bit and yeah. kind of give you like, oh hey, hey hey, whoa, hey. terrible out there. All right, let's uh, continue here. I moved it back because you got to hear the woman in the audience. Oh my, oh god. my god! He's on. He's on. Oh my god! Ooh. Ooh. All right, you see? It shocks you. It shocks you. You see what's buried beneath your stupid mother? <laughs> that was a call for. What was it called for? It's not called for you to hear off my ass, you cheap mother. <laughs> you guys have been talking and talking and talking. <laughs> oh boy! He just snapped. He lost it. And let me tell you how that feels, man. Right? Because I like the fact he kept going. He didn't just back out. He was angry. But man, you get that where all of a sudden you you just you have that like invisible shield of, on stage, and then there comes a moment where all of a sudden you like you you realize I'm screaming. And this is another human being who's like close enough to to throw yeah. a ball at my face. There's really nothing in the way between us and them. And then the crowd turns on you, and that's yeah. where his anger came from. Oh, oh, what? Oh, you just you want to bite their faces? Like, didn't you see what this scumbag did to cause me to yell at him? Yeah. And now you turn on me. You you so, want to just bite the audience? Hey, how did the media get the tape? Someone had it on probably on a phone. It's probably from a cell phone. It's terrible quality. It yeah. is terrible quality. Probably from YouTube.
I mean, thank God someone had that camera. It's great. Yeah. Anything that happens in the world today will be captured on tape. By the way, in I, some way, shape, or form. I plan on doing something like this, and not important. New Year's Eve mm -hmm. at the Borgata. I have a whole thing planned. So bring your video cameras. To oh, YouTube, okay. Moments. Very good. <laughs> oh, it's going to be ugly and controversial. All right, we got to take a break. Part two of. Uh, Michael Richards going off at the Laugh Factory. We got that. By the way, it's a, it's a great commercial for XM today. Sorry, but it is because we're going to play the same stuff over there unedited, yeah. uncensored, yeah. uncensored. The FCC would allow us to play this, but for some reason CBS has a problem with the N-word, which is the just lawyers. completely ridiculous to us. Especially under these circumstances where you know the intent of it, and you right. know why it's being used, and you know it's not coming from a place of anger or being gratuitous. Come on. So XM gets a nice commercial today. Yep. Uh, also, we got Paul Rodriguez weighing in. We got Sinbad weighing in. Wow. We got... Uh, they, they went to relevantcomic.com. No kidding. We got Kramer on Letterman. Anthony saw this last night. We got... Oh, uh, so uncomfortable. We got Kramer. We got Michael Richards on Letterman. Uh, Just call apologize. him Kramer. Kramer. Just call him no Kramer. No one cares about his name. Michael, he's Kramer. We got the audio of him on apologizing on Letterman. Letterman got a great coup last night, man. Huge. He just happened to have Seinfeld on, and they got the old uh, satellite hookup, and they got Kramer on as well. Boy, do I love Seinfeld. For Jerry that. thought it would be a good idea for uh, Kramer to come on and uh, apologize via satellite. Yeah. And he looked like he was in one of those MTV real world confessionals. <laughs> he's just kind of sitting there, and uh, I'm trying to make sense of what he's saying, and yeah. he could not string together a cohesive thought. Yeah. It was just him babbling. He looked uh, drugged out. Uh, to me, uh, I don't know. Oh, yeah. it, it was. It might not have helped too much, and, and, and the yeah. audience was laughing. It's simple as this: if you're Kramer and you did that, and now you got all this controversy, and you're going to go on TV for the first time to apologize. Yeah. If I was Kramer, I would make sure I was as effed up as possible, so people would go, "Oh, look, the, oh, poor look, guy. the obviously, guy is in such a obviously space. he's got something going on." Right. We got to let him off the hook a little bit here. Look, he doesn't seem quite right. You wouldn't go on Letterman completely like normal. No. <laughs> Especially since I had just you can't watched, defend this. I had just watched Seinfeld at eleven. Yeah. And then Letterman came on at eleven thirty. Uh they got to the whole thing a little after midnight. And uh like I just watched the goofy fun Kramer character on Seinfeld. So you kinda like, Oh, I just want to remember the fun guy. Not this guy who's he can't, he can't he can't word the apology right it's, it's just really a wreck my favorite kramer episode was the one where he was at the laugh factory that's my favorite <laughs> kramer episode. in the middle of the uh, kramer controversy we got part two of his set actually the set was probably a half hour or so i would yeah. assume i don't mm -hmm. know what he, what he does there materialize we only got uh where he went off and just uh, got nuts Here's the uh, second Which, segment. Ah. Yes, I was just waiting for it to queue up. Wait a minute, where's he going? Oh, it's a big threat. That's how you get What's back in the van. That was real called for. Wait a minute. He's not going, is he? You're, you're just not funny. That's why you're reset. Never had no show. Never had no movie. Son of not here. Oh, I guess you got me there. You're absolutely... You know, when you say, I guess you got me there... He got gotcha. you. He got gotcha you there. He got gotcha. you. He really was flustered, man. Not even. I mean, I understand jokes that were bombing, but he didn't even have anything that like resembled a joke. He was just like, "Yeah, where are you going? You didn't do no movies or nothing. You just had the sound feel. Right. Maybe he no movies or no other TV shows. But I, and I, you know, Kramer's been thinking that ever since Seinfeld went off the air. Like, oh my god. Exactly. But I, I'd said it before. But uh, it's sort of. It, it's not really that accurate, or it's not really that demeaning to to Kramer. It's like uh, Neil Armstrong. Hey, you you just went to the moon once. You know, it's, it's Seinfeld, for God's sake. I, I, no, it's not I disagree. It, it's it's I Michael disagree. Collins. You just circled the moon while Neil Armstrong. <laughs> oh, okay. You, <laughs> you still knew his name. <laughs> you honestly think that Kramer's sitting home uh, going, uh, whatever? He, no, want, he, he wants, wants another hit. Of course so he wants bad. a he wants, he wants a movie. He of wants something else. Of course they do. Everybody but Jerry Granted, is all content to just, you know, I, I mean, uh, Jerry's content to go back to stand-up comedy and just, you know, tour around. He's got his family and everything like that. But the rest of them, they want to recapture uh, the glory. at least a piece of that success they had with Seinfeld. And they also want to prove that uh, they were, you know, they have what it takes on their own to make it. 
Right. Without that was felt. that was like a uh, you know that was a show that needed all the people that were in place. Right. I think one more season ensemble. From what I understand, Seinfeld has offered five. This is just what I think: five million episode, <laughs> and they all would have got a million episode. And but Seinfeld said he want to do the last, like one more season. So yeah. I think they probably could have really. In that last season, made a million an episode. Which yeah. Was, you know, I don't know what. I'm sure they made a lot of money. I'm sure they're making a lot of money as we speak. Too. They all they had good residual deals. Yeah. Yeah, I'm sure they all did. Yeah. And Jerry, forget about it. That guy's worth ten bucks. He doesn't have to do it. Could be a couple of more than that, Jim. Perhaps more than that, Jim. <laughs> Never had no show, never had no movie. Right. Oh, I guess you got me there. You're absolutely right. I'm just a wash up. Gotta stand on the stage. Oh, absolutely. That's it. We had it. We had it. Well, that ain't necessary. Well, you interrupted me, pal. That's what happens when you interrupt a white man. Interrupt a white man. Where is he? Nineteen thirty. That's that sounds to me like man. He the guy was probably being a dick as a heckler, but the guy would seem so incensed that the racial stuff got thrown out there. That seems like Michael. Just from what I'm hearing, it sounds yeah. like Michael Richards just fired that out of it. That I would love to know what was said beforehand because. It it is odd that he would just throw the the racial stuff out. I don't know the guy from a hole in the wall. Could be the biggest racist ever on the face of the earth. Well, we I got, don't know. But but like what was said before that that spurred the, him to just go right to the racist stuff. Because the guy seemed so incensed. And most black people, if they're firing racist stuff at you, you cracker this, you cracker that, white boy this, and you fire that back. I don't think they're going to be shocked to hear it if they're firing stuff. First of all, you're the bravest white man ever. Because <laughs> if they're saying, call me Cracker and Whitey, I'm in the wrong neighborhood and I'm running. Well, yeah, you know, I'm they, running for they, my life. <laughs> but you know what I'm saying? They, they kind of ex would expect some kind of a racial response. Yeah. If, if somebody was hitting you racially, they're not going to be shocked that you hit them back. And that guy seemed really like outraged that he had gone there. Uh, I don't know, whatever. Yeah, we're going to find out what happened at the club that night because we got Jamie, the owner of the Laugh Factory, at 7.30 this morning. It yeah. is all over. Yeah, of course. I mean, I, I'm looking every TV I look at in in this studio. They have the clip of him oh, going it's, off. It's just a great, great story. But I haven't on seen so many levels. I haven't seen any of the apology. Uh, oh, there it there is. There it is. Okay, we got the uh, we got the uh, audio from Letterman. We're gonna, uh, we're gonna get the, into that in a second. But we got Sinbad. Sinbad, audio. and we also have Paul Rodriguez. And if there's two comedians, that the first two I thought of actually, um, it's amazing they got them because I mean they're as busy as they've been lately. It's really good that they were able to get Sinbad and Paul Rodriguez. Uh, luckily, yeah. they were able to pin them down for a quick comment on the way. I was, you know, I was a little pissed off. Off because I was waiting for the Yakov Shmirnov uh, <laughs> comments yeah. and what nothing nothing not a peep. Where's he? Where's he? Where is Yakov Shmirnov to just say what the country and make everyone feel better? One of the edgiest comics working today. <laughs> <laughs> Where's Gallagher? Where is Gallagher? Can Gallagher maybe uh, he should dye a a, a, a watermelon um, black on one side, white on the other, and smash it with his mallet as if he is smashing racial hatred. Uh, am I the only one that sees it? Ugh. Gallagher, racist. Why? Look how he treats that watermelon. Ah, uh, racist. Another racist comic. I want to hear from. How about we hear from Chris Rock, or uh, you know another. A really yeah, someone who's maybe relevant comedian. that has uh, really done edgy racial humor before. I mean, uh, Chris Rock has gone off on the black community, on stereotypes, on the black community. I love how I have to say black community, because if you just say black people or blacks, it sounds bad. But if you say the black community, for some reason, like I heard that more yesterday than I ever have. People calling up, just want to comment, you know, uh, the black community has to realize because when you put community behind it, all of a sudden you're you're safe. Although I will say on this one, Chris Rock, I don't think was enough much to defend Michael Richards on. I'm sure that. <laughs> oh well, well, no. But the the truth of the matter is, if a white guy had done Chris Rock's material verbatim, uh, it really would come off. It would be funny, but I think he would get a lot of complaints. Yeah, yeah. a lot of complaints. We should get Patrice O'Neill on today. Why? He's our black. Uh, he's our black. Teasing, of course. I would love to have Patrice on. He's our black friend. 
<laughs> yeah, does comedy, that's so it. Kind of helps today. Hey, that's you want to hear one. Sinbad or Paul Rodriguez? I, I, it's it's Brian wow. and Carlin, as far as I'm concerned. So whichever <laughs> one you pull out first, I mean, it's all it's all, all right, it's all gravy from here. Flip a coin. Here's Sinbad. Joining me from Los Angeles for more on the story is a familiar face to many people. The comedian. 1988. Yeah, what year? Did we go on yes. a time machine? Familiar face. If you're watching Star Search or the Apollo in 1991. <laughs> Familiar face if you're wearing spandex. Yeah, or if you're white and you like comedians, that you might as well be white. Familiar face if you got one of those shirts with Chinese or Japanese <laughs> writing on it. Just you're... stepped out of a smoking DeLorean. <laughs> <laughs> right. Are you kidding me? What year is this? Familiar face if you don't have the internet yet. Hey, it's an... <laughs> Familiar face, my God. Sam, I think he was killed by a... <laughs> Wow, Quincy. That's unbelievable. Quincy's such a racist. It really is. He works with an Asian guy. Well, That's yeah, how I, I close my eyes to it. It's it's beyond amazing. It's the hand. He yeah. only wants he only well, he only had Sam because he likes smooth Asian massages. <laughs> right. And Sam, after a tough one, Quince would just lay down and his teeth would be all clenched in the pillow. Clenched together. Yeah, clenched together. And S Sam would get on and just knead out those nuts. Just after knead. after Quincy's used the 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 skull saw on somebody. Yeah. And it's been maybe a little bit of a trying day and needs a back rub. Or, or he's, he would just hang his arms over the bed and Sam would massage his hands gently while telling him, Quince, you know, we're going to solve this. It's going to be okay. And he'd thank him. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> thank you, Sam. <laughs> <laughs> All right, here we go. We got uh, uh, Sinbad. Best impression ever. I, I got to hear the best part. No one Joining me from Los Angeles for more on the story is a familiar face to many people, the comedian Sinbad, who was inside the club. When Maybe a familiar face to his family. <laughs> now I'm offended. I now I'm more offended by what he just said. I now understand why he's on, and I apologize to Sinbad. He was in the club when it happened. Was yeah, he? he should, I, did, no, I did not realize that until this guy just said it, so he certainly should be. Some middling? <laughs> God, you think Sinbad's like, man, how lucky am I? Yep. <laughs> I just happened to be in the right place at the right time. It would have been funny if Michael if Michael <laughs> Richards was shouting that stuff and he was just in, in introing Sinbad. <laughs> Speaking of... <laughs> oh, God, yeah. And then just a nice segue into his intro. Comedian Sinbad, who was inside the club when Richards melted down. Sinbad, you, you just heard uh, Michael Richards' apology uh, what on do television. Do Hasn't actually aired yet. It won't air for a little while on the David Letterman show. But what do you think of that apology? Does, does that make amends? Does that make up for what happened? <laughs> That's like a man apologizing to his wife when he's been caught cheating. It really means nothing because he got caught. I just, I, I had just walked in the comedy club. I've been there about maybe 5, 10, 15 minutes, and, and Mike was doing his thing. I don't understand. When he says he was angry and he's not a racist, you know, there's not that much anger at a heck. It was a heckler, man. And he wasn't even heckling hard. And he just went crazy, man. I mean, he went like, it wasn't an accidental slip, man, because he kept going and going and going. Oof. And he said he wasn't heckling Yikes. hard either. Yeah. I'm sure, I mean, that's what comes from a comic. I mean, yeah. if, he, if he said, look, he was being heckled hard, he should have handled it better. Because... Obviously, Kramer had some frustration that has been building up. In him, yeah, for a while. You've been heckled before at a club. I mean, what's what's the way that you suck? <laughs> supposed to handle that. We well, well, remember hecklers are part of the job. I mean, yeah. I look at it, if, you, if you work as a highway person and then you work on the highway and then people go by and blow the horn at you. That's that's part of the job. But for me, I've I've never to this day had anybody thrown out of a club because I've never had a situation I couldn't handle because the audience is not my enemy. Mm -hmm. And, and the audience was not his enemy. The whole idea is how you turn it around. And there's never any reason to bury somebody. You don't have to bury Wrong. Anybody. And if you're going to bury uh -huh. somebody. Wrong. Uh. Wrong. Hey, Ethel Merman, the audience is not your best friend. And, and, and let me tell you something. I deal with this a lot. And it's not, it's really weird when I see black people in the audience sometimes. There is a look you get as a white comic. It's, it's the. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Uh huh. No one's saying anything. You don't address it because no one. The guy's not being rude to you. Yeah. No one's yelling at you, and the audience can't see it. But as a performer, you can. Well, see what's it. that about? Is that uh, black people don't want to give you the respect? I don't know if it's that or if it's just your humor is just not hitting them, or, or I don't really don't know. I've noticed it consistently throughout Dude, my career. I so actually maybe it's just me. It's really interesting you say that because when you uh, played Helium down there in Philly, 
I was in the back row watching black people watch you and they wouldn't give you nothing. No, of course not. And the whole no, crowd was right. dying. And I'm like, and I remember thinking to myself, what's that really about? Do they think Jimmy's not funny or or they don't want to laugh at a white comic? Like, what is that? There's something pretty deep uh, happening right in front of me here. Black people, and again, that could just be one set, but I've noticed it for years, and, and it seems like black audience members with a white comic are, are more comfortable when you have a certain vibe, um, and maybe it's, no matter what I'm talking about, they can kind of sense that this is the way I am, and they just don't like the personality behind it, or I remind them of people that just, ugh, yeah. I don't like his thought process, because I know what, what Right, I, I know where it'll lead. They're not afraid of me, they're not threatened by me, they just don't like my yeah. thought process. Uh, or I remind them of a thought process they don't like. And there's times, some of them should still think I'm funny, but you can sense that it's more than that. Because there's times where I'm doing something and I'm killing. And I know what I'm killing. And I look down and I see that one face and you want to go, what is this about? Mm. Or a guy reluctantly starting to laugh. <clears throat> yeah. I've seen that. There was a guy last night in the back of the cellar, a black guy with his girlfriend. <laughs> is that how they run that place? It certainly <laughs> is. And uh, she was laughing. And, it's like you just, and, I, and I know what I'm doing is, is working because of the reaction from the audience. And eventually he laughed and then like lowered his head like he didn't even want to laugh. And you get that from people, but when you notice it consistently from black people, you know, there's some. I remember I told Damon Wayne that black people just don't really like me in, in the audience. Happens. Wow. Yeah, I noticed it for, uh, firsthand down there That's in Philly odd. that day. Yeah, but I'm not making it up and I'm not paranoid. No, absolutely not. I can be, I can You're back a likable guy. But yeah, my material is not like, groveling. But I'm not saying I'm tearing the, the ass out of the world, man. I'm not. But it's just—it's not typically, especially. It's aggressive. Well, yeah. And uh, but but you also do a fair share of self-deprecation. Black people don't really care for that uh, or sarcasm. They get it. They just don't care yeah. for it in humor. They don't like really pedophilia or religious stuff either. Like mm. sexual stuff, they're really liberal with. There's a lot of stuff black crowds love, but there's certain things they just don't—they don't go for. All right, let's get to the uh, mm. end of the Sinbad clip. Body. You don't have to bury anybody, and if you're gonna bury somebody, you don't get personal with it. You don't come up with race, uh, with, with, with hatred, and you definitely don't come up with racism or sexism. Right. Sexism. Use whatever you got at that point. Mm. You use whatever you mouth. got. You don't come up with sexism? Shut your cruise, cruise boat face. <laughs> Shut up, boat act. God, does he annoy me. You don't come up with sex. I could see saying that was uncalled for. It was. But you don't come up with sexism? Can, should you call somebody a duty face and then smile at them with your tucked in stupid uh, 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 satin shirt? Let me tell you something. If there was a uh, party of women at a table and they were yapping during Sinbad's set, you don't think he'd turn around and make some kind of a, a woman joke about that table? Turn around and talk about, you know, or a bachelorette party is sitting there and he's just going to ignore the fact that it's a table full of women? Uh, talking and not address that them as women and make it fun by joking about something involving women. Of course you are. That's your ammo. That's what you got right there. Well, he's a boat act now. He's, oh. he's very family friendly, so I don't know. It annoys he's, me. That that annoys. I agree with him at first, but that you don't ever bury somebody. Really, you don't. Stupid. I wish it was the Andrea Doria. <laughs> 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 All right, uh, Sinbad goes oh, on. Bug me. Uh, well, let me ask you this question, because, you know, we, we dance around the N-word all the time. Paul Rodriguez, yeah, who was look. on the bill as well, fellow comedian of yours, said today in this press conference, anytime the N-word comes out of a white person's mouth, they've got some explaining to do. They better have a he good reason. He said explaining, by the way. Go F yourself. We by the way. Explain anything. Paul Rodriguez said, you got some explaining to do. He, he ripped off Ricky Ricardo. I mean, but but you, in, in that sense, Rodriguez is right. I mean, you do have to justify it. You better have a reason for it coming out. Look, it's, not, it, it's like in, in a perfect world, everyone can say everything, but there, it's better be a good reason. It's just for the way it. it is. There is a huge double standard, yeah. and you got to deal with it. So, yeah, if you blurt it out in hate, uh, you're going to have to pay the price. It's just the way it is. If you blurt it out in uh, something hysterically funny, in a creative way, if it's used uh, in humor like that, no problem with it. Why the hell... Can some comics get away with it and others not? When I've seen, a, how many black comics have you seen do the, hey, I'm the white guy, where they do the white guy voice? Well, look at me, I'm cutting the lawn, dear. You know, that's fair game. By the way, it, it is. But, but I, if I, you I, get up there and go, Lordy, Lord, I'm eating my water, man, and do a stereotypical, like uh, a black guy, uh, there's going to be a problem. Once again, devil's advocate, but can we do have to acknowledge that for a long time, Black people weren't, even, a, weren't okay. even allowed to play black people. But I mean, it, sometimes there are things that are a reaction to 
to a lot of behavior. And I can understand that. Like, look, they had to have white people with blackface because they wouldn't allow black people to act. I mean, I mean, you know, it's like eh, I kind of understand it to some yeah. degree. Just, just too much time has gone by. Please, there's not one person, one, th there's not one person that was alive at that time. Come on. Well, there are some. Oh, but they're old and crotchety. <laughs> Over the age of they're uh, old people. Forty. Yeah. Once, once. Thank God, because there is a you do reach a certain age where everything disappears. Passion, lust, love, racism. Where you just become old and crotchety. Doesn't matter what color you are or anything. You're, You're just a doddering old fool. <laughs> you don't even look your color anymore no. when you get old. So you know, <laughs> yeah. it doesn't matter. White people. You all turn kind of gray. You're at the home Everyone with a black gray. guy. You're all going in your diaper together. Yeah. That's all. You finally, right before you check out of this planet, you finally get along with everybody. That's right. Hey, let's get to the end of this uh, Sinbad clip here. Cause then Please. We got we to get Jamie, the owner of the Laugh Factory, on. We got Patrice O'Neill calling in. We got Kramer's apology on Letterman. That's some explaining to do. They better have a good reason for it. Yeah, black comedians throw it around all the time. But where's the line there? Try to help us out here. Here's the line, man. First mm -hmm. of all, we talk about family. The, 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 let's face it, the N-word. We call it the N-word now like people don't use it. Right. There is, the, what's happening now in society is they, a, a friendly version of the N-word, which was... And then I guess the mean version is supposed to be... Oh, boy. To me, there is no friendly version. This is the problem. There is no time that word was friendly. There was no time in life that word was ever friendly. That's probably one of the most vile words that's ever been put on a race Talk of people. Talk to your own people, the then. Beginning Sorry. Of this time, beginning of, of this civilization, this country. Yeah. Well, black people didn't invent the word. I got you know. But address the, the rappers that use it constantly. But they have no problem using it in a fun way. Guys like, I'll say one thing, though, Sinbad I never was that type of an act. And, and Cosby, like, he's a guy that has been speaking out against it and finds it reprehensible. Yeah, oh, there, there, there are plenty of people that speak out against it. Plenty of black guys that speak out against it. But, I mean, come on, the multitude of black guys just hanging out. I'm not even talking famous people. Just people hanging out. Go uptown. You'll hear that being thrown around like crazy, they just in the, conversation. They use it like the word the. Yeah. It's just, it. so how can you then make it a big thing where uh, you can't use it in any context? It's very few words, I think, have that double standard. But I, I look, I don't really mind it that much with this one because it's very... You're dating a black chick? No, man, but oh, okay. this is a very rare occasion you're going to actually legitimately need to use it. And it's like... It's kind of hard as a white guy to go, ah, my rights are being styled. They're really not. I mean, but when we're discussing it like a news story, that annoys me that we can't use it. But aside from that, it's like, what else do you want to use it aside from, you know, when you're being, you know, sexual with a girl or, you know, or someone doesn't, you know, get your food fast enough. That, that is legitimate. But, I mean, there's very few places to use it. Why don't we have any black guys that we can talk to? We got Patrice. We don't know any. Where's Patrice? He's on hold. We got to take a break, though. We have to. We're really late. And then we'll get uh, Jamie from the Laugh Factory on. Yeah, I, want well. hear, I want to hear Patrice's opinion on this. Yes. He's a slightly racially opinionated. All right, slightly. Well, uh, Patrice O'Neill, what's up, buddy? Good morning, sir. How are you? There he is. What up? Patrice, I'm sure you've been up all night following this breaking story. <laughs> right. <laughs> I thought I was getting stalked this morning. I got to call. Him. Hey, you know what? I got to tell you, man. CNN gets uh, Sinbad and we get Patrice O'Neill. Yep. Well, they said, you know how Sinbad, you know, that hammer yeah. pants is always has a good. Uh... <laughs> <laughs> At least we got a black guy. <laughs> well, Sinbad, don't say that. Come on. He's more white than black, Patrice. Come let's, on. Let's, the I, guy's got the, freckles. What's the. He looks, man. First of all, about Cosmo, I, I was. I, I was old, I'm old enough to follow him from Friday. He's one of these uh, conceptual Andy Kaufman type dudes. Yeah. So when I was, saw the video, I thought at first, you know, that was he was just doing some old weird. I only understand what I'm doing stuff. Uh -huh. you know what I mean, I didn't think he was racist until he apologized. <laughs> <laughs> so he got until he's like, I'm sorry because sometimes I have to wreck racism and I didn't mean it and I just lose it. So I said, you idiot. Now, okay, and then you see he was on on Letterman last night, which means last night he had five red dots on his forehead because Jerry sent out some hitmen. So <laughs> season seven is coming out on uh, on DVD like in a couple of days. Yep. And 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 he better hope. All the guilty white people who's not going to buy season seven is replaced by black people who think this is hilarious. <laughs> they, uh, it's uh, funny to me. You know what? You bring up a great point, though. His apology 
was so bad. It was one of the worst apologies I've ever seen for anything like this. <laughs> he was apologizing for being a racist. Yeah, and then he said he wasn't a racist, but then he said he's got his own problems. And and, and then he, he he said Afro-Americans, like he used a, a term from 1975. It was a eulogizing ex. What's the matter with him? Yeah. <laughs> Afro-Americans. All I'm going to do is picture him sliding through the door going, ah, Jerry Coon. <laughs> Jerry. <laughs> I want to apologize to the Negroes, Jerry. How do I do it? Uh, we'll get you on uh, Letterman. <laughs> He's so stupid. I was watching it thinking, you know, okay, first of all, that the dude, first, first of all, another thing, it, it, America makes me sick. White people make me sick because I don't need no apology. Like, that word has no... Cosmo Kramer using that word has no power at all. I'd right. been rolling if I was that dude up on the top. See, this is what makes me mad, though, on the, on, on the black side, is that you know the camera didn't catch that jerk that made Kramer mad enough to go back to the 60s. See, the comics are the ones that go, you know, what was this ass saying? Except for Sinbad, who says, you never get sexist or racist, that yeah. boat act. And you never go uh, all out against uh, an audience member. Yeah, Sinbad said that, Patrice. I don't know if you heard it. He goes, you no, never... I didn't, I didn't hear the whole thing. I heard him at the end say the reprehensible word, and, and I under, it is... But it was it was way more. It's like saying the c word right now yeah. and going and then like you call a woman who's talking the c word in the audience and she goes, "You harass me and I was so afraid for my life." Like in maybe in 1930, if you said that, it would be horrifying because you could actually choke her and then and then say, and the cop will shake your hand. But in in now. That's your power. So I'm not making an excuse for Cosmo because he said the word, it, but it has no power like it had for like Sinbad to announce as if we're still in the same position we was in the 60s. Yeah. I, can, I want white boys to be able to say what they feel like saying because I don't want to feel condescended. You know, to where it's like, okay, Negro. Bravo, Patricia. We'll take care of you. Well spoken. You call me a Negro, and I just want to call you everything. I want to call you, because I don't ever want to stop being able to call white people crackers and burners and destroyers of the earth. So you can have Negro. Burners and destroyers. Exactly, stupid bunch of inventors. You invented nothing. You go to the moon, people. The nerve of you creating medicine. I'm sure. Unga. Uh, unga, listen to me. <laughs> listen to me. If it wasn't for white people, medicine would still depend on the weather. <laughs> I just don't. I just don't think, man. I just. I, I, I didn't think he was a racist till he apologized. That's, yeah, the apology was worse than what he did. Because he's a crazy type dude. If you ever watched that show Friday back in the day, yeah. He's, his mind type of guy. He did all that, uh, it was a weird character he used to do, and then he would just do, like you said, this conceptual stuff, so, but I don't think that's what this was. Nope. As a, as he, he became a regular, he, he really blew it, man, because his whole life has been set up to be this dude who wasn't attached. He, he yep. I, when I used to see him interviewed as a regular dude, he would just, he'd be like, ooh, uh, ooh. and you go, all right, this dude's out of his mind. But last night on Seinfeld, who, who called and made him apologize, by the way? Somebody had a bullet to his, he, he was going to get killed last night if he didn't say, get on there. Yeah, I think Jerry was going to be on the Letterman anyway, right? Yeah, and, and was on Letterman. Yeah, yeah and he decided, out, right? he decided, ah, you know something, let me, let me get this idiot out of trouble. Wait, do we have the apology on tape? Yeah, why don't we uh, get into that? Do you want that with yeah. Patrice on lines? I would like to hear what his yeah, no problem. Stay right there, Patrice. Here's uh, Kramer on Letterman last night. We have him uh, live via satellite yes, from Los do. Angeles. Sorry, right, this do. should be Michael Richards. Michael, are you there? Yeah, I'm right here. Hi, Michael. Welcome to the show. Hello. Hi. How are you doing? I'm uh, not doing too good. Yeah. Why don't you explain exactly what happened for the folks who may not know? I, uh, I lost my temper on stage. I was at uh, a comedy club trying to uh, do my act, and I got heckled, and I... I, I took it badly and went into a, a rage, and uh, uh, said some pretty uh, 
nasty things to some Afro-Americans. <laughs> trash. <laughs> uh, uh, this so, guy's a scream. Oh, all I wanted was for him to bring me a mint julep. A mint julep. Afro-American. You <laughs> said some <laughs> pretty nasty things <laughs> to <laughs> some colored people, Jerry. And you see the, the audience. Colored people. You see the audience laughing because the they don't, audience is laughing. They don't understand that Kramer is an is a, is a character. This is the slide through the door right. guy. Kramer right. guy. They can't understand that this is actually Michael Richards. They they think they're seeing Kramer still. He's gonna do something like they're laughing, waiting for him to do something weird. Right. Like and then I ring just went off, Jerry. Right. Like they're waiting for him to do that. Bunch so of, they're kind of nervously laughing, waiting. Bunch of dopes in the audience. They don't realize he's that he's a different guy. He's not that, that guy that lives uh, across right. from Jerry Seinfeld. They, they can't separate the two. Do you hear him though? He's he sounds like one of those hostage videos, man. Oh yeah, and he looked like one. He was squirming in his seat. Uh, he couldn't put a sentence together without a big gap. And uh, he was almost crying. The audience is laughing at him. He's using terminology from the 50s. Yeah. All right, let's get back into it here. Uh, uh, nasty things to some Afro-Americans. A lot of trash talk. And uh, stop laughing. It's not funny. <laughs> and Jerry, Jerry had to jump in. Stop laughing, it's not, not funny. funny. Jerry, you should have led the applause break. That's hilarious that he just said that. Stop laughing. Hello, Kramer. Why did you call him a coon? <laughs> Kramer! Stop laughing, is this isn't funny. But it is funny, Jerry. It's a real moment. It's funny. Stop laughing, because he knew this that, guy was really help. trying to apologize, but he, he couldn't. But it was... They, ah. And Jerry's thinking season seven money. They could have yeah. used the situation by going with the laughs with the audience, going, you know... And this was so serious oh, that it was... Tr he was trying to be so serious with this apology that laughter wasn't even... A consideration and the people when he said afro-american i swear to you it looked like an snl bit or something like he, he, no one it's like it was written for him all right instead of african-american say afro-american to show how out of touch you are and then uh people laugh and then jerry jump in and then Elaine will come out, and George will come out and talk about uh the jews and the asians and then he he couldn't apologize properly. He, he didn't, uh, you know, I didn't even see Jerry's reaction to all that. I, I know he hit his head as soon as he 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 messed up as he was reading that apology and said Afro American. I know Jerry wanted to say cut you idiot. It, and another thing, how how does Cosmo Kramer, Cosmo. who hasn't been on TV since '86, <laughs> when they use Afro American, get, even get on Letterman last night during Jerry's time? Jerry said, "Dave, look, call this dude on the phone." Yeah. In fact, Jerry said, uh, "Dave, call this nigga up." If <laughs> 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 I can smack him with his stupid face, what's the matter with him? He was—he's so uncomfortable. I'm still. Let me tell you, man, this dude's so crazy that. That someone need the only way you can really find out what happened is if you just give somebody a tape recorder just off off camera off everything and really try to talk to them. What were you thinking? I don't really want to write him off as a racist yet because I know how crazy he is that he's Kramer. He should have spoken through his lawyer Jackie Childs. Yeah, they should have brought Jackie Childs from the show in <laughs> as his lawyer and like show first show Cosmo and apologize and then the camera pulls back and his. Lawyer Jackie Childs is right next to him. <laughs> Hysterical. People love Seinfeld. They'd have uh, forgive him, uh, forgiven him in a second. Absolutely. Cosmo, Cosmo what you say, boy? What'd you yeah. What you saying, Cosmo? I think we get money out of this. <laughs> All right, let's get back to this. Uh, Michael Richards on Letterman last night. And what uh, were the, uh, the, 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 the you were actually being heckled, or were they just talking and disturbing the act? Uh, that was going on too. Uh huh. What a fast thinker. And did you I know, I mean, Harry, in your audience laugh, you know, and it's, it's, uh, I'm not even sure that this is, uh, where I should be, uh, well, addressing, so, uh, so uh used, the so situation. To... I've, I've already heard you make some jokes about it, and that's okay, you know, but I'm, I'm, Jerry was trying. I'm, I'm, I'm really busted up over this. Oh, I'm, shut I'm your scared. mouth! Guys, you begin to really, you groveling idiot, shut up! Oh, the groveling isn't even near over, my friend. Oh, really? Yeah. For making fun of it, they're mad for laughing because you couldn't handle a situation? Shut your yeah. mouth! I couldn't understand, this is, this goes, this takes me back to the Mel Gibson. I'm sitting there like, 
How much money do you have to have to be able to be an anti-Semite? Like, why can't you just go ahead and look, I don't like the Jews and you start wars. Let me go. I am, yeah, you know. I got enough money. Yeah, like, what, what is the, these apologies is what makes you seem like, I'm sorry. It's, you know what you should say? I'm sorry. I usually do a better job at hindering my disgust for other races, but I blew it last night under pressure. Yeah. Talk about that, man. But you know, that is the, that's the worst thing you can say. He should say I was playing and then keep it moving. No, he was just, I, 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 I apologize. It's like he mowed down a schoolyard full of kids in a car. I don't want that little pussy apology. Excuse me. I don't, I don't, I don't want that. That's a, that part apology means nothing to anybody black. It's like, ah, oh, shut up, you racist. Claim. Matter of fact, black people go, ah, figures. Eh, what are you going to do? <laughs> yeah. All right, let's get back into this. I, 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 didn't, I didn't like the way he was, uh, he's like, uh, uh, being mad at Letterman for making fun. What is Letterman supposed to do? Not address it, you jackass? Yeah. Yeah. A couple of jokes were made, well, Jerry. I mean, that's okay. Uh, yeah. I mean, since I couldn't do it, you might as well. Uh, I, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm really busted up over this, and I'm, I'm, I'm very, very sorry uh, to those uh, people in the audience uh, the blacks, the Hispanics, the whites, everyone that was there that took the brunt of that anger and 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 hate and rage and and how it came through and wasn't the whites and, of those Hispanics. I'm concerned about more hate and more rage and more anger coming through, uh, not just towards me but towards uh, a black white. Conflict. Oh, now he it's represents all of white people in this country and how blacks feel about. He what actually started coming off like he represents white people and doesn't want this to ruin the relationships between blacks and whites. The great relationship that's going yeah. on between blacks and white people. Who does he think he is, Rodney King or the? Ocean yeah. Tr What's the matter with this? Uh, Jerry, can we all just get along, You're Jerry? You're a mediocre comic who got a break. Shut up. That's that's what you are. Oh. I want to hear an apology um, um, from Paul Reiser for calling Carlos Mancia a spig. Did you guys see that one? No, did uh, I'm just messing with you. Uh, yeah. I'd love to see <laughs> Reginald Denny hit him with a brick. <laughs> I want to see all the YouTubes of every racial uh, outburst of every sitcom star from the mid-90s. Yeah, I, I got a theory, by there the way. You go. I think Kramer was just trying to make a YouTube video. <laughs> Everybody wants to make a YouTube video, and I think he's like, you know what? He did a great job. I got an idea. Watch the hits today on this freaking thing. Oh, yeah. Watch the, watch the views on this video from the Laugh Factory. Uh, 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 Gregory, by the way. Right. If you don't plug um, Black Phillip for, uh, you know, the 25th, I'm going to call you a racist. You're doing your Saturday show, th th your show this Saturday? Yes, yeah, this Saturday on XM. All right. Yeah. Hey, Patrice, what, what? Saturday night from what, 9 to midnight, Patrice? Just tell him. I, I, I believe. I don't know the exact time. I think it's 9 to midnight this Saturday. Uh, who's Patrice your co on XM. Cosmo. Patrice, who's co-hosting? Where do you go? Patrice? What, did he hang up? He's gone. Oh, did he hang up? Or did We're he... not even done with this. All right, oh, here's the... Goddamn. <laughs> <laughs> I know. I'd like to scream at you in a balcony. <laughs> Probably didn't pay his phone bill. <laughs> Damn lazy. A black-white conflict. There's a great deal of disturbance in this country and how blacks feel about what oh. happened in Katrina. And you know... What? Katrina? Yeah, yeah, that... What? That... What? what? <laughs> You're unraveling. He came apart at the seam. Uh, you know, and we would pillage and rape their women. Uh, that's why there are mulattoes. Get a hold uh, of yourself. The you know? Amistad, Jerry. <laughs> the Amistad. It, yeah, it's, it's calculated. And then the aliens <laughs> yeah. came down. Ah, they were uh, fed to run fast. And uh, talk you know, to me. The, uh, the, the slave owner, Jerry, would breed the bigger black <laughs> guy with the woman... Yeah, and make the better athlete. <laughs> I think he knows exactly what he's saying. He's like, I gotta make, I gotta look as crazy as possible. I'm apologizing for yeah, everything. Right. Uh, and the Emancipation Proclamation. <laughs> <sighs> My cats were talking to me. They told me to get on that stage. Well, Newman put me up to it, Jerry. <laughs> it was Newman. Yeah. And you know, many of the comics. Many performers are in Las Vegas and New Orleans uh, trying to raise money for what happened there. 
And uh, for this to happen, for me to be in a comedy club and flip out and say this crap, you know, I'm I'm deeply, deeply sorry. Oh, how much more sorry. God, did he they? annoy me with that. Wow. I'm not just like, look, man, I got really angry. I screwed up. I apologize. It was rather tasteless and stupid. You know, Grovel. it's not the way I feel. But, yeah, I was trying to handle it. Genuine. Trying to handle it in a certain way where it was going to be irreverent and a little, you know, a commentary on words. And it really came out the wrong way and looked bad. And, you know, sorry about that. But it happens. You know, you're flying by the seat of your pants up there and you get aggravated. And, uh, mm. yeah. All right. Well, we got more of the apology from Letterman. I just apologized for him. Uh, Emmett Tillis, uh, Medgar Rivers. I, yeah, I was, not Dr. Uh, King. We didn't Martin know. Luther King, Jerry, on the balcony. I <laughs> don't know what to do about that, but I apologize. <laughs> really bugged me. Just addresses Jerry for everything. Right. Yeah, of course. Oh, I want to apologize for that last <laughs> statement, Jerry. Jerry. <laughs> so, Nazis, Jerry. He also sounds a little bit like Dr. Bellows. <laughs> I, was, I was Major Nelson. I saw there was a woman here a minute ago, and then I came in. She, but Major Nelson was here, and then, but he, I apologized. He was always so confused. That's how Kramer was last night, like yeah. Dr. Bellows, after he saw, like, a car disappear in front of his eyes. All right. Saw Major Nelson flying. <laughs> but Major Nelson was flying, and the black people, Jer Jerry. Jerry. So we got Patrice O'Neill back on the line here. This uh, Kramer thing is just taking over the show today. It's a huge story. Did you hang up on us? Oh, hold on a minute. Oh. Hey, I tried to push out before. Um... <laughs> Would you hang up on us? Yeah, what happened? I tried to hang up on y'all before you said uh, people say you gotta go. <laughs> no, no, you weren't even it. close to that. Uh, hey, but listen. No, your phone card ran out. And, and, and here's the thing: I heard all three of you immediately. This is, this is why I'm. I'm uh oh. Thank you for letting everyone. The every white person is racist. This is why it's a good thing that Cosmo Kramer, because because the first thing Opie goes is. Ah, oh, he's lazy. And then Anthony goes, his phone probably got cut off. And then Norton goes, I like to talk to him on a balcony. So, <laughs> that's like, oh, oh, my God. Shut up, Norton. So, the, the Cosmo, here's why, here's what, what makes me sick about white people, right? <laughs> black, black people are the only people. Now, look what Mel Gibson, the soon as Jews... They, they muscled up Braveheart and The Godfather when they thought for a second that they were saying some anti-Semitic stuff. No one but white people are the only people that the, that are in charge of black people's upsetness about uh, the word, you know, the N-word. Now you got black people saying the N-word. <laughs> we are comfortable saying the word nigger. We're comfortable with it. We live with it. It doesn't mean anything to us anymore. And some people take that as some type of, oh, my God, this is this is horrifying. But some people like me go, ah, white boy, say what you want to say, man. I'm better than you and better than your stupid words. But white people, racism is a war between soft white people and racist white yes, people. Yes, white guilt. Mm -hmm. Norton taught me about white guilt over That's the right. years. That's right. We shouldn't have it. We have to keep fighting because they're getting... Oh. <laughs> That's not what I meant. Hey, can we go back to the uh, the Kramer audio Patrice from Letterman? Just, Patrice just said something that made me, uh, well, oh, I forget what I was going to ask you, Patrice. Yeah. Ah, you raised a good point. All right. Uh, let's get back to the audio. It'll come to you, Jimmy. Kramer on Letterman last night. Uh, we're almost done here. Uh, Michael, let, let me interrupt here for a second and yeah. ask a question about had had the uh, the people doing the heckling or the people who were not paying attention had they been uh, white or Caucasian or uh, any other race what what would have been the nature of it your response happened. then it, it, it may have happened you know I'm a performer I, I I push the envelope I work in a very uncontrolled manner on stage I do a lot of free association and spontaneous I go into character I do I I don't know in in in, in view of the uh, of the situation and the and the act going where it was going, I I, I don't know the, the the rage the rage did go all over the place. It went to it went to everybody in the room. But you can't, you know, it's it, it, I don't. Everyone I don't know in the room. People could, blacks mm. could feel what he's. I'm not a racist. That's what's so insane about this. Oh, and yet it's said. It comes through. It fires out of me and. Uh, even now, in the in in the in the passion and the, and the uh, uh, that's here as I as I <laughs> He's just confront lost it. myself. 
It would have been funny if he apologized if he came on and goes, Dave, you know how they are in clubs. They they, they talk all the time and they heckle and they don't tip and their orders are hard to follow. And I'm trying to do my bit and they won't shut up. <laughs> he should apologize as Kramer. Yeah, that's what people wanted. That would have been fun. See, the they thing, wanted Kramer. The thing is this, white people are stereotyped all the time. It's not just black. How do you think you, like, it, it feels like whenever there's sunshine or good things happening or, or joy, people go, ah, must be a white man around. <laughs> How do you think we feel having to deal with that? <laughs> whenever there's a smile on a child's face, that's where a lot is the of white pressure. man responsible for this? A lot, of, a lot of pressure to live up to. Yeah. The worst apology ever given for well, anything. Here's, Horrid. Here's the final clip, and Seinfeld finally gets involved a little bit. When you say, I'm not a racist, too, when you have to, like, blurt that out. That's a little rough. You, you, are, you probably are. <laughs> Who cares if Cosmo's a racist? Agreed. Who cares? Exactly. Yeah, no one gives a crap in the end. He's just trying to, you know, save his it's, reputation so he gets some more projects. It's, yeah. cra it's, cra it's like no one is surprised... Except for white people who live in that goofy little lie that none of you are racist. All of you are. Hold on, but you are too, Patrice. I, I thank God. All right. I have finally made it. Where someone could, I want to be called a racist. That makes me feel like it's now it's all equal. I believe everyone's a bit racist and everyone's a bit hypocritical. I don't. Wait, I, I'm not a racist. I just find blacks to be less enjoyable than my wife friends. <laughs> 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 yeah, and people get confused. They don't think black people could be racist. No. I, I pray that one day we can really be, because I'm, I'm ready to. You're ready to go. <laughs> to forefront, baby. I think once it's all accepted, we'll get along like never before. The, fir I'm a, the first thing I'm gonna do is hang all three of you up upside down and beat the bottom of your feet with something hard. <laughs> that, wow. I know, our perfect pink feet. Hey, I've been writing it down. I'm ready. <laughs> All right. Yeah, Patrice has a list he's got to get to. I'm ready, baby. And he doesn't even want to do that to hurt us. It's just a sexual thing for him. <laughs> Maybe you can hang us on a swing in your bedroom, creep. <laughs> I, I, didn't, I didn't finish, and also I want to tickle you. <laughs> uh, all right, let's get into the last clip here. Seinfeld Tomo. getting involved here. Tomo. The and having, having apologized, uh, <laughs> is there much more you can do, much more you would like to do? You should have done a I just plug. have to do personal work. Um, I. Um, oh, please say he's going to go to Africa and adopt a kid. He's just please, sitting there. Please say it. He's just sitting there in silence. Right. I think I got to work uh, on myself. I, uh, this is what you're going to. Uh, rehab. I'm going into rehab. Clear. Takes care of everything, though. But has, yeah, he, ever held, has right. he ever held a conversation before? Uh, what are you going to do now? Uh, uh, the uh, vacuum? Uh, 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 he could have got out of that because he could lie about the context of the video. He could say we was he could say we was all doing eyes or something. It was a it was a half of a tape that he he qualified by saying that he was he did what they say and he did. He should have yeah. said, "Look, man." I, you know, I didn't lose it. You know how I am. I'm nutty. That's why I am Kramer. That's how I got the part. I'm out of my mind. And that didn't mean it like that. He could have got away with it, but this dummy, and that's another thing. Let me explain something to you. That Sinbad and Michael Richards, and I'm not saying Sinbad is not black, but I'm, gonna say, I'm saying that he's... These are the two most irrelevant racial guys <laughs> yep. you will ever see. They neither one of them have ever talked about race in their life in public. Now they're in charge of this situation, and they let him in. And none of these guys, Jerry Seinfeld, none of these guys talk about race, and they making this. They ain't putting pressure on 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 Kramer for what to give money to some black cause to the NWA. Come on, man. This, yeah. This, who gives a d Cosmo is a racist in now what? Page two. We're, we're losing, what's next? Yeah. All right. Here we go. I, I'm still wheeling from this. It's just been a few days. I, I don't know yet. Jerry, I'm, is there anything you want to say to Michael here? Um, I, you know, I know Michael many years, and I know how he works on stage, and none of that uh, justifies what happened. But uh, you know, I've been talking to him today, and I, I, I just I. I he, he's someone that I love, and I and I um, I know how shattered he is about this, and um, 
and he deserves a chance. That's why I wanted him to come on. He deserves a chance yeah. to apologize, yeah. and, and that's all he wanted. And uh, thank you for letting us. Awesome. My pleasure. Yeah. Thank you very much, Michael. I, I appreciate it. Thanks, I know it's Mike. difficult, and uh, I certainly hope you don't have regrets about being on this show this evening. Thank you. All right, take care. Right. And then he just kind of sat there looking stupid. He is a dud as a human. I will say this, though. I respect Seinfeld for bringing him on, because I, I think that was partial season seven, but partial since the What's year. Seinfeld got to lose with, in that situation? And Letterman handled it well. Looks I mean, like Letterman, a peacemaker. Yeah. You know? And yeah, Letterman Letterman ate that up. You kidding? When he do you think when Seinfeld walks up to Letterman and goes, "Hey, I'm thinking about you know yeah. maybe we get Michael onto, yes. the, onto the show." Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> not, only get, what? not only do you get Jerry Seinfeld, who rarely goes on TV these days, you get yeah, Michael yeah. Richards. You get the biggest story in the news, uh, entertainment wise, and. Uh, you're gonna have both of the guys on. Yeah. Hell yeah, you say yes. That's just like us going on Leno. And gonna, right. And they're gonna put Simbad on stage without a shirt. And let Michael Richards yell at him. <laughs> Give him a good scolding. Hey Anthony, what was your? I didn't hear what you uh, thought. Did you think he was racist? My whole take on it. Oh yeah, there's there's, there's some racism bubbling uh, on, under the surface there, and it just popped right out of his face. But uh, well, we were discussing this earlier, Patrice. We said, you know, when you get into a conversation, you really want to go after someone. You you go right for the jugular, right for the atom bomb. Right. He doesn't know the guy. Maybe if he if he knew that guy and knew that perhaps he was a uh, uh, let's say he's a deadbeat dad, he could have called him a deadbeat dad. If he knows, he did. He, he did. wait a minute though, I'm a, the, a friend, a, a, a comic who was on the show that night gave me a call, and he was he, I hadn't even heard about it. He's the one who told me about it, and he said that the same dudes. We're in the audience the day before messing up the show. Oh, that's kind of like their gig? <laughs> like, these guys were, were well-hated. Serial hecklers. Michael that's great. could have been, like, trying to be the hero to every comic who had to deal with these dudes. And the dude made me mad on the tape when he goes, that is uncalled for. That was unnecessary, man. Yeah. And I was like, dude... It, let, let him do what he got to do. And, it's, and the saddest thing is Michael Richards didn't get off stage until somebody called him a used-up has-been who can't get on, on on movies and who can't get TV work. Yep. And and that might be really the crust of it, uh, is that poor Kramer can't get a job. Yeah. And, uh, and he's just mad at everybody, dude. And now he's got to go on the apology tour to have any, any shot with Hollywood. He's like, what did what did Fred Mertz do after uh, I Love Lucy? He is the Fred Mertz of our time. He called Louis Armstrong a coon. In the, in the middle of a cigarette commercial on, on, on uh, 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 what's his name, on the Milton Berle show. Yeah, I want to tell everybody to uh, smoke Lucky Strikes, and I'm sorry about what I said. Doing a Lucky Strike commercial. <laughs> hey. He had to go on talk shows and smoke cools yeah. to prove that he didn't mean it. <laughs> you know, me, me and Tessie used to hang out. And... Yeah, he's a PR. Huh? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he's one of the swarthy mud people. I think, uh, you know, uh, light up a Lucky and share it with a black man, but just don't let him end lip it. <laughs> oh, my God. Man. Oh, my God. It's, it's just, look, man, it's, it's news because I guess it needs to be, but I, if you ask black folks, man, the first of all, half of them will go, who's Kramer? Because barely anybody black watches Seinfeld. No, black people don't like Seinfeld. We're not a sign, we're not Seinfeld. Not, the, not black people who would get emotional enough to care. Like, yeah. it's like, you know, I can't think of a, of a white show where if they came out that somebody was racist on it, that we would all go, oh my God, this changes everything we ever thought. Kramer's not beloved in the black community. It's like, you, you know, you watch it. I mean, thank God. I never watched it up until uh, syndication. And thank, you know, for syndication, you know, I got a chance to watch it. But when it was out, and the, he's not beloved. He's beloved to white people who could get to escape the fact that they are racist. And that, like... What is it going to take now for people to know that it's out there floating around? At least y'all talk about it as fun as, you know, you do your thing. I mean, Anthony's really racist, but at least, 
it's fun to deal with the fact that you are racist. I can have an actual argument with you or Norton. It's or, fun. Or, or Opie. It's it's like I can argue. I can't argue with these with these white people who are now saddened at Kramer. You know what's it going to take for like there'll be a, a blooper or, or 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 something one of the Scooby Doo characters say it by mistake or something. <laughs> that was, we, we're all real people. I thought. Uh, I thought uh, Casey Kasem made us understand that these phony balonies are real. Yeah. Hey, uh, but, uh, you got something? Yeah, What is? here's what I wanted to ask you. Why do black people not like me when they're in the audience? Look, say that again? Why do black people not like me? I see. You know the look I mean, too. It, it, Norton, it, Norton, you look like somebody we shouldn't like. That's exactly what it is. You, He's right. You are, first of all, you're bald. And you're you're just white, <laughs> and, and you know what it is. If you look like somebody that we all should be robbing. <laughs> but no, it is. A, a... And another thing that bugs me about you is that every time somebody goes, "Uh oh, Norton's getting mad. Watch out!" I go, "You can just put Norton inside of a wallet." And <laughs> means nothing. So it's like, but, but, but black people look at you like you you represent. Yep. Things like okay, you know what you represent Norton to me, and and not to me, but I'll tell you what you represent to black folks. You represent, and this is why I love white people being racist because I like to be mental with the mental because I you know I, I I'm a big black guy, so here's what I've been dealing with. It's like a, a white boy that looks like Norton when I was younger would go would call me that word and then run as I'm chasing him with my hand around his throat and, and then I go, wait, he called me this word and then it doesn't matter. I get suspended from school. I get arrested. I get whatever. So I had to learn how to deal with that. Norton represents, like, why, why black people look at Norton and go, ugh. If Norton represents somebody who they want to smack in the face but has this attitude that he can't be touched. I.e., like, Kenny. Like, somebody might go, boy, are you lucky that big dude ain't with you, man. I like to pop you inside your little white head. But that is the, that's what you represent to... Just from looking okay, at no, him no, no, on no. the stage? Yeah, well, uh, yeah, because I knew part of it was the way I present myself on stage. Black people with white performers or white comedians, they like it goofy. They like it silly. They don't like you to have an attitude about race. And then that, or an attitude in general, probably. They don't mm. like it. They yeah. don't like an aggressive attitude. Yeah. Um, they like an apologetic or silly attitude. They don't like an aggressive attitude. They deal with empowered white and, people and, and I, and I said, all the not, time. They don't not, want to do it at a comedy club. Burr. I call Billy Burr and, and ask him about what it feels like. Because Billy does, like, you know, a lot of black wrongs. Yes. Man. He knows. But Billy gets love. And Voss gets love. You know? Right. So it's... it's, it's, it's because they... Know? I don't talk about the black community the way Billy and Voss do. I don't talk about it like, I don't knock it either, but I don't talk about it like, oh, you got to watch out, the sister's mad. Uh, I mean, I'm not saying that's all they do, but there's an attitude coming from that that I, I don't have. Because I'm not up there trashing black people either. I'm talking about, there's something about the way I talk. It, it reminds black people of something they don't like. Yeah, and it's you, not something you, I'm you, saying. You, Norton, mm -hmm. you are somebody that black people just uh, uh, instinctively don't like it's just you look like somebody that black people shouldn't like that's exactly what it is you look like a like a, a, a cop that a nork that'll get beat up if he wasn't a cop <laughs> well, I, 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 don't, I don't love it you look like he'll get beat up if he wasn't a cop but i don't think i would get beat up i mean i'm a nice guy that's right man there's a there's a i think there's like a latte place right on 125th and, and frederick douglas who and they'll be changing those names pretty soon too no more adam clayton boulevard no more frederick douglas it'll be a nice whatever whatever white people mean you know fred mcmurray <laughs> boulevard <laughs> cosmo kramer street cosmo there's the joke <laughs> cosmo <laughs> lucille ball <laughs> <laughs> uh, William right. Frawley Boulevard. <laughs> uh, Patrice, always a pleasure. Thank you. I'll tell you one thing we're doing at XM today, replaying the Stalker Patty bit. Right. And oh. we're going to say nigger a lot. Oh, come on. <laughs> oh, Jesus. Jesus. Good timing. Wow, you just passed. Wow. Uh, <laughs> this is New York City, Opie. Is You're true. in the middle of the sidewalk. Yeah. Why don't you just yell pigeon? <laughs> ah, I, I, I decided to roll the dice. What the hell? That is so annoying, though. You, a huge subject like that, and you got to say I the end. I know. Really annoying. Fucking FM radio is... They're, they're, they're self-destructing. They really are dopes. They're self-policing to the point where... Uh, yeah. 
they're, they're going to be a non-entity. Today was one of those days where I'm like, thank God we have XM. Absolutely. Yeah, thank God we have XM. I like now that we go every over day, there. though. I love going. I really oh, yeah. do. But in general, we could do our show on regular radio. Right. But today is one of those days where you realize, oh, God, broadcast radio is doomed Kenny. in the end. The big story of the day, of course. Is Kramer at the Laugh Factory out there in L.A.? Everyone's uh, talking everyone. about it today. Everyone. And uh, we can finally play it uncensored over here. Yeah. On XM Satellite Radio. People very sensitive about language. Yeah, the first half of the show, they uh, they don't allow us to say the N-word, which is so ridiculous. Yeah. And in the context of uh, a news story like this, it really puts a little more detail into the story. It makes it a little more... Uh, uh, understandable uh, than you know having to speak like you're in the third grade using uh, statements like uh, we uh, the N word was used. Well, here it okay, is. Come on. In case you missed it, here's Kramer on stage at the Laugh Factory in L.A. and uh, he's just going off. Here it is uncensored. Shut up! Fifty years ago, you had your own tied down with a fucking fork up your ass. <laughs> So what? The, the curses were the bleeped out. The beeping was not us. That was on YouTube. It was like that. So yeah. For whatever reason, they beeped on YouTube. Oh, okay. The curses were bleeped out. Yeah. All right. And then here's part two. Wait a minute. Where's he going? Oh, it's a big threat. That's how you get back in the man. That was real call for. Wait a minute. He's not going, is he? You're just not funny. That's why you're reset. Never had no show. Never had no movie. Son of a bitch, I did. Oh, I guess you got me there. You're absolutely right. I'm just a washer. Got to stand on the stage. Oh, absolutely. That's it. We had it. We had it. We had it. We had it. And there you have it. <laughs> wow. And we have uh, we have Jamie on the line. He's the owner of the Laugh Factory in uh, in uh, Los Angeles and the Sister Club here in New York. Yes, Jamie. What's up? Hey, man, how you doing, guys? Hey, good, Jimmy. good. How you You're man? getting a lot of attention today, huh? Oh, man, that kind of attention I don't want to get, man. <laughs> man that's no, huh? Attention. I don't know what's happening with me. I always get the wrong attention. With Michael Jackson, I got the wrong attention. It's no good deed gone with that punishment. That's what's going on, man. <laughs> I'll let the guys go on the stage. That's what I get. Wait, what was the Michael Jackson uh, attention again? Oh, you remember that that kid was from our comedy camp. He was a kid from our cam comedy camp. He came in, and he went with uh, uh, Mike, uh, Michael, and he went to his house, and the kid was dying of cancer, and we introduced him to Michael Jackson. You were the one who introduced him to Michael Jackson? Yeah. God, you're a, you're a hell of a friend. Please, be nice. Be nice to me. Don't start going. Don't, please, no. I, I know where you guys are going with that. <laughs> now, uh, wait, were, were you at the club when this happened? Yes, I was. So you were. So you saw the whole thing. I saw the whole thing, and I I saw it, and I felt sick in my stomach. I went outside. I start. Everybody started leaving, and I started giving them all money back, and I gave them money for their drinks. Everything. I gave every single person their money because, you know, I mean, one thing I have a policy in here that anybody comes in here, we guarantee them laughter. We are the only clubs we guarantee laughter. If they don't laugh, we give them their money back. 
And that night, I felt like if after 20 years being in a, 28 years being in a business, that's the first night I ever refined everybody's money for the wow. drinks wow, you're, food you're, and everything. You know, not only would I not give my money back, I would have tipped like 25%. That is entertainment, my friend. Well, let me ask oh, you a question, my God. Jamie. Don't, don't, hey, don't even go there, man. Wait, Jamie. it's entertainment, though. I, I'm not even kidding. Jimmy brought it up today. If you go to a comedy club and you see someone like Kramer having a complete meltdown and getting completely racist on that stage, you can't pay for entertainment One, one like of the things that. people go to comedy for, I me, mean, you know this, uh, I mean, as a comic, I know it too. People like to see the unexpected. They obviously didn't want to see that. But when you see a really, one of the most famous characters in television history is Kramer. And to see him having a complete emotional breakdown on stage. Yeah. It might not be pleasant, but man, you won't forget that for the rest of your life. Do you think I people know. would have remembered the Hindenburg oh, yeah. landing at Lakehurst without incident? <laughs> oh God! No one would oh. have remembered. Hey, hey oh. let me ask you, Jamie. What was going on? Like, what were they actually yelling? Because I heard those guys had been in the club the night before. What was happening with those guys? What were they yelling? They, at? they would keep yelling, "You're not funny! You're not funny! Get off the stage! You're not funny! Get off the stage!" And all of a sudden, the guy had a you know he 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 just he, poor guy you know he was I feel feel bad for him because all of a sudden I think he did, he's not a racist maybe something happened clicked in his mind because of all of a sudden what's happened is the confidence as a comedian you know the confidence is gone and he start blushing back at them uh, Jamie we're all racist first of all uh as people <laughs> what as people yeah but when he was on that stage was he doing any racial humor no, so he was just he was just doing he his act. Not, he didn't he didn't use the n word, none of that no, crap. And then when none, these guys none, none of that these guys obviously got under his skin in such a way, he just went for the jugular and and uh, went for the atom bomb. Yes, and by the way, in Paul Mooney just walking in here. If you guys want to talk to him, then I'll get back to it. And I'll have Paul Rodriguez in here. Then after that, I'll get back to you guys. Yeah, I would, I would sure. love to hear from Mooney because I would like to hear his angle. Was he there or no? Yeah, Paul, Paul Mooney, he wasn't in here, but he saw the tape. He's talking to CNN and everybody about, because Paul Mooney, don't forget, Paul Mooney and Richard Pryor, they were the first people that opened my club in here 28 years ago. And Richard Pryor and Paul Mooney, they were the first people, they went on the stage, they used the N-word. And the reason they used the N-word, they were telling me because of the, take the power away from that N-word. And that was the billion ways they did that. But, you know, Michael did it because of hate-wise. But, Paul and everybody, Richard, they did it because of other reasons. Jamie, let me ask you a question, though. Yes. Was it was it hate, or is it, when you've been, I've been heckled, we've all been heckled, like all yes. comedians, is it hate, or is it just when somebody hits you on a certain level, like the worst thing you can say to a comic is you're not funny, I mean, that really hits you at your core. Exactly. Isn't it human nature sometimes, I'm not saying what he said was right, but you want to hit them back as hard as they just hit you, and with a black guy, it's a racial thing, if it was a woman, he probably would have called her a cunt, if it was a fat guy, he would have just, you know, whatever, the, if it was somebody in a wheelchair, he would have called him a cripple, he went for the most hurtful thing he could hit with, because he had just gotten hit with something that, as a comedian, let's be honest, that really is is emasculating. Uh, you're absolutely right. We all seen that. I've seen every everything from Sam Kinison on the stage to, you know, to I mean, usually they used to a lot of Robin Williams. All of those guys they used to come in a club. They used to watch Paul Mooney performing and you know taking all of that stuff from you know. I mean, it was amazing. Anyway, why don't I put Paul in because then I get Paul Rodriguez. Then I'll get back to you guys talk again more or whatever you guys want to do. I love both of you guys. I think you're the funniest people in on airs, man. I want to get you in a club in. In New York City, come to Laugh Factory in New York City performing there, guys. Right, what, we can make a deal. This is what I suggest: you get uh, Michael Richards for uh, for a month at the Laugh Factory in New York. You want to see crowds there, Jamie? We'll plug I'm them. going to do it. You gotta, I'm, if you said you, I'm going to get a crowd, I'm going to bring him up there. You got to understand promotion, my friend. Has okay, he been? Buddy. Has he been banned from the club? He's been banned from the club. I'm the first person, and this is the first time in my life I've banned somebody from the club. Wow. Are you going to lift that ban, do you think? As if he make a good with everybody, with African American and everybody, he make a good with them. Oh, and boy. then at that point, you know, we concerned. Oh, too. just lift the ban. He, yeah. was, yes. he was just being a silly goose he up there. He didn't mean it. He didn't mean silly it. Silly goose. I know. <laughs> he was I know. just being a... If you guys, if you guys said he didn't mean it, I believe you guys. <laughs> <laughs> because you're both comics. You know what's going on. You know what's coming next. Rehab. Yep. That's right. That's rehab. right. And talking about rehab, here is Mr. Paul Mooney. All right. Yeah. Hey, Paul. Paul, how, are you? how you doing, What's man? up? What's up? How funny was that the other night? Opie Anthony, Jimmy Norton, of course. What's your take on it? I mean, uh, I mean, obviously he had, a, he had a nervous breakdown. Yeah. You no, know, he had a complete nervous breakdown. The take on it, if you know comedy at all, 
Jesse hung those guns up. That's why Jesse James got shot in the back. He hasn't been on that front line. He's had it easy. He's been on that TV. He's gotten all that love. And he came back to do that stand-up. And you can't walk away. You get out of step. Right. It's like being a soldier. And uh, when he got heckled, he didn't know how to handle it. And he flipped. Because I'd heard about it. I got phone calls about it. I mean, I'm, you know, uh, I say a lot of things. I mean, I don't care what anybody says. I'm not usually offended. But I was offended by the, by the anger, by the truth. It just poured out of him. Because he said on the stage, now you know how I feel. You know, and I kind of felt like, this, I, I thought maybe the South had won, the way he was screaming and raving about it and saying, saying nigga and fork in your ass and hell upside down and all that other crap that he said. And it was just, it just oozed out. So what, bugged, every, what bugged you wasn't the fact that he said it, it was the fact that it was almost like something blew his real feelings the, out. That it was a breakdown. It was a nervous breakdown. Him, O.J., and Mel Gibson should do a movie together. <laughs> Three crazy men, and thank God there's no baby. Oh, brand new record at the box office that would make. Do you think yeah, I mean, I'm just saying, it, just, it, was just, it was freaky and it was weird, and it was actually personal. He had personal problems because uh, that he was saying and, and that anger, and he just got out. It's like that, ang that liquor and that emotion, you know, and race is a very important thing. I mean, I've been doing this for a long time. I've been telling everybody, but, you know, they all look at me like I have three heads. Ra race is a very, very important thing in America, and it was, it's only could happen in California. Well, were you surprised that people walked out? I mean, like, look, as comics, when something weird is happening in the room, I mean, why did people walk out? It, it, obviously, was it their, their moral objection, or were they afraid the guy's going to come back in with a pistol? No, I think, they, I think they walked out because they got afraid of what was going on, that somebody would get hurt. Listen, um, my friend that's dead, uh, Eric Douglas, he said uh, one Monday night at the comedy store, he said, I hate nigger night. And a, a black man got up and knocked him in the head with a chair. Wow. Yeah. But wasn't it billed that way at the club? What? <laughs> he said, what did they call that at the club? Why would he, he say said, that? no, it wasn't billed. <laughs> He's no, kidding. No, 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 that was, that was black, black. You know that. And who hit Eric Douglas in the head? Was it Kirk so or Michael? No. I mean, I, I kind of knew Eric. He was. He tried to take me to a you know a club yeah. one night and party. He, he sued the comedy store. I don't know if you remember that. No, I actually no. never even heard about that. Yeah, he got hit. No, no, he got hit in the head with a chair. And he sued that's for what, a, like a security? Listen, when, that's just a, let, let me tell you something. It's a very dangerous, you're in shark-infested waters if you start playing around with that word and you don't have any experience with the word or you haven't been around with the word. And it, gets, it gets to be real weird. You know, the, the youth react to it differently. I mean, I have youth in my house, and they want to kill him. I mean, you know, for my generation, I mean, we were always marching and we want to sit down and discuss it. If you can't round the bus and we'll all talk about it, um, the youth... They want to turn the bus over and burn it. There'll well, be nobody arrive. Well, what is your now? Look, you do a lot of uh, racial stuff. I've seen you enough times. Uh, oh, no, I've been, I've, no, no, not do a lot of it. I mean, the, the person that started work with the N word was Dick Gregory, and then Richard took the ball because I've written for Richard for thirty years. Well, I don't even mean the N word. I'm saying just racial issues in general. Yeah, racial period. With. Right. So, well, what I'll, is the worst reaction you've gotten by doing that stuff? Because I know a lot of white people or uh, don't like what you say on stage. What's the worst reaction you've well, a lot gotten? Of black people don't like it. Okay, what's the you worst reaction? Know, you, you know, you. Everybody thinks race is color. It's race is a mentality. It's not color. It's mentality. You could, you could be as black as Wesley Snipes and not like black people. Right, well, have you had bad reactions men, from men, audiences? Men, mentally, huh? Bad reactions. Have you had I've any had kind of get, I've had black and white people get crazy over race. Race is, is, is a very emotional and important thing. I can get out of an audience in 15 minutes more than their psychiatrists can get out of them in 15 months. You ever surprised they by hide it? Huh? You, you ever surprised no, by the way no, they react? No, no, not surprised by it. No, uh, not in California. No, not in Cal California. You know, you have to remember this. Is where you have your police stuff. It only happens here, Manson. It only happens here. Do you think it, do you, California has burnt three times racially? Do you think, in the right context, a white comic can go up and use the word and not have a problem? No. It's Why? Just, it's just because it's very dangerous. In, in, but because, he has, because they have no experience with the word, and because white people created the word. You yeah. can't. You can't. Listen. You can't create something that you've used against a, a group of people. A group of people that you black people are actually a conquered race. When you take a person's religion and then their name from them, you do them. I mean, I have a. a, a a European name. You know, I don't have an African name. Uh, white people who are born in Africa say they're Africano. They don't have African names, do they? I uh, no. Don't they keep think they so. keep their names. No. They're not conquered. So it's just, it's just dangerous. It's just it's just very dangerous. So you just see just, white a white guy in no context at all, no matter how funny the bit is, should ever uh, use the word on stage. 
I can't say ever because it's been done in movies and it's been done uh, on the stage in uh, in a theatrical thing. It's mm-hmm. okay, you know. Yeah, but, but uh, I mean, on a one and one, that that stand up is personal, and unless you've got some kind of connection that's real heavy, it, it, it's it's just it's very dangerous. But I now I've seen I've seen black comics unload on uh, stereotyping white people. Uh, and goofing, and uh, sometimes getting pretty nasty about it. Uh, yeah, and, but and yeah, that's, but it's uh, yeah, but it's that's not, okay. See, it's, no, it's not okay. You, it's because white people haven't been lynched because they're white. You well, I understand. So, how much yeah. how much time has to go by? Do you think what? Bef- before it's acceptable uh, to for for us to? Uh, you know, so everybody goof, to get up and goof on each other and say what they want, right? Complete freedom of speech in a in a comedy club. Well, you're going to have to get rid of Bush for starters. Well, I think well, I think you got that. I, <laughs> I think that's in the bag. Uh, yeah, just a but, no, of but, time. no, but 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 we haven't gotten over Reaganomics yet. So you know, once you do some stuff, it's still trickling down. Yeah, but we haven't gotten over Reaganomics yet. So Bush got two more years. So we just have to wait around and see. So you're saying that race is more black people have a different kind of a, a different uh, freedom with race on stage because it's more of a reactive thing than with white people who have been... Well, also, the youth, the youth run around calling themselves nigger. Let's face it, my nigger, your nigger. The youth has a different... Listen, um, the youth in my house have a different reaction to this than I do. You know, I I told you that. I mean, uh, that Kramer stuff, they want to kill him. Yeah, is that right? Oh, no, the youth? Oh, no, they don't don't have any patience. No, No, they they want his ass beat or him hurt. Oh, yeah. So uh, what I'm getting from talking to you, though, is that... There is a, a First Amendment double standard as far as race goes as to what is acceptable for people to say on a stage. But the Constitution and the amendments, they weren't written for black people. We were animals, remember? You're forgetting. War, war, for there, uh, there's a lot of were here. Yeah, but it's a not. Lot it wasn't, of were no, here. It, yeah, but I'm just saying it, Time, it wasn't. Huh. Listen, don't be offended because you you got white skin. Don't get uptight. It, nah, it's the nah, reality you, of it. You, when you, we talk about you're reality, words in my we mouth can't here. get angry Believe about me. it. I'm not putting words in your mouth. You're putting I'm words in my it. mouth. No, I really I'm, have no sense. Believe me, I have no sense of guilt whatsoever, my friend. Paul, you understand this is the most guiltless white guy ever. I have no sense of guilt. Paul, that that act's not going to work with us. We don't have that that white guilt that you like to work. Uh, I'm not about working with you. Uh, listen okay, to me. Okay. Listen to me. I've I'll, been I'll listen. Longer than you've been white, okay? What? I'll I've listen. been black longer than you've been white. I'm older than you. I'm not, not by much. Here. These two are fucking believe me. They look a lot younger yeah. in their press photos. Yeah. It doesn't even. But it doesn't matter. I'm just but, telling you the facts. So, of so what does that? Can, and, what does that mean? Thank God we're in America. We can argue and be like this. There's no problem. Yeah, but I'm, I'm saying, what does that mean? It, it, there's there's a double standard on the First Amendment as far as blacks and whites go and the use of that word. There is a double standard. The use of what word? Nigger. nigger. Saying it on stage in certain things. Where did nigger come from? Since you're an expert on it, where did it come from? Uh, I would believe probably a country's name in Africa where they brought slaves over from. What do you, what, what, who do you think the first person was called nigger? Um, I would say a slave. Yeah, who yeah. wouldn't work? Who was defiant to the master? Probably mm-hmm. by a black slave owner. Huh? By a black slave owner. That's another myth. See, a black slave owner. That's the you're trying to connect it up to say, well, you did it first. Slavery was different in Africa before the white man came. We're not interested in what we did in Africa before the white man came. Well, I'm we're we're kind of. I'm only interested in what happened. <laughs> in the West we're kind of not which, interested which, 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 in what happened. Uh, before, years ago. yeah, before uh, slavery was abolished. Once it was abolished, yeah, there was still a lot of racism and hatred. But do you? Uh, some people don't see any improvement over the the times when lynchings Listen, were acceptable to now. Do you, know, do you know you have black blood in your veins? Of course, I'm Sicilian. Because of slavery? So, no, I don't care what you are. Do you <laughs> do know that because of slavery? And I have white blood because of slavery. And that's why the two we are arguing right now. Nobody hates like family. <laughs> My brother. Well, I know it. That's why. <laughs> if I was your friend, listen, you'll be on your deathbed. Your brother, your sister, you'll die saying that bitch or that motherfucker. But your friend, oh, forgive him. Have him come. It's the way it is. 
And that white man is the responsible because he carries well, the, he carries the, the name. He screwed all the black women. <laughs> Don't get me into this. You'll get me crazy. But Why? Get nice crazy. Who no, it's, 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 well, it's gives nice a shit? Get crazy, man. Listen, yeah, you're, very nice talking to you, and I'll see you in the next ride, okay? Yeah, uh, all right, Paul. <laughs> oh, Take it easy, God. man. Oh, my God. I'm sorry. Here, 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 no, it's a fine discussion. Yeah, I would have liked to have spoken with Paul for a lot longer. We don't mind his angry as you want. I'll get him on the line again. It's absolutely fine. I got no problem talking to Paul. Paul. Let's let's get Paul Rodriguez on in. Here right. it is, Paul Rodriguez. Well, this is a great entrance. Hi, Paul. Oh, how, how are, are you? you doing, man? It's Opie. It's Anthony. It's Jim Norton. You were actually at the club when it happened. Um, I was. What? Uh, like, when did you realize? All right, well, this is getting fucking awful fast. Well, with Michael, you want to give him a lot of leadway. I, I still kept thinking he's he's making a point. He's going somewhere with this, you know. See, he's not a road memorization guy. This guy is, does a lot of uh, all ad lib. You know, from night to night, he doesn't say the the same thing like other comics that that have a set routine. You know, where they're how where how far along they're in their, their act by the by the jokes. You know, he, this this guy's brilliant in a lot of ways. I'm sorry that this happened to him, and I hope that the uh, African American community community finds it in their heart after whatever hoops that he has to jump to uh, to to bring him back I, i'm not ready to dismiss him and and never have a, a kramer or never have michael back i mean i've known him for many many years as much as you can know an extremely introverted person but uh huh. he's a he's a great talent man he didn't get there just by, by just not being funny paul don't I, you think this is getting ridiculous like look look i mean i'm a comic i'm a white comic and I, I know that a lot of times what we say is real on stage, and a lot of times it's just in a moment of anger. And look, his apology was awful because he's obviously a shy, you know, fucking obviously yeah, one of those yeah, introvert. He's, but he's as sincere as he could be at the moment. I thought it was sincere. But for, I agree. But forgiveness from the African American, it's like, look, he said he was sorry. His behavior wasn't bad. He just said some stupid shit. Shouldn't the African American community just get a hold of itself and move on? I don't think most black people are that incensed. I think it's a few people that like to grab something and run with it because it's like most people are like, who gives a shit? He's Kramer. So what? He's not a politician. I like to believe that too. Uh, unfortunately, the calls and the threats and the this thing has look. You know, it's it's it's, it's sad when when uh, uh, this story replaces a legit murder. You know, when it when it's replacing the Katie Cruz Holmes wedding. My God, nobody's talking about Britney. No, this has captured Thank the God. imagination of this everybody is... and everything. Because I think deep down, where we all live, all of us, me, all of us, we have a certain something innate about about r racial jokes it it makes our lousy life seem better somehow it, it's survivable to know that you know i'm so-and-so but i'm not so-and-so you know there's always that sort of thing it, it, it's nature look i think he deserves uh, a, a second chance especially in the spirit of of christmas coming up the holidays you know I'm not defending him in the least i witnessed it i've never seen that before it, it was horrible and all said and done but uh he he himself uh, must be in a horrible, horrible place right now. I, I'd be afraid for for him hurting himself, man. He, uh, you know, this is just a down payment on what cell phones and the video cell phone is gonna. It, it's a lot of uh -huh. people gonna be caught with their pants down. You what, mark my words. When is the la this is the thing that bugs me? Because I I think yeah, you got to apologize sometimes. You say something stupid or you got to yeah. hey. But I mean. It's like, how much mea culpa is he going to have to do? It's like, you know, I, black people well, never well, gave a so, shit about him. Are they going to care about him now? It's like, so what? He said something stupid. He did say he was sorry, as, as awkward as it was. All I right, mean, well, you know, but in all reality, though, fellas, it's just been two days. Come on. Yeah. Now, even I'm not ready to cut him that kind of slack. But I am... I'm not ready to dismiss him forever. I'm not ready to, you know, there will have come a time where cooler heads will prevail and realize that, look, you know what? Have you seen what the, I've seen African American comics. And, and may I say this at the, at the, at the risk of, 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 of getting uh, more hate mail. Look, you cannot, uh, have, uh, hit after hit after hit uh, rap albums taking making all this money where they use the, the n-word as an adjective you know uh, you right, know, right. and this and, and that and look if, Whoa, if, it's, if it's so offensive start there for a change you know you got these white kids in the suburb uh, trying to be all the coolness all the hip things all the all the trends are started in the ghetto uh, African Americans have a tremendous influence on that okay well if you continue to, to hoe and to pimp and to bitch and to you know we're, we're all kinds of 
Romanticism is gone, nothing but AKA fire and all that. It has a devastating effect on the African American community. Well, you know, maybe, maybe, maybe this, uh, this, uh, this crazy man, uh, this, this uh, lunatic, whatever he was that night, maybe he uh, uh, listened to one uh, too many ludicrous albums. Well, Paul, aren't you, like, as a comedian, I mean, look, don't, and I, there's a difference between what he did, which was, you know, look, it was obviously real yeah, anger that came out. First of all, the sin don't was, you get sick and tired, Paul, don't you get sick and tired, though? of having to say African-American and the N-word like we're children. Doesn't it seem like it's just condescending I, and childlike? It's like black people can handle being called black people. I just, I, I did that last night on one of these networks, I forgot, and used it, and my, 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 my email is clogged. Use you what? Just, I, I, I used the, the word. He what, said, in I what context? Him, uh, that he was, huh? he was in talking what context? about. He, he said. Well, I, I said, I said, you know, I said, I feel stupid uh, using the N word. You know, we're all, we all know what we're talking about. Nigga, there, I said it, what, yeah. the world didn't end? You know, I, I, I don't know, but, but you know, again, it, 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 it's, a, it's a, the inflection. Do we have to go to take Ebonics? If we say nigger, that's horrible, but if we say nigga, is this happy? Is this party time? Look, either write down some pamphlets, some rules where we all could all abide by, <laughs> or just, yeah. or just realize that, that people are, are human. We, we have off days, you know? I mean, he, he had a horrible Magna Carta off day, but, I want to believe still that there is a Santa Claus. I want to believe that this dude is, is will do us a, a, a lot more good in the long run. You know, he himself, one of the things I found the most offensive was, I'm rich. How crass is that? Did he All say right? that? You're ri yeah, he said, I'm rich. You're going to have me arrested. I said, well, you know what, Michael, if you are rich, which you are, uh, uh, how about buying every turkey there is and taking it uh, to, to South Central, wherever? Uh, well, how about somebody addressing the piece of shit heckler who wasn't thrown out of the club? Why didn't they dump the guy who kept yelling, you're not funny, get off the stage? Why yeah, didn't they throw that? Before I mean, the that, tirade started. Listen, that, that didn't come off the top. That came after, uh, you know, sometimes it's funny, sometimes not. That came after uh, 10... Uh, Ten, uh, 50, good 10, 15 minutes of uh, he was just not hitting his mark, man. It was just not funny. And I'm telling you here, you know, the, the biggest crime is if you have enough, if you're not being funny, get off. Go. Goodbye. It's over. Chalk it up. Yeah, he got under his skin, though, man. He couldn't take it. The, the guy, as a comedian, man, when someone yeah. says you're not funny, get off the stage. I mean, that really is the worst thing you can say to oh, us. Yeah. So he was oh, hitting back oh. as hard as he could. Yeah, well, you, you try, you know, and then, then you know, you, you go to your, you hop on your Porsche, and then you, you go to your big house. Yeah, know? right. At, at that point, though, we're all humans, and uh, all bets are off, and he went for the jugular and the A-bomb. the man had a period. He had a man, my, he had a man period, you know? <laughs> yep, I mean, yep. He had, he, dude, it could, it could happen. It could happen again. Hopefully not to him, but which one of us who calls ourselves a comic is immune from dying? I don't care who you are. I saw Pryor die. Yeah. You know? So it, it could happen. If it could happen to him, it could happen to anybody. And just put yourself in this place. I'm not in a position to forgive and forget because although he did make a couple of cracks uh, of, uh, of uh, Latinos, I'm not the defender of the faith. What I'm saying here is that the only the crime that I saw was that he was not funny that night. Yeah. Now, for that, I'm not ready to throw the but, baby with the bathwater. But entertaining as hell, huh, Paul? Hey, we're talking about him. Look, let's, No, let's, but, I mean, you're sitting there. you got to admit, you're, you realize, wow, I'm seeing something here tonight. I was saying yeah, that. It was, in, it was entertaining in the same way that the Hindenburg. Uh, it, was <laughs> Good it was entertaining in the same way that, 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 you know, that you saw a car wreck. You know, it was, it was uncomfortable, but man. How do people walk out? Like, look, people come to see the shows. You want to laugh, but, I mean, you want some kind of a live. But, God almighty, the guy from Seinfeld is shouting nigger and breaking down. How does any audience With member impunity. walk out on and it that? Was, it was over and over. You just saw it. You yeah. just, that, that girl, you just saw a little te teeny bit. She got the camera. She got the phone out. No videotaping is allowed, but that thing might as well be thrown away. She got the, the, the videotape. Uh, there's others. There's others that I'm aware of already that, that capture some of the beginning and some of the, some of the stuff. But uh, here, uh, to say the truth is the, the, the black guy up there, uh, that whole crowd, that, those guys, they were innocent, as far as I'm concerned, because uh, the and I'm not defending either way. They were innocent because they didn't they didn't set out their fans. They didn't set out heckling you ain't funny. They they gave the man ten minutes. Look, you don't get a laugh in ten minutes. Maybe you're not funny that day. Right. Yeah, but I, all right, I understand that. Um, and, and they weren't going, but they weren't going with anything racial at all. 
No, no, no. That, okay. the, the, the racial thing was started, but, you know, I man, I'd love to be able to have a tape to go to defend. You know, when it's all said and done, we're, we're like the cops. You know, we stand up for each other. We want to. Yeah. But this, you can't defend this. He's the one that started. I figured that do, uh, do this brilliant, and he is, man. He has, he's had moments of unbelievable lucidity. From I mean, I go back to, to, to Fridays, that, that show on ABC years ago, yeah. Cutting Edge, you know. I mean, he had brilliant moments where, where he, he, he began to talk like dogs of different ethnic groups. He does funny, funny stuff, you know. But, but this particular moment, he was trying out something. You know, you know, I don't care how famous you are, you get, for that kind of fame, you get maybe a minute. Maybe a minute, they'll, they'll, they'll cut you slack a minute. After that, we're all equal. We're all, I don't care who you are. Gotta leave, that, yeah. We're all, you're not we're getting all equal. You're eating it. And, and, and you, when you're eating it, and let's face it, it's like gambling. Every time you go out there, you don't know where to, you know, sometimes you're rolling sevens, sometimes they're rolling you. Well, how much time is he supposed to do? Well, with a, with a star of that magnitude, we pretty much leave it up to them. But they usually don't abuse it. You know, they don't do. You know, they, 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 Chappelle will come in, uh, but but they they do their twenty. They pretty much stay on time. You know. Well, let me ask you. Um, as as a comic, being banned from the club seemed like a weird. Uh Especially since it was only a language. I'm sure comedians, Jamie said he didn't ban a comedian, but I'm sure there's been physical confrontations in there where guys weren't even banned. This was awful, but it was only verbal. Uh, I mean, do you think banning the guy from the club is right? Or is it temporary? It's the only bullet we have to fire. It's the only bullet we have to fire. We, get, we, we can't send him cookies and, and milk. Well, the funny thing is you don't have to ban the guy. Yeah. You know what balls it would take for him to go back on that stage? He banned himself. He banned hey, himself. how you doing? <laughs> what do you think of his apology? Like, huh? I think I think he meant the apology, but geez, it was dude, just he did mean awful. It. You, know, you got to know him. You got to know him to know the dude is extremely introvert. I mean, I'm not, I don't think in the twenty some years that I that I don't think we've done we've said ten words in a row. The the, the guy off stage, he's a totally different dude. Uh, on stage, he's this brass, this this crazy maniac. You don't know what he's gonna do. He's gonna, you know that that's the appealing thing about it. Off stage is hey, what's happening, Michael? How you doing, man? I saw you in the zoo. Yeah, all right. Hey, hey, Paul. Hey, how you doing? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's it. Yeah. No more than a whisper. I, I bet that's as loud as I've ever seen him. I know that's as loud as I've ever seen him. How many guys were there at the table that were heckling him? Do you remember? It was probably a party of... There was only one guy, really, that that, that, that uh, responded, stood up, and, and addressed the African-Americans. But it, 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 I, I remember I went over there to see if there was a problem. They were enjoying, uh, you know, saying, oh, no, no, I don't know what he's doing. But they, remember that episode? It was just so funny. See, while they were talking, Michael, down down there at the on the floor, he, he's probably not hearing that. Sometimes you hear what you want to hear, you know? Uh, I, I'd probably, probably a table of six. Yeah. Hey, Paul, did you have to go on stage after that? There was nobody to go to. The, uh, everyone, yeah, everyone filed left. out. I became management, you know, I became management <laughs> and then started giving the money back. I mean, it got it got to the point where, you know, there was another side of there. There was a couple of dudes that, you know, were, were ready to put their hoods on and going, yeah, now that's what we call comedy, you know. Right. So so it was, uh, you know. It but was, dude, only in L.A. with the whole club file out. Like, you know, I, I was in the comedy cellar one night and Robin Williams went on. And I guess there was a race. Actually, one of the guys in the audience called a comedian named Godfrey and was arguing with one of the guys in the audience, and the guy called him a nigger. And Godfrey is, is a pretty ballsy guy. So Godfrey Cambridge? Yes. Uh, no, Godfrey uh, Godfrey uh, Danchima, the comedian, black oh, comedian. Right. Yeah, yeah. And, and, and Godfrey uh, addressed it. So the guy walked out, and as the guy walked out, there was two, like, they were like, uh, they looked like Samoans who were fans <laughs> of Godfrey. They are the two largest humans I've ever seen in person. One That's guy had to it. duck to get out the comedy cellar door. They went up the stairs, and a fight ensued while I was on Ooh. stage. And I mean, you could hear giant tables being thrown. Not one person walked out of the club. The whole club sat there, looked up at the ceiling, and I, and I tried to MC the fight, and everybody <laughs> stayed. Not I, only in L.A. where they all file out wounded. Dude, I remember when uh, Johnny Witherspoon uh, got into a fight with Eddie Murphy. Right in front of me and Paul Mooney, as a matter of fact. I remember a lot of fights, but those are innocuous. Things are going to happen, you know. You you have a couple of drinks, you look at somebody, sometimes you just want to fight. You, know, you get into a couple of fights here and there. You know, in my younger day, I, I threw, some, threw some scat. But, but to tell the truth, this was... This was more, this is a fight, a bloody nose, tomorrow you wake up and it's all right. You what know? was the problem you had? I remember I read something about you years ago where you, call, you, you mentioned the death squads or something and you had a real problem with somebody in the audience. For, yeah, for... yeah, it was during the, uh, the uh, conflict in El Salvador. I was working this dive bar in, uh, in uh, East Los Angeles. And, and let's face it, when I started, the, you know, the, 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 I was the aborigine. I was the Latino community. I was the only comic. And when we started, I, I did a joke in Spanish about how ironic that, 
that a country named after our Savior Jesus, you know, uh, if, you're, if you're of the religion, uh, should be the bloodiest country. So I, I, in Spanish it rhymes, El Cristo Sangriento, the, the, the bloody Jesus, you know. And this guy uh, from El Salvador was uh, took exception to that, and in hindsight, you know, he was, I, I respect him, he was fighting for his guy. It's just that I got the better of him because I had a microphone stand. What did he do? He, and that, you know, I, I put it to use. And, I, and the funny thing about it is that I, I, he falls on the floor, and I go on like nothing happened, and the audience is dying. They, they found that hilarious, and I, and I was scared to death. Yeah, no so you kidding. hit it with the mic stand after he came after you and then just yeah, kept doing he, the set? I saw him from the corner looking at pick up the mic stand, I tapped him. He falls, and thank God he, did, he wasn't legal because he just sued me. Wow. I didn't have nothing. <laughs> well, thanks a lot, uh, man, yeah, for right coming on. on. Well, fellas, hey, love your show, man. Keep it up. And uh, There should be wreck with him, man. There, he, he, he should make his amends. And, and sh- I don't want him banned forever, you know? I mean, What do you think? Re- rehab for uh, Michael? Well, whatever he has to do, he has to work huh. out. Well, rehab he, seems to be the thing in Hollywood. You, you go into rehab, and then you come out, and it's like, okay, he did something. I'm a, all better. Maybe there's a, a, a chair over there with Mel and Thallions. I don't know, you know, but uh, <laughs> yeah. whatever it is, uh, I hope that humor will prevail at the end. All right, man, thanks a lot. And thank uh, right, so Mooney and uh, Jamie. Wait, let's get Jamie hey, back we'll get on. Jamie? Okay. Yeah. <laughs> see, we'll, we'll wrap up with Jamie. Thanks, uh, Paul. All right, well, if I can find him, right, I will. Oh, uh, yeah, he's a busy man today. Yeah. He's roaming around. Yeah. Well. What's going on there? I would give him the big sure, part. Sure, yeah. Listen. Uh, you tired of talking about the thing? Yeah, I am. You know, because I, I don't want to feel like uh, it's, it's bad. And I don't want to feel like I'm capitalizing on you. But we've got so many calls. Uh, uh, some of them scary, you know, threatening uh, arson and things like that. Uh, I know that it's a, it's a small, uh, uh, minute uh, part of the African American community. Look, in the spirit of things, uh, I, I hope that people realize that. Although I'm not defending. He just ran to another interview. Dude, that's Carl's Mencia. Uh, I yeah, swear to God. I don't think that's Paul. Paul. Yeah, that's got to be Paul, yeah. I did. Yes, I did. Jesus. I buy it. I wish the African Americans would have known him a little more. Paul Mooney gets me. Oh, could I just argue with him all day Yeah, but I'll tell you why I like long. him. He didn't fucking mince words. He said what he had to say without no, being no, politically that, correct. That, that I like about him. That's the worst part. He will... There's so much revisionist history going on, but he'll say it as an educated guy, and he would, no, here's how it is. And he'd be like, no, that's not how it is. But I mean, you can be honest with Mooney. And yeah. you know he's going to be honest back to you, and you're never going to agree. Well, I just don't with him honest twice. as far as what him. he thinks honesty yeah, yeah, is. Yeah, of course. I mean, just without you know, his punches. idea of it. I mean, the whole thing with uh, uh, that Opie brought up with uh, black slavery, you know, there's a whole nation, a, a country over there that was just cutting through their own people and enslaving them. And then when Whitey came over, uh, you know, they were, they were helped out by black tribesmen to enslave black people. Uh, for some reason, Paul said, no, that never happened. Oh, okay. All right, Paul. It was the next logical stage, man. Yeah. They were enslaving their own people. And what's the time limit? I, I asked him, you know, what's the time limit? Uh, obviously, you know, a couple hundred years isn't the time limit right. for the time that slavery ended. Um, maybe uh, 70 years for when, you know, yeah. they, the blacks really started getting rights in this country but didn't really have them. Is that the time limit? Uh, when we stopped uh, sicking dogs and fire hoses, is that the limit? When is going to be the time yeah. when anyone could get on a stage and speak like anyone else in context of comedy. Because Paul, believe me, I asked him. He wasn't even for, you know, white people getting up there and using uh, the N-word uh, under any circumstance uh, well, Carl, in comedy. He, Carlin used it in a great bit he did about the power of words. It was a sincere bit. It wasn't, you know, Carlin says whatever he wants. Yeah. And he was talking about it's not the word nigger, it's, it's the racist asshole in the corner that's using it. And he went through this whole long thing about, he goes, Eddie Murphy and Richard Pryor used that word, and they're not racists. They're niggers! It was really a funny bit. <laughs> I mean, I'm, funny. I'm doing, not doing it justice. But I mean, Carlin made a great point with the word. Let's, Let's listen to not do Carlin. Let's see what's going on at the Laugh Factory in L.A. Hey, and no, no one's the same when. <laughs> <laughs> I ain't forgetting you fellas. I'm going to go look for him. See? All right. All right. Wait a minute.
Is, yeah. is Carlos Mencia at the club, too? No, no. no. Carlos uh, is counting his money someplace. Uh, did, <laughs> did you jump into another interview? Huh? You we, jumped into another interview. Did you just jump yeah, on? Yeah. Uh, no, that was, <laughs> yeah, that was me. That was using my own voice. Now, yeah, it's a... Uh, <laughs> that so was many, me using my own voice. Uh, there jab. are so many stations out here. You would think that uh, that Britney Spears is uh, fucking somebody on the roof. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, 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 give us some comedy, Paul. Let's go. <laughs> <laughs> it's too oh, serious fellas, around man. here today. It, it's, it's, it's bleak. It's bleak. You know, you would uh, there, there should be... Some uh, ray of hope, but I mean, it's gotten to the point where we've gotten arson threats, death yeah. threats. Uh, wow. Uh, they've taken this too far. Fortunately, here we're in the capital of Gang City. <laughs> Something could happen, but you know what? I ain't going down like that. I'm packing. <laughs> hey, what are you going to be in New York? You got any New York stuff coming? I got to finish a picture and. Uh, and then, yeah, I, I was uh, I was in New York. I did a uh, I did comics. I did comics a, a while back. It was a terrific, terrific club there. That is nice. That's, that's a new place. That's you know? a new place. Cool. Yeah, yeah. It was a terrific uh, night there. Uh, I want to go back to New York, but you know, right now I I got to keep up with the Lopez's. So I'm uh, I'm, uh, I'm I'm working on a a, a TV uh, series here. All right. Well, we'll All see right. you when you come to New York, buddy. All right, All right fellas. Tell Great Jamie time. thanks. Okay. We'll do. We'll do, man. Nice talking to y'all. Take care. Right on, Paul Bye. Rodriguez, everyone, and. Uh, yeah. Yes, uh, Laugh Factory. We got one right here in New York City. Yeah, yeah. Times Square. I did a cringe humor show there once. It was it's the old Show World on Forty Second. It's yeah, really yeah. fucking weird to walk up. The, do you know how many? You, you know how weird it is to perform someplace you've scrapped a hundred loads. <laughs> but uh, it's a cool club, man. I mean, it's like right on Forty Second Eighth. It's got like a really weird vibe to it because of the history of it, but you are in upstairs in Show World, and they haven't changed it that much. Like it's a nice club, but they left some of the original like mirrors and shit. It's like the vibe there is oh, kind of crazy. Cool. Well, I you have cool. been there a few times if you recognize the mirrors. Oh, dude, I recognize the floor decor. tiles. I'm like, look There's at that. One. That's my gum. I dropped my gum. I contact there. I oh, put you it up. can. You recognize old loads on the floor. <laughs> gum. Oh, that, oh, gum with a mine. C. <laughs> oh, that's one of mine. Oh, one over here. Oh, geez, that's mine too. Oh boy. Hey, what's the latest on Kramer? Well, yeah, he's uh, front page news again. Yeah, uh, congratulations to little Jimmy Norton. Yes, you got uh, you got to mention in the Daily News today. Uh, a little, little quote, little Jimmy. Oh, did I? Yeah, on air apology, often a sorry state of affairs. You know, um, most people say, and the apology he did on Letterman was just god awful. And uh, comedian Jim Nor Norton pointed out on the Opie and Anthony radio show yesterday that every stand up has at some point wanted to lash out at someone in the audience. Good stand-ups control that urge. Very good stand-ups turn it into jokes that get the audience on their side. No, oh, nice. Who who wrote that? David Hinckley. David yes. Hinckley, Thank our you, favorite David. writer for either paper. Well, David know. Hinckley. Since that uh, since that conflict of interest writer was fired from the post. Oh, was he no good? Ugh. Enough of him. Good riddance to that guy. I wonder what ever happened to him. How can we still have to read his stuff? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, no one else does. He's still writing articles. Still writing articles. On us. Only we get to read them. Jesus. <laughs> Calm down, John. Might want to get a hobby. <laughs> and at 6.02, what I didn't like about the show was this. But That's then at great. 6 04, you turned it around. But at 6 05, I noticed. And 30 seconds. And 30 seconds. You know what you I like? You sounded a, a bit uninterested. But at 6 08, the excitement came back in the show. I like the fact that he Jesus. can't say, hey, I didn't write the headline. <laughs> right. <laughs> and, John, you don't have to include a picture of us with uh, the memo, okay? We're talking, uh, of course, uh, about John Minnelli. John Minnelli. Used to, used to write for the New York Post, a radio column. He did a terrific job, uh, job by the way. He got fired. And, uh, well, Free FM thought, what the hell? We need a program director over here. We'll hire him. Yeah. So now he's our boss. And uh, I just asked him one day, uh, what do you think of the show? Holy crap. Wow. Then at 6.17. That was amazing. <laughs> Get like a booklet. <laughs> right, a booklet is right. That was really something. He's insane. The guy's dedicated. You got to give him that. All right, back What's to Kramer. Win? So what's up with Kramer's? Um, well, apparently, uh, the comics, like Little Jimmy, <laughs> Little Jimmy's type, uh, they are pu publicity whores. And what I was saying, by the way, is everybody wants to yell racist things on stage once in a while. You want to just yeah. hurt somebody. I wasn't, I, that, that made me sound too nice. Like, a, well, you know, you always want to lash out, but a good comic turns it around. Turns it around and keeps it nice. I was saying every, every time, every comic has had the urge to just really chop somebody's head off on stage verbally. Yeah. But, uh, all right. Yeah. Well, uh, some comics came out of the woodwork and uh, decided to talk about his past and uh, what a, a raving lunatic he's been over the past uh, 
uh, over his whole career, I guess. Yeah. People that have worked with him on Fridays. When was Fridays on? Fridays. The early 80s? That er, was, yeah, early it was to like, mid-80s, right? And they dragged people out from back then to talk about how, you know, he's always very sensitive about his craft. You don't interrupt it. And he's uh, really crazy about punctuality. Like, if you're not punctual, if he doesn't get to go on stage... When they told him he was going on stage, he's like in a bad mood, you know and he'll what? get up there and just rip people apart. But you know what? The comedian, the comedians in general, get really mad at that. The guy well, going yeah. up in front of you, oh, yeah. yeah. Just, you I want guess everyone, he's never had Patrice on before him. You want <laughs> everyone really piss to, him off? You want everyone to, you know, to do their time and get off stage when they're supposed to? Yeah, that's the mentality of uh, every comedian working. You ever look at the uh, as an audience member? If you're at a comedy club. Um, there's a red light that comes on. Yeah. You, know, you can't really see it through all the lights. It's not like a red light shines on the comedian, but the com from the stage, you can see it in the lighting, a red light comes on. I don't know if, as an audience member, you've ever noticed it, but I've seen that thing on for a good 15, 20 minutes sometimes after it's come on, and the comic still on stage, and you go, and, and now I, it distracts me like, Oh, someone is pissed because you just know. You, we know how these people work. You want to strangle the guy. Yeah. Here's what happens when you're when you're ready to go on stage, and the guy is up there just yammering on. Either he's killing and he just can't get enough of the good feeling, <laughs> <laughs> or yeah. selfish is bombing and can't just be a man and walk off the side. Wants to finish big with something that works, and, and then he can leave with some dignity. And the and same guys do it over and over. Michael Richards, first of all, sounds like a baby. It's like shut up. Yeah. We know you're quirky. You're a genius who's just a little quirky with his craft. We get it. But the majority of time, you do want to strangle the guy as soon as he comes off. And uh, you, you avoid eye contact. I won't talk to people. Yeah. Uh, oh, Colin has screamed at people. Oh, really? Oh, yeah. yeah. Colin, Colin Quinn will him. yell at you for, for going over like more I've than seen the light, minutes. the red light start flashing, yep. which really is like... Get off, get off, get yeah. off. <laughs> it's the get off. Get off, get off, get off. <laughs> Well, uh, the Post writes, uh, Michael Richards, lovable and goofy as the hipster doofus Kramer on Seinfeld. Do we have to mention that in the articles? Who is he? Uh, is actually a, a ticking time bomb of rage who refuses to let anything stop his art, friends said yesterday. His art friends? Yeah, that's Some friends. friends. No kidding. Uh, Some goddamn friends. Melanie Chartoff, who worked with Richards on the sketch comedy show Fridays in the early 80s. How excited was she when her phone finally yeah. rang? 20 some odd years later. Oh my god, they want me again! They want me again! The paper's on the phone? Really? What college? <laughs> no, no, a real newspaper. <laughs> uh, let's see. Friday's in the early 80s and had an appearance on Seinfeld. Said uh, he became he becomes enraged when someone disagrees with his point of view. Oh. My sense of what occurred the other night is that someone was stopping his process. Yes, it was the <laughs> here. <laughs> said Melanie. I never thought of Michael as racist, but don't get in his way when he's trying to create. Create. See, they're spinning it as, like Jim said, this quirky genius. He's so, like, out there. We don't quite get it. Melanie's an ass. Because then she has to add that uh, he looked angry and lonely. Yeah, now, now she, she says, gets into some personal stuff. Yeah, why would you say that? Yeah, You need publicity. You need uh, to get in the paper that bad that you're going to trash yeah. the guy. Just because no one gives a crap about you 20-some-odd years later? Look at this. This isn't highlighted, but Richards divorced his wife in 90, and Chartoff suspects he recently broke up with a girlfriend. Oh, no. So she's, like, speculating. And speculating? She's stalking the guy. I suspect he recently broke up with a girlfriend. Yeah. Uh -huh. Yeah, he'd have flipped out no matter who the hecklers were. And if it was a woman, he'd have gone after her, too. Right. Apparently he did that. One woman who felt Richard's wrath is a comedian. Comedian? Jeremy? Uh, Beth Michaels? Beth Michaels? I only know two girls named Jeremy. <laughs> 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 Old PD joke. <laughs> <laughs> Flaming. <laughs> uh, on moronlife.com, she wrote that the lanky funny man, boy, they, they can describe him with a billion yeah. words. This isn't a guy that they... I mean, look at lovable and goofy as the hipster doofus. We have that. The lanky funny man. God. Once barraged her. What's that, Jim? No, no. With a tirade peppered with the dreaded C word. Watch it. Uh, said a few weeks ago she hosted a night at an L.A. Uh, comedy club and Richards did a racially charged and unfunny set. When it was over, she accidentally knocked his tape recorder off the table. 
a lot of comics like uh, taping their act yep. and listening back later and, <clears throat> and crying in their lonely small apartments at how awful they are. <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> you, will, you will never work in this town again, he said. I'll make sure that, you little C. <laughs> She uh, quotes Richard uh, Richards as saying, "He's gonna screaming. Ruin, ruin her career because she knocked his tape recorder <laughs> off. Tape recorder off of the table. Hey, be careful, you dumb C is acceptable. Right, but you'll never work in this. What is it, 1940? He's Howard Hughes. Yeah, I'm gonna ruin you, C. Nah, 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 nah. Nah. So then he started yelling, "You're a, <laughs> you're a, <laughs> you're a, <laughs> a dirty little." <laughs> <laughs> on and on. And I started thinking to myself, you know, I only accept those kind of things uh, as a term of endearment from dad or grandma. Ah, she made a little joke about That's it. That's that. funny. Oh, boy. She got a joke in the paper. That's terrific, Melanie. Not from some <laughs> who used his fame to be a <laughs> she wrote. What? Yes, I'm beeping. I'm beeping. <laughs> shut up. Shut up. Wow. <laughs> Well, at least the black community is taking this in stride. Yeah, they are. You turn the page. Um, God, they gotta love, uh, gotta love the c-word rant, though. My God. The Reverend Al Sharpton called the Letterman venue unacceptable. Oh, really? He's saying he should apologize to the people for uh, whom his remarks were directed and most offended. In all due respect to Letterman, it seems strange that one would insult African Americans in a long tirade and then go on a white television show and mostly white studio and viewing audience to make a statement of apology. I didn't know Letterman was classified as a white show. Oh, he is. You know, it's a white show? You yeah, know, Sharpton okay. is out of his mind. First of all, was uh, Kramer supposed to go on Montel? Montel. I can't even think of a black show. Tyra. Second, Tyra. But here's the deal that... We have racist Kramer! <laughs> <laughs> Panty! Ring, 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 no, ring. That's, that's a banana phone. What's yeah. that? Hold on. Oh. Long button, Opie. That's Danny what... party! Woo! Danny party! We'll get to that eventually. Uh, but this is what uh, Sharpton fails to uh, recognize. Hmm. It doesn't matter what show Kramer goes on to apologize, the media is going to pick up on it, but, and it's going to yeah. be everywhere. It's going to be everywhere. So what does it matter? And what he show goes, he picks? If he goes he on picked a... The, dude, he could have picked a public access show in the middle of Alabama... And it would have been picked up by everybody. So, so what does it matter? It's what a show? Tyra <laughs> a party. <laughs> <laughs> and unfortunately, Seinfeld wasn't appearing on a black show. Right, Maybe yeah. if black shows had Jerry on, uh, 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 Michael Richards would have went on that. But he wasn't. He was on Letterman. You can't get a bigger venue than Letterman or Leno. It's it's going to give you the biggest audience possible. As a matter of fact, uh, the ratings for Letterman were the biggest that he's had in a year since uh, the big Oprah um, appearance. When Oprah came on, yeah. uh, it's it was the biggest uh, ratings he's had in a year. Right. So uh, you're, you're getting across to a large audience. Right. What is he supposed to go on? Some show on BET and uh, apologize in front of a bunch of black people? Sharpton's just an ass. It's a dumb point. Sharpton's matter... obviously not running for anything. Yeah. So he's back to his race baiting. Once again, I'll say it. It doesn't matter what show you go on because the entire world's going to pick up the clip and play it at, at nauseum like we've seen. How many times have you seen the apologies? Yeah. Since we got off the air yesterday. I know. Seen it a thousand times. Yeah. Reverend Al's an idiot who, when he's running for office, we must have unity. We must have unity in the communities. We must get along, people. And then uh, uh, when he's not running for office, cracker ass mother cracker should be on a black show. Whitey. So Whitey up his... He, he he flips every time. You could absolutely tell when he's running for some kind of office. He becomes Ed the everyman. And uh. then uh, the second he's not, everyone's an ass. Well, the thing is, he knew that the apology was, I mean, it was bungling, but it seemed like it was sincere. He's just an inept jackass. Right. But then there's Sharpton can't complain because the guy did apologize, so now he's complaining about where he apologized. It's, yeah, so, it's just dumb. And if he went on a small black show and apologized, Sharpton would have said, why did they do it in a small venue instead of in front yeah. of his own people on David Letterman? You know, there's right. no winning with that guy. No. He by has the, fancy hair, though. By the way, we did an episode last week. We filmed the episode where we're saying the word nigga a hundred times. So I'm like, yeah, let's push the envelope. Really? Yeah.
Well, we'll see, we're white. We're not allowed to say the word. Yeah, well, that's what's hey, coming out with this Kramer my, thing. My, oh my God. Michael Richards' he's special fire. guest on that he's episode. He's on fire right now, yeah, Kramer. He certainly Bill is. Back the layers. But if you're white, you can't say the word. That's what they're he telling us. He said it. He's on fire. Yeah, he look at him. He's, fire. he's on every show. He stole the headlines from a OJ. Yeah, yep. yeah, he's on on fire. And if the stole. cribs get a hold of him, he's going to be on fire again. <laughs> Because it, well, he go to Arkansas, go to a go to a state that's all white like Arkansas, and they low for a minute, <laughs> then bust back out. They gonna give him a sitcom. Yeah, he gonna be on his, or he's gonna be on CBS. We gonna get a sitcom. Yeah, they give him something. <laughs> he had a little bit of trouble, but yeah, you're right. He's all over TV. Yeah, man. He's all wow. over the place. Hey, he's honest, man. You know the guy at all? No, I never met him. Never met him. In my life, but. He wigged out. He was in a rage. Deep in. He was yeah. in a rage there, Richard. Richard the Patrick rage. over there. Richard Patrick, they finally he, got a microphone that worked. He was in a rage. Yeah, you could say. He was just I mean, like, my lord. Losing it, no, man. Isn't you know it insane, though? Like, if you lose. on him. I like the guy that was heckling him. <laughs> Taught him a new asshole. <laughs> I say that. Let's dump it. Yeah, well, that's uh, that's why he went into the rage because the you know the guy from the balcony was speaking the truth. Yeah, he told me he was a reject. He wasn't funny. He hasn't done anything since Seinfeld, and that just uh, you know he you just lost it. You think that's what it was? Oh, yeah, absolutely. That flipped the switch in his head because all the Seinfeld just like Bobby Brown go get a reality TV show. All the Seinfeld uh, guys want to make it on their own. They want to make it on their own. Desperately. So did all the Jacksons. <laughs> well, good point there. So did Tito and Jermaine yeah, he lost in them. His mind. <laughs> but only Michael made it. Yeah, that's a good point. Yeah, you know? he just snapped. He that's did. why I'm. I, you know, it was nice to be on Saturday Night Live because it was an ensemble and it's a variety TV show. Yeah. So you know, it was nice to be the black guy on Saturday Night Live because you get your own section of the show. You were on there for a while. Uh. Seven joints. Hey. uh... We got the Michael Richards apology. Oh, good. Thank God. I want to hear this. He's he's just been apologizing ever since he's done this. Yeah. What is it, like a week ago now? Uh, last weekend, so. Last week, of course, he goes off on people at the Laugh Factory in L.A. and, and uh, uses the, the, the N-word. He's on his apology tour. Yeah. He, he's feeling the pressure. He goes on this huge show. You know, you might, uh, you might have heard of it, David Letterman. And apologizes. And apologizes. But that wasn't good enough for the black community for some odd reason, even though every news network in the world picked up the clips from David Letterman. Right. So the black community got to see Michael Richards uh, apologize, but it wasn't good enough. He has to actually go on a black a show. A black show. Which, yes. which, which is more separatism, by the way. So he had to go on the black show. I just don't get it. Uh, yeah. So he went on Jesse Jackson's show. Yeah. He apologized for saying what he said, and then Jesse Jackson apologized for saying Jaime Town. Jaime Town. Uh, I don't think so. No, of course not. And, uh, yeah, he apologized on Jesse Jackson's show. But now this isn't good enough either. Now the two uh, victims are uh, saying that he sh and their lawyer. Of what's that Why woman's name? Why do they need a lawyer? It, hate oh, speech, Gloria Jimmy. Allred. Hate yeah, speech. Yeah, Gloria Allred. Oh, she's, she's saying, yeah, she's, she's the lawyer. She is. <sighs> she, now, I, I saw a clip from Hannity and Combs, and she's saying that um, these people deserve a face-to-face -face with Michael Richards and a retired judge so the judge can um, figure out what type of damages should be uh not given, but uh, what kind of compensation should be given to these two guys because of the damages what? that have been done? They want money. What a vulturistic pig she is. She's a pig. She's a slob. A pig. Oh, you got to think she's a, word. She's got to be a size queen. No, mm, I don't know. Man. She's got to be a size nah, queen. I, I, I don't think she's uh, anything about men. No. I don't think she's anything about men. You would think you could get away with just about anything in a comedy club, but I guess you can't. No, uh, she goes, this isn't about freedom of speech. And then uh, to uh, Combs, uh, uh, no, it actually wasn't even Combs. It was uh, the lawyer. What's his name? Liberal lawyer, ponytail. Oh, uh, that stupid Ron Kuby. Kuby. Yes, Ron Kuby. Yeah. What's, I, he, what's he say? I can't stand him either. No. But he was saying it is free speech. Okay, he's right. It has to be free of speech. Of course it is. Especially in a comedy club. Granted, he didn't do it to be funny. He just yes. lost his mind. Yeah. We all have uh, that in our arsenal, by the way. Every single person listening to us has that in their arsenal, and they will they will use it if they're pushed. The atomic bomb. And, and they will use it if they're pushed far enough. Yeah. And Michael Richards was pushed far enough, and he, and he went with it. And he didn't handle it like a good comedian. I mean, he, what no. he did was over the line. It was wrong. He should apologize. But it's like enough groveling. You said you were sorry. Just mean it as a person. Shut your face and move on. Yeah. Stop it, you worm. You got $60 million in the bank. What do you need? Mm. You going to go out and do another mediocre comedy tour? Yeah. Nobody cares.
So you guys want to hear the apology? I certainly. They're, uh, the, the, right. two, the two black guys that are the victims, yeah. their account of the whole thing was hysterical, too, because it was all done through their lawyer. Uh. Like, you could tell the way they were talking. It was all pre uh, set up by their lawyer, and it was all, well, we had come in, and we were late, so we had to sit in the balcony, and we were ordering drinks, and perhaps we were being a little too loud to the... Right, that's what like, happened. You know something? That's what How happened. about you understand first, that even if that was the case, you ever walk into a comedy club, and people start ordering drinks loudly? Yeah. You want to turn around and smash them in the face? Nah, you know what? Do they know where they are? Dude, that, that's BS. Those guys uh, uh, purposely were obnoxious. They were being and went obnoxious. After Michael Richards. Which... Michael Richards came back at them uh, way overboard, and that's what happened. That's what happened. Why can't they just admit they were heckling? Why now they want money. Vulture right. have to try to get well, the money for what? And it's got to be in front of a retired judge because uh, it's not a case about free speech because there's freedom of speech. If he gives them anything, he should be shot. Yeah. Well. All right. Well, here's the audio. Um, Everyone wants to hear this today. This is Michael Richards on Jesse Jackson's radio show. Was it a radio show or a TV show uh, yesterday? Who knows who what knows? he's got. Did you even know he had a show at all? No, no, no clue. I'm of course sure it's not. good. But here you go. Michael Richards apologizing yesterday on Jesse Jackson's uh, right. show. Yeah. Yeah. That, that was a wonderful setup with uh, you Iran. put the CD in? <laughs> Iran. The C- and the apologize. CD's not even in the player. You put the CD oh, player. All dramatically right. hitting oh, the button oops. like, here it is. And there's no CD in there. All right, it's in there. Anyway, I uh, I just want to say that I'm sorry. I uh, I lost my temper, and I probably shouldn't have. I took it out on you. And look, if I've caused you any problems as a result of my behavior, well then, I'm sorry. I apologize. Even though you know Barry, between me and you, we both know that you started it. I mean, who's kidding who? Huh? They tell me that you're very upset, and God forbid I should disturb the very important monkey. I'm just hoping we can put this behind us. Let's just move on with our lives, okay? <laughs> you know, I don't think apologies like that are going to help Mr. Richard's uh, position in this whole debacle. <laughs> now, how come his Letterman apology seemed so much more sincere? Than that one. And why were the people laughing? <laughs> you want the real uh, Michael Richards apology? Yeah. Yeah, this I want to hear, too. All right. It's our, ce- our celebrity break? Yeah. Yeah, why not? This is him on uh, what? Jesse Jackson. Jesse Jackson. Radio show. show. Keep Hope Alive. Keep Hope Alive is the radio show? Yeah. Mm. Well, that's just got to be Great. a bore fest. All right. Yeah. I'm disappointed in Michael Richards that he uh, he... he he had to go on a black show. He he made his apology. He's doing everything he can. He's trying so hard to apologize that everything is looking insincere. He's just he's like a groveling, uncomfortable worm. Yeah. Say it once, Stop. mean it, and just shut Say your it. mouth. Go and home. Run. Go to bed. But he, Wake up in a month. He went on a, I, I want to yeah. make this point again. He made it. He made his apology on a huge show. With Jerry Letterman. Seinfeld right there, With Jerry which Seinfeld. means the ratings were big. And then it was picked up by the entire world. Yeah, so, so black, the black white, community everyone saw the it. apology. So why does he have to do it again on a black show? I don't get that. Because the black people told him to. We have to heal in the community. I, uh, uh, you know how they are, it. Jerry. You know how they are. Here we go. Here's <laughs> Michael Richards yesterday on Jesse Jackson's radio show. Michael, now that you've heard the radio. Yes. Version, you, you've seen the tape. Um, what is your reflection upon all of this now? Um, I have been. Um, tr- I love the delivery. I love the delivery. Uh, oh. You all to be seen of all of you. What's the <laughs> rational of it? This guy's got a radio show. <laughs> Holy Jesus. You can't understand this man. <laughs> Michael Richards, when you seen the TV, I seen a party. What? I don't understand what you're saying. Will you, will you be doing that that bit again? Well, if I could understand one word coming out of your mouth. What? Oh, I'm sorry. Let's get back to uh, Jesse Jackson's radio show. What did Jesse Jackson Jessa. do to become so Jessa. famous? All he did was... Went, All you have to be. He yelled duck in time. <laughs> 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 All you have to be is an activist. And uh, you're in.
You're in for life. Mr. King, I don't want to be the bearer of bad news, but... Coretta Scott, I don't want to upset you, but... (laughs) You know, I told him... Well, don't go on the balcony. It's dangerous. (laughs) But uh, he didn't listen. Uh, (laughs) No, that wouldn't be the news. He'd be like, "Uh, Mr. and Mrs. Earl Ray, I don't want to be the bearer of bad news, but they caught him. (laughs) (laughs) Ah, stupid club soda, Kenny. (laughs) <laughs> I, know, I told him. I don't know why uh, James R. Ray's parents should be named after his middle name as well. <laughs> <Wow>. <laughs> <laughs> Mrs. Earl Ray. But stupid Kenny would say that. Yeah, that's why it works, Jimmy. He would. Yeah. <laughs> Mr. and Mrs. Earl Ray. <laughs> Derek the Dodo. Yes. Mr. and Mrs. King Jr. <laughs> <laughs> oh, boy. Here comes Derek the Dodo. Yes. You know, a lot of people don't know this, but a relative of mine was the Secret Service agent that told Martin Luther to check out the view from the balcony. <laughs> All right. Wow. You, you ran in for that. Oh, boy, did it. He probably stopped in mid-conversation because a gem flashed. <laughs> Somebody's still talking right now, and Kenny just ran in. He was gem alert, gem alert. He was all the way down the hall. He started skipping to the studio. <laughs> He's excited. I get to be a racist. I got it. <laughs> just skipping. Can't wait to get in here with that... Comedy gold. <laughs> All right, here, uh, let's get back to just, uh, just a Jackson and radio show. Michael, now that you've heard the radio yes. version, you, you've seen the tape. Um, what is your reflection upon all of this now? Hello. Um, I have been um, trying to get to the source of where that anger comes from. I've been oh! trying to get to the source of <laughs> where that anger comes from, Spock. It comes He's from Priceline.com. <laughs> He's doing the best Shatner impression I've ever heard. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Uh, you know he doesn't want to do this. What a weasel. Stay out the bushes. <laughs> yes, please, Jesse, everybody. Um, in the course of doing a show... And getting tripped up and using racial language to hurt those that I felt hurt me. Warning. Wow. Warning. Using that language to hurt. Uh, and then seeing the pain, of course, that's come from this... Uh, oh, no, Jerry. It's Robo Kramer. Um, uh, the show is over. I've learned you are pretty sensitive. <laughs> just, just screw the whole thing up already. Enough groveling. Yeah, yeah no kidding. Get back to the funny. Just, yeah. Uh, or if, uh, after the question came, if you went, uh, could you repeat that? I didn't hear a word you said, boy. <laughs> uh, uh, stupid. Just how insincere does he sound? Uh, it's just, just awful. I he's petrified. That's why he's insincere. I know, he's petrified. Clip- Choose each word very carefully. Just don't say. <laughs> don't say. Oh my God, I'm saying it, aren't I? I'm saying it right to your face. I'm telling myself not to say, but I'm saying. I'm sorry for saying while I'm apologizing for saying. Hey, yeah. I think I should leave. You're onto something. That's why he's slowing down his speed. Yeah. Please. <laughs> I must resist temptation to say <laughs> holy <laughs> there it goes again <laughs> Jesse I want to apologize to you and every <laughs> out there <laughs> did I just say <laughs> again I'm a stupid <laughs> or- <laughs> <laughs> oh. all right here he, you know, I, he continues I need you know to do these stand up back you know, everyone thinks I'm rich, but hey, gotta eat. I'm, oh, jeez, I said it again. Or, or a quarter is five. I meant nickels. <laughs> you know. I don't want to be out there with a squeegee like the rest of you. So I went to the club and said, oh, I did it again. Oh, God. You didn't just curse. You unleashed rage, cursing, yeah. the repetition, use the word, and then the, then the lynching scene. I mean, have you been here before? I mean, how, how deep no. is this? No. No. This is, have, you, have you said this before? Uh, no. No. 
Uh, liar! Let uh, me think now. Liar! Jesse, Jesse, let me think. It's <laughs> one time. No. Oh, the I've pause said, is great. I've said coon. <laughs> that count? I... Oh. <laughs> oh, my God. Oh. Did you ever say this before? Said, hmm. Oh. Huh. <laughs> what about eeny, meeny, miny, mo catch it <laughs> by the toe? I, I used to choose. We used to choose up sides like that. <laughs> if he hollers, let him go. Eeny, meeny. <laughs> no, it doesn't even work there. <laughs> Oh, wow. <laughs> what the hell is wrong with him? Oh, <laughs> shut up. That's, that's... Why doesn't someone tell him, Jay Kramer, shut, shut up. up. Kramer, Kramer, shut <laughs> up. Kramer, you got to stop apologizing. You're ruining everything. I'm trying to sell season seven, Kramer. Doesn't matter, Jerry. The <laughs> don't buy this. <laughs> uh, buying Martin and other Shows Jerry. <laughs> Kramer, you're a beloved character, Kramer. What are you doing? Just stop talking. Whatever show you get on, you're screwing up. I'm not screwing it up, Jerry. I'm apologizing to the <laughs> like I'm supposed to. Don't get me started again. Look, there's a there's another there's a and a Jew. Jerry. How come I can say Jew and not <laughs> Uh, all right, let's get back to the apology here on Jesse Jackson's radio show yesterday. Before? Uh, no. No, no, no. No, no. no you marble mouth. <laughs> That's why I'm shattered by it. The way this came through me was like a freight train. And, uh... You people know about freight trains. You used to ride them. <laughs> the boxcars. Oh, wait, no, those were... Yeah, underground. <laughs> Throwing in any racial slur I can. <laughs> oh, just stop already. Freight train. And uh, after it was over, when I went to look for them, they had gone. And I've but maybe tried they were to meet gone. them. All you like look alike. <laughs> <laughs> I could have been talking to anybody. I was talking to the valet parking guy. You know that... Scratch my car. <laughs> Is this on? <laughs> Is this on? <laughs> <laughs> and I've tried to meet them, uh, to talk to them, to get to some healing and Ugh, healing because the um, uh, of the hate, the hate that came uh, to the floor on all sides. <laughs> what? <laughs> the, what are you talking about? He is a babbling. Idiot ass. The hate that came to the floor on to all the sides. To the floor on all sides. <laughs> oh my God! It is just hard to listen to. They're he right. doesn't know how to apologize. No. He and he's so scared standing in that room because I saw the video of this. It's Jesse sitting down at the console. Mm -hmm. He's at the guest mic, and there are two big black guys kind of oh, flanking God. him. Yeah. So he's just, it's like an Elzar Cowie video, beheading video. They're all ready to just lop they're, his head up. They're in bow ties, staring at him. Yeah, they're just looking at him, and he's, I, 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 I said something very bad. <laughs> uh, right after I said, I said something very bad. Oh, that was the bad part? <laughs> Ooh, I didn't. Uh, we got more audio we'll do in just a minute or two here. Just embarrassing. And then we got Paul Mooney. It was Newman. Paul Mooney. Newman hates the. <laughs> Paul Mooney says uh, he's not going to use the N-word anymore. Oh, good for Paul Mooney. That's nice, but, you know, Pryor kind of took the sting out of it in 1982 when he said he wasn't going to use it anymore. Pryor's yeah. the one that made it unhip again. Exactly. There you go. So we'll get into that in just a few minutes here. Adam Farrar, where are you going to be? I'm at the Improv in Fort Lauderdale Wednesday through Sunday. Just get on stage and yell, <laughs> it works. <laughs> you get plenty of press. <laughs> cool. All right. So let's uh, get back into this audio. Back to old Jesse Jackson oh, 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 show. <laughs> An apology by Michael Rizzo. <laughs> what? Well, here we go. So yeah. how deep and how long has, has you, have you had this? I sense thought of that was you. Mm. Well, I swear, I just thought that was Anthony. No, that's Jesse. Oh, how deep and how long 
Oh. Two of them. <laughs> Deep and long. <laughs> I was still playing that game. Right. We did during commercials. Know, Why not? Yeah. Deep and long. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you did it during the Brother P Touch read. Very nice. <laughs> there it is again. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> So yeah. how deep and how long has has have you had this sense of rage? Mm -hmm. um, I think for quite a long time, not aimed at the African. God, now he has to admit stuff he doesn't yeah. even believe. But not at the African American no. community oh, saying no. he's saying it's an anger problem. It started with Eskimos. <laughs> he doesn't believe any of this stuff. He just yeah. feels like this is what uh, everyone needs to hear. Yeah. Wow. So yeah. how, you know, how long has, has you, have you had this sense of rage? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, I think for quite a long time. Season not three. The African American. <laughs> when I didn't get as much money as Jerry, I was the one bringing the laughs. Not Jerry, but I had to walk around rich because I didn't have any money in my pocket. I was driving a car. <laughs> Uh, I was made out to be weirdly. <laughs> I I was the of that show. <laughs> as I as you and I have spoke, I have said that this rage has no color. I mean, it, I, I know that uh, uh, what I said uh, hit an African American, hit us all because it came out in the open. What? And I see it, and uh, uh, I, I will take full responsibility for this and uh, promote apology and go for healing. And uh, white oh, people are finished. God. White people are finished. We're done. We've ruled uh, how many years? Oh, many, God many almighty. years. Whitey has ruled the planet. The, the beginning of the end is starting with Kramer. <laughs> Who knew? Who knew Kramer would be the one to crack? The I'm fact that we are listening to this horse's ass apologize. Are black people really caring about this? Please, uh, do you care you whether know, he's sorry or not? You know what? Next week we're going to actually see Michael Richards with rings around his neck and plates in his lips <laughs> just to apologize more. Look what I've done for you people. <laughs> Look what I've done. I'm dressed like a regular African. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. I shouldn't have done that. It was yeah. angry. Just be a... Oh, is he awful? Take the hit and move on. He's going on a cruise, but he's gonna. He's not getting a suite. He's going to lay in the bilge <laughs> the whole time. <laughs> just, just let me lay here till we get to the Bahamas. <laughs> <laughs> My new name is Mustafa Richard. <laughs> Yeah, I'll probably have to change his name, right? I'm Kunta, Jerry. Kunta. <laughs> How bad do you think he wants to smash that lady in that had uh, her face in that had the freaking uh, video phone? Nosy Nelly <laughs> right. with her cell phone. I didn't think they could afford it. All right. Uh, well, it continues. That's not the end of this. There's more. Too much love for the African-American. Oh, no. Too much. No. But then you went beyond that, the, uh, the image of somebody being lynched hanging from a tree. Yeah. That went I wanted to bring the comedy back <laughs> <laughs> into the... Oh, I shouldn't have said that. <laughs> lynching. Why not you're going to talk about lynching with Jesse Jackson? Why Good luck. Why don't you admit that you go for... Like, you were angry, and when you try to hit a heckler, the worst thing you could say, when because they, they, they violate you on a certain level, and you just mm. went way overboard. It, it's the atom bomb. There's a oh, certain... Man. I would think... Now, I'm not a stand-up comic, but Jimmy, I would think as a comic, you're on stage, you get hit by a heckler. There is a certain level, depending on what the heckler did, that you answer them with. I'll, it depends on what they do, but you, you, yeah. you can't go overboard. Like, one time I got crazy. I mean, I mean, I went nuts. And I told some guy to, uh, I, first I told him, why don't you keep it down to a dull roar? Oh. And then I go, why don't you take a long walk off a short pier? Oh, wow. Yeah, okay. He sure. must have just punched you in the face. Nah, I'll get ugly. I mean, occasionally I'll go like that for the throat, but you know, you're trying not to hit that hard right off the bat, you know? <laughs> I would think there's certain levels, and then you have your arsenal. And if you want to equate it to uh, military weaponry, you have a pistol and a rifle and a machine gun, and, and you work your way up. Yeah. He dropped the atom bomb, but everyone has it we in their arsenal. We all have it. You all have it. And we'll all, every one of us will use it if we're pushed far And like enough. weapons, when the president's asked what military forces use, would you you'd think consider using nuclear weapons? They always say, well, we'd like we to keep it. every option open. No one ever says they're not going to use it. It's there as a, a, a threat. So he just, like, 
boom, mm. right away, pulled out the A bomb and mushroom clouded the whole place, and that was it. Yeah. <laughs> but what if the guy was just noisy? He didn't attack him, or was he I think the guy was no, no, no. See, he so he was heckling, but you, you know he heckled, uh, and it's something that Kramer truly believes that yeah. he, he's not funny anymore, and that he can't make it on his own without Seinfeld, and that's what the yeah. the, he he, would, the heckler pretty but much. Look, also, look at what happened. He got laughs at the at lynching line. He got laughs at the lynching line. Yeah. So he thought, ah, oh, okay, now your mind's running. He thinks, all right, I'll, I'll go with this. I could take it even further, and I'm just going to throw the word out, and I'm, you know, all my, bets are off. My Kramer raid. Either yeah. matter, he was mad that they laughed. Like, he was trying to be angry, and then when it got a laugh, he realized he didn't hit hard enough. I don't think Kramer's mad that nah. people are laughing at his mom's stage, because something tells me that doesn't happen very often. I don't, oh, you think it scared him? <laughs> there's no way he was going for laughs nah, at that he point. Had, he there's had, no way. The same. Yeah. He was angry, and he said, like, you ever been arguing... With your girlfriend or whatever, somebody, and you say something, and they laugh, and, and like you, you don't want the laugh there, like, oh. you don't want the situation diffused, you want to, you're, you're angry and you want to hurt the, you know, that's, that's when you just, punch their teeth down, uh, down their throat. Yeah, actually, that's usually the way it starts. That's what starts the argument. <laughs> yeah, they disagree politically, the teeth come out, and all of a sudden you're a bad guy. <laughs> I thought I would borrow. Like, all right, look, that sentence with, and that that sentence ends with, and that's what happened, officer. <laughs> yes, they're dragging you out. All right, well, it continues. Here we go. Yeah, that went to the next level that that feeling of those feelings had to have been thought up for a long time no no that was not, that's not an yeah. image i carry around every day and every time i look at an african-american i think that uh oh. he should be upside down <laughs> wow. right, just isolate wow. that way to heal just isolate wow. that wow when i see blacks i don't want them upside down all right well right. we're all healed i want them that's upside not an down. image i carry around every day and every time i look at an african-american right. and now here you go wait i gotta find it right it's right there day and every time I look at it oh, I gotta get it just right you gotta get that clip <laughs> oh. I want it from my machine too every time I look at an African American I think that uh, he should be upside down <laughs> oh. Oh. apology accepted oh. <laughs> that's a ring every tone. time I look at an African American I think he should be upside down oh. I, I, uh, to my knowledge they didn't lynch people by their feet yeah what what yeah. kind of image did he they didn't lynch up. people by their feet or ankles yes <laughs> yeah I'm bad as racism wasn't accurate come on yeah. Day and every time I look at an African American, I think that uh, he should be upside down. But he should have a and fork up his. <laughs> they didn't do that either. No. And if you're upside down, the fork would be down, not up. No one's going to waste their cutlery back then. Yeah. It's very hard to come by. <laughs> you dyslexus racist. <laughs> Dys Dys Dyslexus. Dyslexus. <laughs> dyslexus. The dyslexus. new car from. Yes. <laughs> drive backwards when you put it in reverse. drive. Yeah. We know. All right. <laughs> and hung from a tree. <laughs> oh, okay. Oh, boy, way to explain he it. He really went off, you know, bleeding and in pain. Yes, after having been whipped into the Strange way. fruit. <laughs> every day and every time I look at an African American, I think that uh, he should be upside down and hung from a tree. <laughs> I have too much love for the African American. I have. It's just. It's oh. not. It's. Um, oh God. I, I. I. I tell you. He couldn't even say that's it. not uh, a, a continual image or thought in my mind. Oh, I have too, too much, much love, love for the African American to imagine him. I mean, Jerry, I love the. <laughs> I love him. Is that really love for black people when you just don't picture them upside down with a fork in them? Lynch. Free? Yeah. Is that what the love image is? That's love. Well, Jesse Jackson asks. Are you a racist? The racists believe all that you said, including the death sentence. Do you consider yourself a racist? No. No. But I think uh, anger can go to a place that makes people hate uh, within all kinds of race. Oh my what? God! What, what was that sentence? He's right. a dope. All right, he he is an idiot. He's a dope. What he was is that an sense? idiot. God, a... And the delivery, uh, so slow and exact. Hate. I can't. The hate Anger. on the floor, and black <laughs> people shouldn't be hung. Trees. <laughs> the. Uh, love I have for the ass. <laughs> I can't say it. For the. <laughs> I love you. <laughs> you smiling little. 
<laughs> I love little ones, big ones, old ones, young ones. <laughs> Even ones with chicken pox love. <laughs> love you. <laughs> Jesus. All right, well, Paul Mooney had a. That's good. Continue getting publicity. Uh, it's amazing. Off of this story. He parlayed this. He's parlaying. Of course it. he is. Yeah. I don't think I should ever say that. He was really oh, excited to be at the Laugh Factory. Size queen. Wait a minute, wait a minute. Being interviewed by you everybody. Were, you, were enlightened, you were enlightened by Kramer? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, Pryor didn't do it for you in 82, yeah. but, but Kramer, Kramer did, did in 06. Kramer. Well, this is what Paul Mooney had to say. I, I, don't, I don't say that word. I, I'm not going to say that word anymore. Jackson also took issue with blacks using the N-word in songs or in reference to each other. Mooney says he's a changed man because of what happened. Oh. Michael has cured me. He's my Dr. Phil. I won't be using the word anymore. I won't be using it. Jackson says he's calling on all artists, television, and radio stations not to air the word in any songs or programs. Attention. Call in all. <laughs> call in all. Please refrain, refrain from using the word. Call in all. I have an APB out to all. Do not use the word again. <laughs> <laughs> They're going to rally behind Paul Mooney? Oh, my God. Stop. Really? And radio stations not to air the word in any songs or programs. He says the word is so steeped in negativity, it only brings pain. He thanked Richards for acknowledging what he did and for his willingness to get help. The actor says, I've been a conduit to something that I think is quite uh, meaningful uh, and the work begins outside, and the work begins inside. Uh, bless you. He doesn't need help. He's just an ass with anger issues yeah. who went too far on a stage. He doesn't need help. He needs help. God almighty. Are we doesn't awful. We are awful. He it's needs just not to do stand-up. He's not a stand-up, that's all. It just came out. He's got a tentative grasp on reality to begin with. He has anger problems, all right. Yeah. Welcome to the club, stupid. You got $63 million in the bank. Smile. Yeah. No one wants to hear it, how you need to heal. You slid on a floor, and you're set for 10 lifetimes. Die already. <laughs> slid God, on Mike, a floor. I'm sick and tired of him. <laughs> I hate him on that show anyway. Ugh, wacky. Oh, shut your mouth. You think it was someone's job to make sure the floor was really wacky? Wacky. Of course it <laughs> was. Probably get had to wax up the floor right it, there. It was a... <laughs> he waxed my floor, boy. It's time for Kramer's entrance. Make sure the floor is waxed nice. Get in the new socks. Those are always slipperier. Right. When my shoes would stick on the floor when I would slide into Jerry's apartment, it was an African-American that would have to wax it, and perhaps I should apologize to him. I treated him badly. I'd call him and boy and 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 say wax that better next time you <laughs> and 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 get me a sandwich you king <laughs> and and then then there was and one rarely used is but then there's also <laughs> and, and oh one more yeah <laughs> and the worst one of all what happened when you shared your cigar with him <laughs> oh i called him a and and <laughs> And let's not forget. And then I hung him upside down and took a fork and. <laughs> well, what a dull. Just groveling. Shut nonsense. up. Sticking with the subject at hand, listen to this cute little story. Now, how do I know that the white people know that we are going to come up with a solution to the problem? I know it because they have retina scans, they have what they call racial profiling, DNA banks. And they're monitoring our people to try to prevent the Mwah. one person from coming up with the one idea. Is that George Costanza? And the one idea <laughs> is how we are going to exterminate white people. Because that, in my estimation, is the only conclusion I have come to. We have to exterminate white people off of the face of the planet to solve this problem. This is Malcolm Jamal Warner. Now, I don't care way. whether you clap or not, but I'm saying to <laughs> you... That we need to solve this problem because they are going to kill us. And I will leave on that. So we have to just set up our own system and stop playing and get very serious and not be diverted from coming up with a solution to the problem. Final and solution. the problem on the planet is white people. All right. 
That was recorded at Bananas Comedy Club. <laughs> yeah. And of course um, they clap for him, and I guarantee you not one person you know, walked out. out. No. What, no. what was that, Nation of Islam? I have no idea. It, it was, was on uh, C-SPAN. Yeah, it needed a little setup. I'm it was on C-SPAN. It was broadcast on C-SPAN. No, of course. So, Owner a black, uh, what is this oh. called? Black... Blacknificent. 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 Owner of Blacknificent Books says white people should be exterminated. Well, where is where is the uh, where's the bookstores saying they won't sell it? Where's the outcry? None. No one How cares. How about that? That that right there. Any black person would come up and say, "Well, that's freedom of speech." Yeah. Come on, that's freedom of speech. And he's right. But what what <laughs> what Kramer did uh, is hate speech. That isn't freedom of speech, and that's why uh, lawyers and stuff are saying that uh, these two guys can sue and, yeah. because it's hate speech. It's not protected. It's not freedom of speech. What that guy did right there, uh, that's hate speech. Where's the lawsuit? Where's the outrage? Where's anything? That guy's calling for the extermination of white people in a political forum. This wasn't a joke. It wasn't a comedy club. Right. This guy's calling for the extermination of whitey. That's much closer to inciting people to riot Oof. than some dumb sitcom yeah. guy yelling, yeah. yelling uh, the end bomb. That's instructions. I want that guy on our show to apologize. Yeah. It's a white show, right? Yeah. I think it is. Well, why won't white Squeaky people? Squeaky white. They white people won't do it, A, because that kind of black guy terrifies white people, yeah. and B, because, again, they have a different standard. Because blacks, well, that's just what they do. They're supposed to talk yeah. like that. You don't hold them to the same standard as you do smarter intellectual people. Right. Um, That's the way they look at it. Let's address Mark Quinn from Philly on the instant feedback. I hope he's kidding. Uh oh. I hope he's kidding. From Philly, maybe not. And he's not this stupid. He might be. Could be. Okay, what the F? Please tell me the censor. Uh, All right. Uh, Please tell me the censor bleeps on the XM side of the CBS show are just part of the effing bit. I thought the XM side was uncensored and clear. Please address. It's not uncensored. We the, it, XM censors the N word. Everyone censors the N word. We're not allowed to say that on XM either, sir. Good point. Glad you wrote in. You are a <laughs> idiot. Well, yeah. Your mother should every in this room right now. <laughs> That's right. Because you are a idiot. You can't be that stupid. Sometimes having the bleep is funnier. Don't you get it? And uh, by the way, do you honestly think that somebody is bleeping this show? Do you think I could be able to talk over the bleep? Can that work? Ant just did a brilliant bit, and this dope thinks that it's it's being censored by uh, by by XM. Well, how does he think somebody is sitting there with their finger on a button, knowing when to push it? When to, exactly to push it, you asshole! <laughs> See, did that go through on See, XM? Oh, oh no, the bleep didn't work. Oh my lord! Did you get that on XM? Did you, <laughs> jackass, <laughs> nigger face? Did that go through? Oh, oh. <laughs> Oops! The beep guy missed oh, it. Oh boy, you missed it again. You missed the <laughs> jackass. You missed the bleep. <laughs> Uh, tools. Let me just say this much: If Ant did the bit without the bleeps, it wouldn't be as funny. No, it's funny mean. because of the bleeps. We know comedy. Come on, you jackass. By the way, in case you missed it earlier, we played the exclusive. Well, it's not really exclusive now, is it? Michael Richards' uh, apology. And in case you missed it from earlier this morning, this yeah. is what he had to say on Jesse Jackson. Anyway, I uh, I just want to say that I'm sorry. I uh, I lost my temper, and I probably shouldn't have. I took it out on you, and... Look, if I've caused you any problems as a result of my behavior, well then, I'm sorry. I apologize. Even though you know, Barry, between me and you, we both know that you started it. I mean, who's kidding who? But they tell me that you're very upset and, God forbid, I should disturb the very important monkey. I'm just hoping we can put this behind us. Let's just move on with our lives, okay? So there you go. Mm. Kramer on uh, Jesse Jackson yesterday. A little more natural in his speech, but not yeah. quite as sincere. A little more comfortable there. Maybe somebody should fucking script out an apology and that horse's ass can act it out. That's what they should have done. And then just do it like it's a Seinfeld episode. Give him an entrance, let him Yeah, let him open slide the into the uh, yeah. studio. What was that episode about? Why was he apologizing to a monkey? I know I'm missing it. It's from a, a movie. Yeah, I don't think it's from a Hey, why are you tearing down no, the I'm seventh wall, sure Jimmy? Uh, what? He went to the zoo, and the monkey yeah. was mad at him, and he spends the rest of the... Um, Episode trying to apologize to the monkey. Oh, and make the monkey like him again. I stand corrected, James. Isn't that right? Iraq? Sure. Give me that. What is it? Oh, probably money. It's it? probably <laughs> money. Oh, just got handed a big, big envelope. envelope. Oh, great. Thanks. I got to walk home, you know. Jesus. Uh, well, Patrice was on Hannity and Combs talking about uh, Kramer. Yeah. 
our buddy Patrice. Joining us now is stand-up comedian frequently heard on the Opie and Anthony radio show, oh, Patrice O'Neill, and applause. the comedian who performed prior to Michael Richards last Friday, Sully McCullough. Sully, Sully what was going on Sully. there when you were there? Tell us what you saw. Uh, I'm still trying to figure it out. It was ugly. Right. Uh, you know, all the comics were upstairs Swing watching, on. and then it took a turn for the worst. And I've seen comics bomb over the years, but that was something else. What do you think he was thinking? Uh, I, I think he was thinking, how can I stop myself from talking? Uh, even what? an insult comic isn't going to say those things, you know what I mean? I think he just had an out-of-body experience and couldn't, you know, once it was done, he wished he could clean it up. I mean, yeah. everybody was shocked here. We didn't, you know, I, I've been here for a regular here for a while, and I've never seen anything like that. Who Sully? So what is he saying? Out of body experience. At least Patrice like puts it in terms people can understand. Patrice is honest. Yeah. Yeah. He said it. He didn't think anyone had a stupid video camera, phone, or whatever. And yeah. Patrice is not outraged. History. No. He doesn't care. No. All right. Here's uh, Patrice weighing in. If you listen closely, you could hear Patrice tell Suli to shut the fuck up. Okay. Shut up, it's hysterical. Patrice, we're looking at the apology here, and you're not too satisfied with that apology. You don't th you think that came from the heart? No, he, he looked like a, a terrorist hostage, man. That dude, he, he didn't even, he's socially in <laughs> well, well, what would he have to do at this point to, can, he, can this at all be fi fixed in any way? No, the apology, I didn't think he was so bad until he apologized. Why? Why I, look, it? man, when you mad uh, on maybe he needs comment, to go on BET. <laughs> What'd you say? Shut up. I said maybe he needs to go on BET. Yeah, well, no, I mean, listen, was, was it the venue where he apologized? It, it, no, right? it was, look, look, first of all, we didn't see the whole tape. Second of all, when you're a comic, well, if, I, somebody, I was there, if somebody and, is annoying you, and the yeah. only thing you've got to defend yourself against that anger yeah. is to call them what they are. Like if an Indian dude's heckling me, I'm just going to call him some type of goofy Indian word. But I'm not saying that that word is goofy, but it's goofy in the mouth of Kramer. Are you saying he should have said nothing? He should have lied and said he was doing some kind of conceptual thing that he used to do on Friday. He's a, <laughs> he's a goofy guy. And that would have solved the problem. But, but now we're having some, this is a racially charged situation because Cosmo, the dude that slides into, into Seinfeld's house is now having us talk about r race. And, and, and another thing about race, it's race has become a thing between you two guys, like where the the, the, guys, the yeah. meaning meaning the perceived racist yeah. and the perceived not. But to you, you're just two white guys to me. Can't you should that. let black people run racism. <laughs> yeah. When Mel Gibson said what he said, when the Godfather said what he said, when when uh, Wait, uh, it, it's just it, Look, we I, run it ourselves. This is <laughs> he is so right. Yeah, he's right. That said, he's right. Absolutely. I mean, that, that is a nutty, insane rant. Come on. Yeah, all of you are sick. Like, well, yeah, what, I mean, it's not even sick. sick. Well, you're said. white. Oh, you're all, white. all racial. If white people don't I mean, come on, come on, that they're racial, racial, we can't have these conversations. Because you go, who, me? You never had that word in your head ever, sure. No. Do you have that word in your head? Do you use that on stage? I use it when I wake up. Is there, was there, a, difference, is there, is there a difference, though? I mean, why? Is there, is there a line that you don't cross? For example, when he says that, I feel like I'm listening to Robert Byrd, a Klansman. I, look at I want, and this is for real, I want white people to be able to say anything they want so that I can say anything I want. That word does not have the power it had in 1968. You don't think, you don't not, think Nope, that. because no, I want to be even trees. more over the line if I can. Do you really believe Sean Hannity's never thought that word? Never up? thought the word. Not in even his during head a football game. Somebody drops a pass. How can you not? <laughs> of course. People are just not honest. Nope. They're not honest. No one wants to be honest They're about not race. Honest. White people aren't honest about race. That guy who wants to exterminate white people. You know what? At least he's honest. That guy's honest about race. You can't vilify people for being honest about race. And he's right. Black people would be better off if all white people were dead. Do me, oh boy, ring that bell, please. Oh boy, that would have been a. Oh, I have a yeah, doozy. Was, that's sure, a doozy. you're dead. Oh, I had a doozy. Because I thought of what they'd be doing if all white people were dead. Oh boy. And um, yeah, it may not better, be what a lot of people are thinking. You better hit that again. Yep. All right. Thank you. I'm not defending the dude. I'm saying that. Like, what, it, at least it's out. Like, just because you put it on a piece of paper and white people are now trying to socially edit themselves, it's, it's still there. People, no, not, I disagree. People don't think like that. People are you don't out your act mind? like that. <laughs> are you out your mind? Are you out your mind? God bless Patrice. Yep. A little bit of honesty there on uh, Fox uh, News Channel. Yeah, because Sean Hannity has to play, you know, a role. Yeah. Like anyone else. Mind.
that. I you don't watch your act mind. like that. Are you serious? No, no, Is no, no, no. You think you white think, people think like of that? Of course they do. All people, not all, but you take polls. When you take polls, hey, does that mean everybody uh, think nobody, like that? But you you said to pay to if 100 that. people, if 90 people say you know what I'm saying? 90 that. people don't think like that. Maybe two out of 100. Are you two sure? out of 100. Where are you doing your studies, Sean? Wait, I'm, but look, I'm just, I, I don't know. Hey. Two out of a hundred. Two out of a hundred would like think like that at some point wow. in their life. Wow, that's uh, that's, that's not true. That's, that's not, not being informed. That's out of touch. Wrong. That's ninety nine percent of white people think like that at one point or another in their life. And just like um, the majority of black people think of it uh, towards white people, towards of Chinese. Of course. What do you think? Black people in the hood think when they're when they're having a problem in the Korean deli or with the Chinese food, you fucking gook. They're not thinking, hey, excuse me, service person, industry worker, could you please? But they are thinking racist immediately. And the Asians thinking oh, racist because they're thinking things. the black person's going to be stealing something. Yeah. And they, you know, it's it's you know the animal kingdom we live in. It's not nice, but it's a Sean reality. Really thinks reality. only two out of a hundred. Two out of a hundred. It's got to be, white it's gotta be like 98 that. out of 100. Yeah, Absolutely. and you don't think it all the time. It just comes out in moments of anger like it does right. for everyone else. It's not like you're on a mission. Like he said, he felt like he was listening to a Klansman speech. Yeah. It, it, they're on a mission. Their thought process is constantly devoted to that. They get up and give speeches. and it, it, That's different than every so often getting pissed off and dropping the A-bomb, you know. Especially to yourself. That happens a lot. Yeah, but you can have racial awareness without going to that word. I mean, you can have like... No, you don't just go... You don't. If you're cut off by a black guy in a car, mm -hmm. you get cut off. I mean, where you almost kill yourself. Right. You don't think, hey, black gentleman, hey, you African no, no, man. No, it's, you you look he, at the color and the N word pops right into your fucking head. If he has a nicer head. car than me, absolutely. And that, yeah, well, that too. It's probably stolen. And if you don't think it... <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> and if you don't think it or you don't say it, it's because you make an effort to not think it. Like but, if you if yeah, you now you're your trying. Mind going, it's like it's but 98 it, out of 100 are thinking it. Just Come because on. you know it's awful. You're it's it's like it's, 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 okay, so you, should you be commended for making the effort of not to go there? No, it's not being honest it's with just, yourself. I mean, look, when well, we have to be, make beings. efforts, like you don't always call women a cunt when you get mad at your girlfriend. You might want, I'm sure you've all wanted to say cunt before. I never have. But I mean, I'm sure like everybody else uh, has wanted to at one point and you don't cuz you edit yourself and you should edit yourself. Yeah. I mean, there's a social etiquette. That's what I'm asking. You should edit you suppose, yourself. of course you are. We're not, no one's point. brutally honest. I mean, you know what I mean? A cop pulls you over. You don't just go, you fucking pig. You want yeah. to because you're angry he pulled you over, but you don't. You can't edit your own mind, though. Yeah. What, what pops in your head, if you try to edit that, you're just being dishonest with, with yourself. Yeah, or you can scold yourself for it, but it, to say yeah, that, that uh, never pops yeah, up. Yeah. Like, yeah, I shouldn't like think Like Hannity that. saying he never, the thought never came to his head. He's never had the word nigger come through his head and think, you know, during uh, uh, some type of situation where it would. Where, you know, I mean, he's being dishonest. When I, he listens to us every morning. Is he around? We should try to get him on. Well, like when I heard about little Daryl Little John, well, I don't know if he's guilty or not, the black bouncer that apparently killed, killed that girl. Again, right. that's, that's the allegations. That was the first thing I thought of. And had he been uh, white and the girl been black, Whatever the most awful racial thing a black guy could think of, for that's the first thing he would have thought. I mean, it's just a reality. It's what we think of. Yeah. It doesn't make it right, but it is what it is. All right, let's go back to Patrice. I Where are you doing it. your study, Sean? You, I'm, look, I'm just, I, I don't know hey, people If a white like guy that. heckled you, would you start using epithets against a white guy? Would it, you do that? Here's what he did. He, that was the lowest... Well, he, he, that, lost, though, he lost because he went there. I have gone there before. You I've have. Gone, of course I've gone there before. If a, if a lady... Okay, well, you I've still never go gone there? there. Uh, Who the hell is this Suli guy? Oh, uh, Suli, he's a comedian from L.A., and, uh... He, he never goes there. He's trying to pipe into this interview, and he's just uh, getting pushed to, uh, you know, pushed to the side. Because... It's like the, the Patrice is just being brutally honest about the way he feels. He's not trying to sugarcoat it or find a solution. He's just telling you the truth. Well, if a if a lady, okay, well, will you I've still never go gone there? there. Uh, of course. If you go to <laughs> if you go to how much money you have. Hang on, Sully. Go ahead. If you go to how much money you have and how, and how racist you are, then you've lost the game. Right, you've are you control. are you racist then? If you he go did there? not have. I control. hope so. You want to be racist? I don't. Are you go, kidding I don't me? Get... I'll be so proud. You, you, look, I'm mad at white people because you haven't you told me how much fun it was all these years. <laughs> <laughs> God, he brings uh, the funny. Man. Here's the thing about Patrice. The same thing that makes him the fucking good comic that he is is the same reason he has two friends. Yeah. <laughs>
No one likes him. Because that's how he is. How he's could completely you not like that honesty. He's a very honest guy, and that's the truth. What he was telling, and he, he was right. I mean, yeah. he was right, and, and he was telling the truth. This clip could be pretty good. You guys are what do you mean, so you guys? white what people. Mean? You know what I mean, white people. Sean? What does that mean, you white people? Oh my God! Well, you can't have these arguments. Hey, Patricia, this this Michael Richards, Richards did you a favor into, to free uh, up to do what he too? does. Did, Michael Richards didn't do me a favor. He did his his career uh, injustice. Because well, and now I tell you what, y'all should fight for: get rid of cell phones because that's messing y'all up. Is it is it racism morally repugnant to you or no? Of course it is, but. Okay, is it more morally repugnant to be it or morally re repugnant to get both? By the way, someone brings it up on instant feedback. Can't take credit for this. You, I bet you Sean Hannity's thinking the word right now. Yeah, oh, absolutely. Jesus. Could you let me get a word in edgewise? You <laughs> <laughs> have an oh. argument with Patrice. If you don't think it, there's something wrong with you. Look, you mouthy. <laughs> someone from their cell phone. They didn't leave their name on the instant feedback, but uh, very good being, observation. Yes, Patrice was being uppity. More morally repugnant to be it or morally re repugnant to get both? caught being it. Oh, but I would say to be it. But, you are, you are. But just because someone says that you are not to be one and you can't frivolously be one anymore. Uh, we'll be listening to an opiate anthem. Oh, Sean, you going to cut me off like that? Oh. <laughs> Only one hour show. Thank you guys very much. See you later. Coming up, UCLA. The masses putting you out of the house into the field. Well, first of all, they should have after that dope attempted to say fr uh, frivolous and oh, tripped I know. on it. <laughs> frivolous. <laughs> that, it, I've never heard Patrice. I've known Patrice for 10 years. And I've never heard him say frivolously. Frivolously. That's yeah. a white person word, Patrice. Yeah, stop it. Black people don't say frivolously. Uh, Reading from Whack Bag, yes, I did say Patrice brings the funny. Oh, I wanted that one back. I believe you. I, I, I did hear you say it. I wanted that one back. And it was badly. either ignore it or bite him. In a funny briefcase. <laughs> Does he put it in a briefcase of comedy? <laughs> Opens it up. I'm bringing the funny. Here comes some funny. <laughs> I got the chips, the dip. What are you bringing? As soon as I said it, I had not even a pause. I looked at all of you guys like, oh, shit. That's right. What an ass. What happens? Uh, Russ in Ohio. Russ? Hey, uh, Hannity's full of shit, I think. Uh, he used to be a construction worker, and I don't know a construction worker that's never dropped the end bomb. Oh, my God. I think what, it, look, if, if Comes Hannity... right after, hand me the hammer. <laughs> 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 or you're late again. <laughs> if, if, if Hannity's saying that most people don't walk around constantly thinking, like Michael Richards yelling nigger on stage, most people don't walk around thinking like that all the time. And if you have a moment with a black person where you're annoyed, you don't automatically go to that. I, I don't think that's... I mean, if he's saying that we don't all walk around thinking that, he's right, we don't. But yeah. in a moment like that, it's just the lowest, angriest point you can go to. Mentally, most of us go there, it's even though we don't want to. Basic human nature sure. mm -hmm. to want to uh, conquer, to want to come out victorious if you are in some kind of a situation. So even if it's just a thought situation, like I said, the, the cutting off or or someone you know getting into an argument with you. It's going to be in your head. In intense, intensely threatened situation. It's going to come yeah. out. If it's that's going to be the guy in your head. Like, ah, uh, this... Let, let, you know, and you always bring up the most morbid, horrible thing that could happen. Let's say, God forbid, something horrible happened to one of Sean's family members, and an African-American gentleman uh, was the perpetrator. You don't think that word would at least come into your head? If not being blurted out every three seconds as hard as you, uh, loud as you could in your house. It would be in the deposition. Yeah, and, and in the courtroom and yeah. everywhere else. It just, it, it, it's the way it is. Mm -hmm. we're, we're just animals. We're people, human beings. Yeah, but that that's stress level is a little bit... That, that stress level is a little bit different than the late show with the laugh factor. No, it's not. Have you ever done it? Yes, sir. Sure. That fucking... That, that can't stand that room. They love that happy, fucking, fun, high-energy nonsense. Those people put six shots into his act, and, <laughs> and he saw it die in front of him. That that was a loved one to him. Let's go to Robert in Texas. Robert. Hey, guys. Hey. I wonder what side of the fence Robert's on. <laughs> yeah, no mm. kidding. Yeah, yeah, you know, come on. I, anyway, no, uh, uh, a typical, to me, uh, a typical thought process, Spike Lee put out a movie uh, back in the 80s, late 80s, uh, Do the Right Thing. And for anybody to stand there and say that that's not honestly the way that you know our social uh, commentary is, even nowadays, you know that that you know they're living in a blind closet, honestly. Well, Spike is. I like. I love Spike Lee, man. I think he's really honest. I mean, I like his movies. Um, it makes Italians look bad. His movies. Good. Puts oh, them on. in a. Good. Puts and, them and, in a, an inaccurate, <laughs> poor light. 
We don't uh, run around uh, saying those horrible words to each other when we're alone together of as just Italians. Don't. He makes a fucking great point. He paints Italians as a bunch of fucking hateful pizza makers, <laughs> they, and that's why I love Spike Lee. They, Cops yeah, are all racist, does. and Italians are all fucking guinea pizza makers. What I, what I meant was they didn't put the word in enough oh. for Italians. <laughs> he made them look too pleasant and accepting. Dishonest. Ladies and gentlemen, Sean Hannity. Sean. Hey. Hi, Sean. Hey, What's you up? You don't mind I steal on your guest, do you? Not at all. Not at all. No, we, you got the plugs in. That's all we care about. And, and, By the way, he was uh, he was very funny. He yeah. was very entertaining. Patrice is a riot. We man. love we Patrice. Love you know, <laughs> although I, I've got to be honest, it was a moment there, you know, it was like, Man, who cares? And I think the whole studio like you could hear a pin drop. Yeah. <laughs> well, he doesn't. He doesn't give you the typical black guy answer. Patrice is very honest. He doesn't. He doesn't play like like Sully to me was giving the typical you know answer. Whereas Patrice was coming from a different angle, going it didn't bother me. Who cares? Yeah. And I think Patrice was right. Some jackass from a, a, a sitcom had dirty talk, and the whole country's up in arms about it. And, and a lot, a lot of black guys, especially the LA crowd, um, they don't want to face it honestly. And I think Patrice did a good job of, of uh, interpreting what happened very honestly. I think he really, in terms of just a pure debate, of putting aside what what view you're on, I think he smoked the other guy he was debating pretty yeah. good. Oh, Sully stunk. Hey, uh, Sean, your numbers seem way off. Two out of a hundred. What did you mean by like that? Think like that. Did you? Have, I, we, we might misinterpret how you meant. What? Do you, what was the quote? I forgot. I, what I, I believe Patrice O'Neill was saying that. Uh, if you're white, um, that thought has at least crossed your mind at some point. Uh, the same type of, not the same type of tirade that uh, Michael Richards had, but the the thought that racist thinking mindset, depending on what situation you're in, has come across at some point. And uh, you at one point said, no, it's it's got to be more like two out of a hundred people would think like that. I, I don't know anybody that thinks like that. Honestly, I don't. I, do people think in those terms? Are there people? Sure, but. I think that's the the small minority of people. Look, there's there's black on white racism, white on black racism. People think that, people say that, but look, it's not even politically. There's, it's not acceptable, rightly so, in society anymore to be that way. I, I'm just thinking this way. When when you say, when Patrice asked you, have you ever thought that word? He put it right to you, and you yeah, said I, no. I think, I, that I think that's dishonest. I think at least in certain situations, just being a human being, and of course it has been rumored that Sean is superhuman, but, <laughs> but in being a human being, where you're, put in a, rumor come from? <laughs> you're put in a certain situation where your basic primal animal instinct, animal instinct comes out where you want to use the, the biggest weapon in your arsenal, and I'm not talking about blurting it out, I'm talking about you get cut off on the highway, and an African American gentleman almost put you into a wall that thought, the word, didn't cross your mind my, ever? My honest answer to you, and this is my honest answer and maybe it, does, it goes through your mind I don't think in those terms. Do you drive to work? I <laughs> drive myself every yeah. day yeah. Alright, I gotta say uh, because uh, I'm just being honest that when, when that happens, yeah. I will pull the worst possible thought will come to my head. If it's an Asian gentleman, I will use I an... Aw and I'm not yelling it out the window uh, unless it's no, a cab driver. If somebody cuts me off or somebody's <laughs> being, like, you know, obnoxious, you, th you, you know, I might think you blankety, blankety, you know, sort of the stuff that you guys say on XM every day. Right. And, you know, I might think that, or, but I'm not thinking in racial terms. It doesn't oh, come to racial of terms. That race did that to me. I'm what? just thinking, you know, somebody's a jerk. So, well, how about, wow. so what, you just used the word jerk? Yeah, well, do, yeah. Hey, <laughs> do you shake your fist at him, too, <laughs> Mr. Wilson? <laughs> you yeah. kids! Oh, you meddling kids! Get off my lawn, you. How uh, about this? How about this? When, when something comes up like a case like the... I feel like I'm in a confessional. I've like got, you know, <laughs> bright lights in my eyes. All right, Mr. Hannity, have you ever... <laughs> have you ever... Well, well we're going to get some stuff out of you eventually, Sean. During, you know that. During, like, something like... When you, when you read about a case like the uh, the Central Park jogger case... Or, or some type of an awful, like, you know, you know the way Fat Nick was crucified in the media and black on white uh, hate crimes are never reported to be hate crimes because there's a real, uh, you know, you know how the thinking in the media is at least. Um, they don't really report them the same as far as what's a hate really, crime and what's let not. Me, let me answer your question with a question, and I'm not avoiding it. Do you really think most people are racist? Because I don't. Oh, That's absolutely. No, not racist. I don't think most people are racist, but there's a confusion here in this country where because you're thinking a racist thought that it automatically puts you wham you are in the whole category of being a racist you can think 
bad words. You could think and look at people on the outside and think, oh, God damn that. Well, you should hear what I think is when I'm thinking about Combs every night when he's on the air. Well, all, right. all right. Oh, does he stink. See, now, if there was a <laughs> wait, racist term for bedwetting liberal. Exactly. Uh, hey, you know what? We never talked about when we did your show last yeah. and... You uh, you were controlling the interview like you control every night on that show, uh, and all of a sudden he like started talking. It was an honest reaction from me. I actually looked at him and said, "Wow, he talks." <laughs> oh, I know. Did you guys talk about it after we left? Because I it looked like I really hurt his feelings, but it was a it was just a, a an honest reaction from me. Kevin, now that you're kind of waking up, what do you think of uh, Jesse Jackson? He's calling uh, for everyone to ban the N word, especially in entertainment. The N word. He's talking about movies and music and TV. TV. I mean, I guess he has to start within the community, right? Because that's where it's used most prevalently. Yeah, yeah. Apparently, he said the uh, entertainment industry, which people are assuming is uh, rap artists, but um, uh, he also mentioned movies and uh, television. Now, I haven't really seen much on TV, but the news doesn't even show it or or use it or show it in transcripts that are underneath video. They they blocked it out when um. Uh, Michael Richards' video is being played. But movies now, and that's uh, your line of work there, Kevin. Uh, and I've seen a couple of movies where perhaps that word was used. Yes. Uh, yeah. And and it is, I, I'm sorry, it's always funny to hear in a movie. I don't know why. It's, it's all context, right? Yeah, Roots. it's all context. No, not in Roots, not you <laughs> idiot. <laughs> Jesus, Jimmy. <laughs> Jimmy. <laughs> But, uh, you know, we were, we were bringing up movies where, you know, God, wh where would taking that word out really just destroy a movie? And Pulp Fiction is one I could think of. Well, well Pulp Fiction, and more than Pulp Fiction, was um, was Jackie Brown. Yeah, Jackie Brown. Jackie Brown was where he used it, you know. I, I thought he used it to the point that Spike Lee chided him for using it so much. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I remember that. Quentin Tarantino got, like, bitched that. Uh, for using uh, the N word, True we're romance. adults saying the N word. By the way, by the way, we don't say the N word over at XM. No, uh, so CBS for some reason they 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 have banned that uh, that uh, word from radio shows. It's when a it's CBS there, no. policy, not an FCC policy. But if a black guy comes in and uses it, and it's, it's okay. Not a derogatory way. As long as he well, does it only like twice. It all has to do with whether you're using the ER ending or the A ending. No, they didn't. They don't even want the A ending. No. Nah. Wow. They don't uh, even want like. How does a rapper come in and talk about his friends? Yeah. Well, well he, a rapper's able to as long as he's not uh, K-fed. This all stemming off of the KK Kramer incident. No, this Kramer. is before that. This is from the uh, FCC has um, radio companies petrified, and uh, they're afraid that you know if, if a word is used and a letter is written that uh, every sponsor will just pull out. So they're very um, petrified. Or for, for, I, I mean, it, the thing is, I, I have mixed feelings about it because I'm like, now? It happened like in the midst of the civil rights movement. Wouldn't that be a time where you're like, let's get rid of that word, but now, like 40 years later? Yeah, I know. It, it makes no sense whatsoever. A, a lot of power has been taken away as far as that word goes over the years, and now it's yeah, like, totally. the, the, now that what they're trying to do is bring the power back into the word. By doing yeah, this. this. Totally. I mean, you're talking about a word that, that has been kind of sapped of most of its energy because it's been appropriated by, in the same way that the gay community uses queer to be right. queer. It's, it's, I just don't understand why you would campaign now. Well, there are certain words yeah. in the gay community, like, you know, they, they, you can't use, like, you know, they dump us if we say, uh, if we finish fag. If we go beyond that, describing gay people, they dump out of it. Uh, not on XM, by the not way. Not on XM, no, only on CBS, of course, because it might affect sponsorship. Yeah, like, I could say, like, uh, hey, uh, you, someone goes, you know, hey, Kevin, you want to go out tonight? And you go, nah, I'm tired. And then you go, don't be a faggot, come on out. That's fine. But you can't use it in a derogatory way to a gay gentleman, or else it will be um, dumped out of. But isn't that isn't what isn't that six of one half dozen the other? Exactly. Yeah, it is That's the rules. Strange. Like I would imagine uh, the 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 prior usage. The uh, you want to go out tonight? No, I don't want to go out tonight. Oh, don't be a faggot. Is more incendiary because it's really um, it's taking the it's taking a, a, the term and turning it into an, an even deeper negative. Yeah. Yeah, it's adding another negative to it. I mean, but I don't want to give my ideas, so keep using. Ah, uh, don't be a faggot. And Come look, on. are we really gonna miss? <laughs> are we gonna? My only problem with this is like, uh, if they drop the N word, not that it's gonna be a arrestable offense, 
But like, it, does it really serve any good purpose in entertainment? I'm, I mean, I'm playing devil's advocate away, but a part of me is like, eh, let him take it away. It's like, all the people are using it are rappers, and occasionally in movies it should be used, but do in, you really need it? I, I think it does in movies. And also, well, you know what? The Chappelle show is over, so we don't need the word anymore. <laughs> he, used it, he, he probably used it the best in the last five years. Yeah. The most entertaining. So much so that you were like, man, I think I could get away with using that word, but not really. It's yeah, like, yeah. Oh, you know, I'm, 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 we're so close. He it's, turned it, it into an art form and, and really just kind of colloquialized it and, 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 and really drained a lot of its, of its negative energy. But since that show's not on anymore, I guess they can take it's, it. It's dangerous, dangerous when you start banning words, too, man, because you, you get the N-word banned and then, uh, then what? Uh, you know, then we, then the, we got to ban Spick. We got to, we got to go right down the line eventually, right? And D Dago. Dago and Wop. Yeah. I mean, but how often, like, in, in, in all truth, how often do you use racial expletives in your day-to-day? -day? Every moment I'm in the car. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, driving in New York City every single day. I, um, I'm, I'm more of a whore guy. I use whore quite a bit. Whore? Whore and bitch. And I use never, the C word. Never, rarely, if ever, is it used in reference to women. It's just, I just like those words. We talked to Sean Hannity yesterday on the XM show, and he uh, we had a whole discussion about this as well. And he said that it never comes to mind those uh, those words when he's in a really really uh, you know tough situation or he's been pushed to the limit. Right. And and the furthest he'll go is uh, he'll say jerk. Yeah, <laughs> like jerk. And we're like, come on, Sean, could you Are just you be honest? Me? You gotta be honest. I understand that would be honest. probably wreck your entire career, but no one's buying that. That that's the furthest you go <laughs> when you're being uh, pushed out there. Because we were saying it's always the atomic bomb. It's that last weapon that you can use that is the ultimate. So if you're driving down the road and you get cut off and almost driven into a guardrail, and then whatever the ethnic background of the driver is, right. you might not yell it out the window, but you're at least going to think it. It's going to creep into your head. If it's a black guy, I'm sorry, that N-word pops in. If it's an Asian guy, uh, you'll say uh, the the C-H word. Right. <laughs> I'm going to well, do that to every um, thing now. Yeah, the ch. The ch word. Or the g. Oh, the g word. Well, yes, the, the g word. Remember when Sarah Silverman got in trouble for using the ch word on on Letterman? Yeah, she's yeah. like yeah. in the midst of it, like a of a like a joke, like yeah. not even using it in a like just tossing it off in terms of that was on her mind at the time. It was all set payoff for for a very long setup about going to court. Yeah. It, well, and and that's what Oprah was saying before. If if the n word is banned in movies. Uh, Guaranteed, it is followed by every other ethnic slur or perceived ethnic slur. Um, and then where do we go after from all? everyone? After we ban all the slur from words. Every group. Then you ban black people from movies. It's the only way we can go. <laughs> 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 then I'm prepared because I, then, I, then all that time spending uh, sleeping in a shirt and shorts. I'm prepared because then we're returning to the to the prairie, sir. Yeah. Then it is yeah. the house on the prairie. So yep. I've got to step ahead of everybody. <laughs> then we go back to calling people half pint, stuff like that. Half pint. <laughs> Paw. We were just getting into this with uh, Kevin Smith. Uh, black leaders yesterday challenged the entertainment industry, including rappers, to stop using the racial slur that Michael Richards uttered in his tirade. Oh, the Reverend uh, Jesse Jackson and others said they will meet with TV networks, film companies, and musicians to discuss the N word. It's been we want around TV a lot, isn't it? Huh? Is it? Does did they use it on FX? Like Rescue Me? Uh, they uh, use it on there. I don't remember. I don't. I don't Honestly, it's I don't think TV. It's a, much of a problem. Yeah, yeah, you're probably right about that. And then this is just amazing. Jackson continues by saying, "We want to give our ancestors a present." Uh. They're dead, just like mine and just like everyone else's. They're dead. And then he goes on to say he wants the public not to buy a DVD box set of the seventh season of the TV show Seinfeld. Are you kidding me? That was released why, last week. Why bash the, uh, the rest of the cast and the people that made the show and, and everything? You know, F him. He's a piece of crap. Why apologize if that's what's going to happen? If that's what's going to happen anyway. You know why? Because there is no apologizing. There's never no uh, any apologizing. Most people don't apologize. They just let it, you know, yeah, screw it up. They throw out one apology and then forget about it. This dumb dummy 
Michael Richards is running around like a, I would, a chicken with his head cut off, apologizing to everybody. And in order to keep it in the light, it's just never good enough. So now we apologized up the yim yam, and they're telling him, uh, not telling good enough. People, yeah, it wasn't good enough to boycott the seventh season. Buy three of them at a clip. Buy, buy, yeah, a copy for every buy person copy on your Christmas. Yeah, list. everyone gets that for Christmas. And let me enough tell you, by the way, blackmail. That, that crap doesn't work. And you watch the sales of this uh, seventh season of Seinfeld. Good, it's gonna go through the roof. You want to give your ancestors a present? Give them a copy of season seven. Season seven. Season seven. What right. A gift. Drop it near that unmarked grave. <laughs> Whatever it was. Anyway, um, speaking of banning... Me? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Speaking of banning the N-word uh, from mm -hmm. movies and stuff, well, we got some examples. Ah, good. You know, uh, Pulp Fiction. Pulp Fiction, a uh, great movie, funny, uh, uh, and a, a great use of the N-word yeah. in that movie. Yeah. If you, Constantly. If you ban the N-word... You know, Pulp Fiction, that, that that famous scene would just be a little different now, wouldn't yeah, it be? just a tad. Bonnie goes shopping, she buys I buy the gourmet expensive stuff because when I drink it, I want to taste it. But you know what's on my mind right now? It ain't the coffee in my kitchen. It's the dead African-American in my garage. Oh, Jimmy, don't even worry well, no, about no, no, it. No, 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 don't think about anything. I want to ask you a question. When you came pulling in here, did you notice a sign on the front of my house that said dead African-American storage? Jimmy, you know I ain't seen no did you notice a sign in the front of my house that said dead African-American storage? No, I didn't. You know why you didn't see that sign? Why? Because it ain't there, because storing dead African-Americans ain't my business. That's why. <laughs> That's pretty see, good. it doesn't have the same impact. No, it really it doesn't. It really loses something. Yeah, well... We got a quick... Uh, I never liked that scene anyway, because they made his wife black just to explain, like, see? And it was yeah. kind of corny. Yeah. Stupid. Better in True Romance. Yeah. That That's where the word was perfect. Oh, <laughs> yeah. See? True Romance. Get that clip and throw in African American. Well, we're going to have a few more tomorrow, but uh, we got... Oh, I love this guy. We got another example from the movie, of course, Blazing Saddles. Blazing Saddles. Who Saddle. hasn't seen Blazing Saddles? Come Saddle. on. Mel Brooks, Richard Pryor helped write that one. Yep. But Cleavon Little. Cleavon Little. Oh, well, you get word of the N-word. This scene what sounds a little got? different. Hold it. The next man makes a move that the African-American gets it. <laughs> Hold it, man. He's not bluffing. Listen to him, man. He's just crazy enough to do it. Rob it. I swear I'll blow this African-American head all over this town. Oh, Lordy Lord, he's desperate. <laughs> do what he says. Do what he says. It just, you know, I, I'm not feeling it. Doesn't have the same... Comedic impact. <laughs> the boys work fast behind the scenes. We'll have many more tomorrow. Oh, <laughs> we please. can guarantee you that. And they'll enjoy watching the movies that oh, they yeah, came they from. <laughs> They're going to order popcorn and pizza and <laughs> some beers. They're going to stay up all night for this bit. Uh, the Godfather, Anthony. Here's a quickie. All right. You know, and 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 uh, going with what we said, you start with the N word, then you got to start banning every other race, creed, there you color, uh, religion. Everything is going to have to uh, want their word banned too. With that in mind, here's uh, something from The Godfather. Well, let me tell you something, my German Irish friend. <laughs> <laughs> I don't remember it uh, sounding like that. It's not funny at all that way or this way. Well, let me tell you something, my half German and half Irish friend. <laughs> Somehow, that line was funny when uh, he said it. Now, not funny. Yeah. So, we'll have uh, many more tomorrow, Ant. We're on to something there. Hey. Hi, everybody. It's the Opie and Anthony Show. XM version. Strictly XM. Nigger, nigger, nigger. So... Any of you niggers want to call in and say cunt, feel free. It's XM Satellite Radio. Wow, how things change with a short walk. <laughs> uh, speaking of that uh, that dreaded N-word, uh, the Laugh Factory banned the N-word. Every comedian will be... be fee, will be F-I-E-N-D who uses it. Find. Find? Yeah. Find? No, you got the story? Uh, saw it on Channel 11. Call that dick up. That can't be uh, true. The comics should rebel and just not play his room. 
It should be a rebellion. It's 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 freedom of speech. I'm gonna side with Jamie, and I'll tell you why. I'm gonna punch you. No, no, no. I have a reason. He's, not, got, he's got a good. Uh, I, I agree so with you. I he's do got agree a good with angle you. on this. Okay. Actually. Jamie is in a very tough situation, I'm and believe listening. me, siding with a club owner, you really do feel like the fucking slave siding with the master. But the reality is, he's in L.A., which is gang territory. There's been race riots there. He's getting death threats and arson threats. Are you kidding he me? He is worried what did he do? that someone's going to burn his club down. I'm telling you, that's what it is. Oh, self-preservation? But on a real level. And in L.A., yeah. I mean, he's probably worried someone will do a drive-by at his club. I mean, oh my God. that's a major problem for him. And he's just trying to, to weather this storm because it's not going away. And his, as much as he loves publicity, his insignia is on every fucking person that watched Michael Richards yelling sees Laugh Factory behind it. Yeah, that's true. So I think he's just worried about, I don't think he's trying to restrict freedom of speech, even though it is pukey Los Angeles. I think this is just about preserving... Because yeah, Masada, Jimmy Masada's been around forever. He's he's seen a lot of stuff over the years, a lot of uh, great comics. He's just reacting. Some crazy, crazy stuff. In I, club. um... I would leave it just the way it is. You could use whatever language you can uh, muster up. I don't care if you use the end. Ow! Oh, Ow! Oh. Would that be the um, end result, do you think? I think he's just worried about his club getting the windows knocked out or, or, again, getting burned down one night. Some fucking maniac burns right. you down from right. the Laugh Factory. What about this? Masada suggested Richards donate at least a half a million dollars to charity for every time he unleashed the the derogatory term. Masada also said the comedy club will ban comedians from using all hateful words. Wow, he's really All crying. hateful words? Wow. All right, fuck him. That's no act. Yeah. That's, all hateful words? You don't want to go to the comedy store. Yeah. Then There's just go no to the comedy store, there. which is right down the street from the I'm Laugh Factory. You're going to do an act. And I'm not, believe me, I'm not saying that, that the word nigger should be banned from comedy clubs if there's a place for it. If you're doing it to be gratuitous, like like to me, that one Tarantino scene where he's going, is this dead nigger stories? He's just trying to be the hip white guy. But yeah. in True Romance, to me, it made perfect sense in the scene. It worked. I mean, that's why that's what it was there for. I mean, you used mm -hmm. it where it should be used artistically. It was what great. What the fuck is yep. wrong with Jamie Masada? Now he's just panicking. Here's, a, here's another quote. We want to be the first place in the world... Can we get him on the phone today? Let's try. Uh, we want to be the first place in the world to ask all of the comedians if they go on stage and use the N-word, it comes out of their paycheck. All right. I, we, we, we've lost all reason and sanity. If it's only for that word, he is simply panicking and trying to avoid his club from being burned. That's the only word I can uh, understand. I, you know something? For self-preservation, that's one thing. Um... But all how words? about you know I and I like to I, I I'm, uh, I'm saying this not being in his situation right but that situation there has to be a bit of bravery <laughs> you're still this is a, a w the biggest right we have in this country is the freedom of speech the protection thereof comes from people that gave their lives uh, that were uh, very brave. Uh, to make a stand against this kind of thing. He is cowering, buckling under, and giving in to fear and forfeiting a right that you have in this country. He, It's easy to say because I'm not in his position, right. but the guy's a coward. He's a, He's a coward. For his own safety and protection, he is taking away the rights of other people. I, I agree with you in a sense that it's uh, you're correct. You can't argue the point that it's correct, and I agree that as an artist, I agree that of course. Yeah. But I do understand why he's doing it. I don't think it's coming from his heart. I think that as soon this is going to pass, but right now it, he's in the middle of it, unwilling, unwittingly. I mean, he's just there. Yeah, he got. And he's got to react it. somehow. So when they say, "What have you done?" Even though he knows it's horseshit, we ban the the use of the word "nigger." Comedians will be fine. Almost like saying, "Look, that's all I can do." So don't fucking put Molotov cocktails through my windows. I mean, I don't know if he's being a coward because this, to me, a freedom of speech issue, which I agree with you, is if it was a political thing or he, somebody was criticizing blacks and he buckled, I would completely agree with you. But this is such a violation, like. Uh, 
uh, do you know, you, you understand of, of what is like, yeah. by, kind of by standards of what people behave in public. He's just panicking and trying to keep his club from getting also, fucking Molotov cocktails thrown to the He also jumped mm -hmm. right in the middle of this whole thing. I mean, he didn't shy away from this. You know, he he had press conferences with the logo right behind uh, Paul Rodriguez. Maybe and, he didn't know Paul, it was going to snowball. And and Paul and Mooney. He, he was thinking, oh, great, I'm going to get my the name of my club out there. The story's got legs. Yeah. Big, thin... Kenyan legs that can run for miles. <laughs> yeah, and I'm, I'm not saying I side with the club owner banning the word nigger. I think it's disgusting, but I won't go as far as to call him a coward. I don't even work the Laugh Factory, so I'm not sucking up to him. When I'm in L.A., I work the improv. The Laugh Factory audiences don't like me, so I, I don't work the club. I see it as a bit of cowardice, though. Maybe, but I mean, I, I understandable mean, you, cowardice. You, you want to think that people are, are brave and will stand by uh, their rights and say, no, I'm not backing down. This this place is, especially a comedy club, is really that, that last stronghold of free speech in this country where people can go in and say and sit and listen to ideas and language that you just cannot hear anywhere else. Comedy clubs really are a very unique place for freedom of speech. You sit in an environment where you can hear things that you will not hear outside those doors. They are taboo and will get you in trouble outside those doors. Completely agreed. But had Michael Richards been doing a bit and nigger was the punchline or he was using it, I would be 100% with you. But it came, it's, it's such a weird time. In a comedy club, it's very rare. You have a white guy yelling, we could have hung you, there's niggers in the back. It's very rare you have this kind of situation. Right. This is a bizarre... I mean, no one's saying he should go to jail, so his freedom of speech isn't being violated. It's a very odd situation where you have a guy screaming something for real at black people as a walk but in. But other, people, other people's freedoms are, are being stepped on because of this now. Him, uh, the owner banning any free sp any uh, uh, hate, uh, word, uh, hate speech. Well, I don't like any hate uh, speech. That's disgusting. That, you know, wh nice. what about a comic that really, in context, uses the word nigger, and it's funny, and it's done well, artistic... Um, you're taking away that comic's right to speak freely in that establishment and the people's right to hear it at, be, because of this one instance. I think he's just panicking. Yeah. I think one thing he doesn't want is protests against his club, which I don't think there has been any. But again, in L.A., you saw how the white people ran out because it's gang territory. I L.A. Mean, is a different animal. We I don't know. deal really with that is. here. We don't deal with guys driving by and shooting you. It's, it's like such a fucking different vibe out there. And they had the riots. I mean, yep. there was riots in L.A. We never dealt with that here in New York. So they, they I mean, it's, it's almost like... You got I'm trying to put myself in their shoes and go, look, it is a legitimate thought that his yeah. club could be trashed. It's it's not a crazy True. thought. Let's go to Brooklyn. Stupid Kramer. Brooklyn, oh, what's up? Who what a douche. Who the fuck ever thought that little Jimmy would make 110% sense? Make Jimmy, sense you to gotta me. love you, brother. Thanks. But you're right on the mark, and it's a shame that be like that woman who called in today. She can sue me because she's a cunt. And if she wants to burn my house down. <laughs> but all they want to do is run their freaking mouths about how everybody's oppressed them. And then you got to be afraid that somebody's going to burn your house down. I'm like you, you man. I'm just like you. What is yeah, that? yeah, yeah. I'm going to burn your house because you <laughs> called me a truck driver and burn your house down. They're such fucking idiots. Yeah, it is. God it, bless you guys, man. Right. It is disgusting. All, if he bans all hate speech, you know now what, if he bans all hate speech, I'll try to burn the club down myself. You can't. You wouldn't be able to play in that I place. would be able to say hello and good night. You, you know, but, <laughs> I, but as, as a comic, Jimmy would just go to the comedy store. Yeah. So in, in the end, this could hurt him. Who wants to yeah. see nice comedy? But Laugh Factory nice is comedy. No one. Stinks. Laugh Awful. Factory is that kind of comedy predominantly. They don't. They, that's why I don't do well. They're like that's Dane's home club. They love what Dane does, and that, there's just an energy there, uh, a fun energy that is just the comedy store is a hardcore ah. club. And, and to me, the improv I like better. Uh, the Laugh Factory is just not my vibe, so I lose nothing by not being there. Um, yeah, you still got all the plenty of clubs that will yeah. let you do you know whatever the hell you want. I, so. I think it's a temporary move, and I think again once the firestorm dies down, it will go away. Way. This is just a big one, man. A guy yelling nigger, and not in being funny, but yelling. We could have, first of all, making some sort of a lynching reference, and then yelling, there's niggers here. It's really hard to fucking yeah. just kind of bypass that one. You yeah. know, I mean, he's in a really bad position. Certainly And siding is. with a club owner. But I feel like no, I the know. husband of a rape victim <laughs> siding with the rapist. Yeah, I know. Saying, Look, she had on a short club skirt. owners. Ugh. They're repulsive, but I have to on this one. All right, let's say hi to Jay, who's black, and he lives in Alabama. 
Hey, how's it going, guys? How you doing, Jay? How crazy uh, hey. are you to be black living in Alabama? Hey, man, that's all I know. I grew up here, you know. Right. <laughs> I'm just fucking <laughs> but, um, but, hey, man, look, you know the way I feel? I don't, I agree with Paul Mooney on one thing. And I know, don't say, uh, but I do agree on one thing. When he was talking to you guys the other day, I wanted to bite my own fucking face because he made a good point, then he started fucking up real bad. Oh, oh, I'm on X. That's okay, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah you man, say whatever you want now. Um, the thing was, when he said, well, no, I don't agree with it because it's dangerous. Remember what he was saying? When you asked, was it any context, would the word nigga be okay? Well, look, he goes, he goes, he goes, dang. He is exactly right. It is dangerous. And you know what? If the comic wants to take that risk to say, to stand by, his art, so fucking be it. I agree. You know, for, with, with everything that we do, you know what I'm saying, there are consequences to it. I can't walk up in Brooklyn and call a, an Italian guy some type of fucking mook or all this kind of crazy right. stuff without getting my ass beat. So, you know, I don't have a problem with it. And I live here in Selma, Alabama, <clears throat> one of the ra most racist places in the United States. And do you know that just until about four years ago, we just got that same mayor that was out, you know, in Bloody Sunday. We just got his ass out of office. So, you know, it's still alive and well, man. But the thing about it is you got to know what you're dealing with, who you're dealing with, and deal with it. All right, you raise a good point. Like, as a comedian, mm -hmm. if you want to take the risk, I mean, because people sometimes as comedians, we do think that we have barriers. Like, Michael Richards didn't seem to understand that there are guys that would have walked on stage and knocked his fucking teeth out. <laughs> exactly. Like, we do have this invisible barrier, which really is, if he had done that in a mall, he would have been pounced on and beaten. There really is a weird barrier, which people do cross and, and smash you as a performer. But if as a comedian, you're willing to take that risk. You have to realize you're dealing with other men. You know, women usually are not going to attack you physically, but you're dealing with yeah. other human beings who might attack you. Then, then but, good for you. I think your, your barrier there, though, is the, the art itself. Yeah. The fact that you're on a stage performing and people are in, in front of you as an audience. It's almost like you get this, hey... Why doesn't uh, De Niro get punched as he's walking down the street for some of the language he's used? You know, you know, it, 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 you kind of have this uh, armor on you because you're a performer. But don't you? Is, is he still there? Sorry. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I think, like, as a black guy, okay, you understand, like, and I think black people sniff this out immediately from a performer or anybody else. When a white guy is, is saying nigger just to be shocking, or when there's a real point to it, like as a, as a comic on stage, I think black people in the audience will accept it if your point is valid, if uh -huh. it's really part of what you're doing and it makes sense. Exactly. If, if it's bullshit and it's gratuitous and you're trying to be shocking and you're trying to use that shield just to say it to a black guy, they can sniff it out too. Exactly. Yeah. And Anthony, you know what I want to mention one more thing? You know, um, you say how, you know, um, that we that we all should have the right to say these things. We actually do, you know what I'm saying. But the thing about it is, you know, the place that this come came from with him and him, you can tell that was under his skin for a while. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, yeah. Now you you could tell not only from the outburst, but from his body language and the way he talked during the apology and everything. You could tell this guy definitely has got some kind of issues. Yeah. I mean, that I would I would never even try to argue that, that against that one. That wasn't a slip of the tongue. That was his anger kind of exposed to who he right. was. You don't, you don't come off on a tirade like that without... He's, he was just annoyed because black guys probably heckle him a lot because he stinks. Funny Kramer mask came off that night. Yeah. And, yeah, uh, yeah. yeah, that was Michael Richards on All the right. stage. Thanks for calling him. Yeah, thanks, Jay. All right, man. I've been listening ever since Drill, though. Oh, we haven't played Drilldo in a while. I love Drilldo. we got to get some new Drilldos going I on. I agree. Yeah. I'm one, one on me, one on Sam. We'll see who lasts the longest. What, Just my idea. Well, what the hell happened to <laughs> Sexiest State in America? Like they, uh, they were they awful. They stopped calling. Yeah. They were pretty good for a while. I know. And then we got a couple of bad ones. Speaking, yeah. of course, of live sex acts on the phone. Yeah. You know, couples would just call and just yeah. start going at Ooh. it. And then they would uh, get the title of Sexiest State in America because they would represent their state. Yeah. Uh, Nick, St. Louis, what's up? Yeah, what's up, guys? Jimmy. Yeah. Jimmy, I cannot believe you. You do not take a stand on anything. That's not true. You have a weak chin and a weak spine. That's not true, but oh. I think you're right. <laughs> do, hold, do, wait, wait, do, do, do. One thing at a time. What, what are you okay, talking okay. about? What are you talking okay, about? Let me tell you. Well, let me tell well, you. the chin is there a little. Is no room. <laughs> For any gray area on this one, yeah. you tell them this is a temporary thing, not saying the, the N word, the nigger word, whatever it is. Any speech should not be outlawed unless it is speech that is to make someone riot or incite. I understand. Well, dude, wait, we'll go back and forth. I understand what they call, I think it's TPM, time, place, and manner, and freedom of speech. I understand that. This is not about the legal issue of freedom of speech. 
okay? You can't stand in a library and yell cunt without getting thrown out either. So I'm not talking yeah. about the legal issue. I'm not talking, I'm saying I understand his point of view because the reality is it's real easy to be a maverick and sit here and yell, yeah, man, but I don't own the club. That literally, there's a reality he could be burned down by some, I, I agree with you on that, but I, don't say I don't take a stand. I said if he's banning all hate speech, he's a fucking coward. If he's just banning the word nigger because he's afraid of a Molotov cocktail flying through his window, then he's reacting to a bad situation. How, what kind of stand would you like me to take, dude? No, that's his right as a business owner. But listen to you guys, because I love you guys, and you're my favorite comic, man. But let me tell you something. I'm listening to you say things like, well, there's a difference if somebody's saying the N-word, and then they're saying it artistically. Yes. I don't care how they say it. Oh, you know? I agree. Coming from your point of view as an artist, I don't find it funny all the time, right. believe me, because sometimes some of the race references on this show... Actually, I'm like, oh, there was no that wasn't necessary, but sometimes it's funny. I think you're confusing but, also the the right to say it and then the consequences to the right to say it. Like, it, you can say it, and that guy can outlaw it in his own club. It doesn't mean it's outlawed. I mean, you have the right to yeah. say it. Uh, but he, it is his establishment, and he can uh, he can outlaw whatever word he wants in his own establishment. It doesn't mean it's against uh, the actual laws of this uh, country. Yeah, to it's say. not about the legal issue, dude. About yeah. your own fire, he's which just, you're correct. He's talking about his own policy. And I'm I, all for his policy, and I'm all for his rights as ownership. All I'm worried about is you guys getting caught up in the right. agreeing, and this being the first step. Hey. Or it's adding on more hey, Nick. No, no, Nick. You're, Nick, you're way off on that. You're completely Nick. wrong. You're Nick, way off on that. Do you really think okay. I'm going to fold? No, no. I'm, I'm <laughs> yeah, not. It will be the last <laughs> one. And I'm the last don't, holdout. Don't you worry. I'm the Omega no. Man. I just won't. I just won't. <laughs> Jimmy understands the tough position this uh, Jamie Masada is in. That's all. Jimmy I do it for a living, saying. dude. I've, I've been on stage. And I, and I, I, there's a really weird, like, you understand as a performer, when you're going somewhere with a person where violence can happen, you do understand that. There's a really weird thing, like, I've had things with people in the audience where the only thing that kept us from fighting was the fact that I was talking into a microphone and they were seated in the chair. Mm -hmm. Really bizarre, invisible wall between you. I'm not going to be a phony maverick, though, and go, fucking say nigga whenever you want. Like, like I understand why I'm How can you say I'm not taking a stand on it? All right. I do is offer horribly strong opinions <laughs> that have no room for compromise. Yeah, and, you know, Nick, uh, Nick uh, Jimmy's home <laughs> club is the comedy cellar here in New York City. You know, if SD all of a sudden, you know, started banning, you know, the N-word and all these right. other words, you, you know, make sure you tune in the show and see what Jimmy has to it, say. Because it, yeah. it would be a whole different story. Well, and, thanks, guys. Right, I Nick. appreciate the time. Punch it out. And I, right. the chin comment hurt. And if, if if Jamie was banning this word because of just a few letters or a few complaints, but when Paul Rodriguez, I was agreeing with, when Paul Rodriguez said, man, they're getting arson threats. I'm like, ugh, yeah, it is L.A., man. They fucking, uh, 10 years ago, the fucking, yeah. the police had to stand at Beverly Hills so people didn't yeah. I mean, it was scary. Thank yeah. God. Hey, so yeah. beautiful, Beverly Hills. Hey, no, are we, uh, are we getting right Jamie now. on the phone? He's not answering. He's not answering. I hope he's okay. No, he's probably laying down with a black woman. <laughs> <laughs> uh, here's a quickie. It's the uh, Kramer rap that is making its way uh, around the internet. Sweeping the nation. Sweeping the nation, yes. Very viral, this thing. Listen to this if you haven't heard it yet before. <laughs> that is racism. I'm not a racist. That's what's so insane about this. I'm not a racist. That's what's so insane about this. I thought he looked Irish. What's his last name? Bigger. That's not Irish. <laughs> <laughs>
just say that I don't have to worry about working for a while. A long while. Wow, that's, that's really great job. Good. A great a, job. What's his name? Nigger! <laughs> you want that for your iPod, Jimmy? <laughs> That's fucking... Yes, I do, actually. I'd love to play that in the car real loud. It's a good one. The Kramer story doesn't go away. It's a quickie. It's kind of interesting to, to follow these really, really big stories when they hit and just see how it unravels. Yeah. You know, it's a very serious thing. Michael Richards yelling and screaming. The N-word. N. At the Laugh Factory in L.A., He's been banned from the club, and and uh, he's on an apology tour, and, you know, just a mess. You get the celebrities coming out of the woodwork, because, you know, they're, they're, they're jumping on this to get their own exposure. That's all this is about. People see an opportunity to get publicity for themselves. Indeed. You know, Indeed. at first, you got Paul Mooney, who obviously wrote uh, wrote for Richard Pryor and is a comedian in his own right for many, many years, so he has a lot of experience with the N-word in comedy. And then you got uh, Paul Rodriguez, who happened to be at the club, so so yes, you want his point of view. Now it's uh, come down to Monique, who has nothing to do with this, except for the fact that she's black. Big fat Monique. Ew. From, uh... But this is what makes these Showtime things interesting. Apollo. Doesn't she host that? I don't know. She's hosting some... F f I don't know. Some fat woman show. Yeah, yeah. It's We're like a fat... A show for fat women uh, to ma make them uh, beautiful, but not to make them lose weight. You know, just to say that you're fat and you're beautiful, girl. Just to make them feel uh, better about themselves. Big, beautiful woman, BBW. Yeah. You're big. There's more of you to love. She gets on stage. At, uh, I watch a Showtime at the Apollo after uh, SNL. And uh, she comes out, and she is wearing every, just a tent every time she comes out. It, it's a huge, more material. It could clothe 10 normal-sized people. And she comes out and does a little turn and goes, What do you think, people? And the place goes wild. And she smiles and goes, yeah, I know I look good. Can someone be honest with that mess and tell us she doesn't? You don't look good. A walrus. There's a small percentage of guys out there that find fat women attractive. Just want to throw fish into her mouth. <laughs> Just watch her. They're afraid of being left. Those guys, those chubby chasers, are afraid of being left, and they want to be hugged and smothered by mother's love. Mother. It's a mother's mother love. Thing. Chubby chasers have a mother issue. Show me one fat pig doing the news, and I'll buy the validity of no, there's no uh, size discrimination. You never right. see a big fatty doing the news. Why? As, hey, Al Roker. As long as she's pretty on the inside. Exactly. If she has a beautiful personality, she could do the news, and we wouldn't uh, even notice. What a pretty heart. Right. With lard wrapped around it. <laughs> she's lovely on the inside. What pretty clogged intestines she has. Well, out of nowhere, Monique had a pipe in about the Michael Richards thing. Of course she did. And, and watch as the days go on. I mean, you're going to see more celebrities coming out of the woodwork. Oh. Going, wow, I could get my uh, my face and my uh, my name in the news here. And they're just going to get lower and lower on the celebrity oh, yeah, yeah, scale. Yeah. Absolutely. So here's Monique from The Insider last night. I will no longer watch that show. I won't purchase any DVDs. And people have said, well, it's not the whole cast. I understand that. But he's a part of that. So for me, I can't support that. We all know funny. You stupid bitch. How self-righteous. Self-righteous uh, righteous and, and, and stupid. It makes no sense. What, guilt by association, you ass? You, you, she, she's being an idiot. That's boycott, um, uh, let's see, one member... Of a basketball team, let's say, uh, rapes a woman. Oh, yeah. Let me think. Mm. Uh, well, that's mm. probably never happened, but look, how about you boycott the entire team? Yeah. You don't go to see a game. You don't go to... The, because uh, rape is horrible. So why would you support a team, even though it's not the whole team, but he's a part of it, so don't support the team at all? You dummy. So she can't watch Seinfeld anymore Aww. because of Michael Richards. And what Not he like did. Jerry and Larry David need any more cash. Jesus yeah, but, Christ. But what did Jerry do? But Jerry did nothing. By the way, season seven is selling like hotcakes, uh, hot Jimmy. Hotcakes are always big sellers, I like, was told. Or like Johnny Cakes if you're staying at a bed and breakfast. Oh, it's, a, <laughs> it's a nice alternative to what? Deliciousness? <laughs> you fruit with a bad foot? 
<laughs> yeah, it looks like something that you remember being delicious, a pancake. <laughs> but it tastes like gravel. First of all, it is, when I stayed at the Ben Breakfast, he made me those corn cakes. And he goes, uh, they're, they're, made, they're like made out of corn products, which is corn and creamed corn. Creamed corn is disgusting. It really is it's bad. It's disgusting. It's pre-chewed corn is what it is. Let's call it what it is. A machine chews it for you. It looks like corn they eat on a porn set. There's no reason for it. <laughs> worst vegetable. Uh, worst vegetable. Terry Shivo. <laughs> <laughs> End of discussion. Back to Monique. <laughs> so she. Uh, so far we learn here that uh, she can't watch Seinfeld because of what happened with Kramer, which is just completely ridiculous. Stop she it. She continues on her, her little she? rant. In between no eating. Funny. And that was... Oh, she knows funny. She's going to tell her. Oh, she knows funny? We all know funny. And that wasn't. Monique says she can't erase those hurtful words from her memory. I'll try with some uh, anthemins. Angry. Hungry. Because that went somewhere else. That wasn't comedy. Let me tell you something. Mm. I'm a Richard Pryor, my favorite comedian ever. My idol as a, as a kid and through adulthood. I love Pryor. Love him. But if you want to get into something like that, Richard Pryor was arrested for battery of his wife. I think he was battery six times. I mean, if you want to talk about things, that, like, am I supposed to not like Pryor because he shot at his car and had to be arrested because he was yeah. he shot his wife's car while she was home or he threatened his wife with a pistol? Why would you still love Pryor considering the abominable things he did in his personal life and yet boycott Michael Richards when all he did was say bad things? You understand? I mean, come on. Yeah. Yeah. Stop it. Get over it. Ah, she's just seeking attention. That's all. And, and a lot of people are in agreement here. She's not breaking any new ground no. here as far as uh, uh, it being uh, over the top, um, inappropriate, or whatever you want to call it. Um, we, yeah, we know. He lost his mind on that stage. Everyone saw it. No one's sitting there going, oh, what? He was doing a great uh, bit of comedy. It wasn't funny. It was, uh, he lost his mind. We know that. But then to boycott Seinfeld? Oof. Good luck, by the way. It's played 80 times a day. <laughs> All of and I watch every single one. You better pull your uh, your your TV uh, you know out of the wall yeah. and, and throw it out the window. Just don't watch TV because <laughs> you're going to be going around the channels while you're shoving bonbons in that fat <laughs> maw of yours, and you're going to come across Seinfeld. What are you going to do then? Oh, she's going to be in turmoil with that remote control. Oh, it's on again. You're going to sit there and you're going to go, oh. Oh, this is the first one. This is the one where they're in the Chinese restaurant. Trying to, I might just watch this one. Cream ain't in it. <laughs> <laughs> She's just going to watch the pilot. Monique, no one's following your boycott, by the way. No one cares. This is not Selma in 1965, you jackass. Yeah. He's making his mea culpa. He's apologizing. Let it go. Oh, she said something. I don't know if it's in this clip that, yeah, she apolog uh, he apologized, but, but he had to because he got caught. Yes, that's true. Caught. Why does anybody apologize? Do you apologize for cheating before you're busted? Oops, got me. Honey, sorry. Let's smell this. I don't know why I did it. <laughs> yeah, why would he apologize if... Yeah, exactly. If it's <laughs> Here's a, just a perfect example of how this works. Because uh, usually you don't see somebody groveling to this extent and apologizing. Usually something happens uh, racially. Uh, the lawyer gets involved. A statement is put out. You rarely hear from the actual person, and the situation goes away. It dissolves. They demand an apology. It never really happens, and the situation goes away. Now, uh, Michael Richards couldn't stop apologizing. The guy's got this dopey apology flying out of his mouth on multiple shows, and you see now what that gets you. It gets you in a worse position. Well, if you're an adult like he is and has no talking ability, oh. so people probably thought, well, we didn't realize that your mouth opened and just dreck came out of it. Why it's couldn't horrible. Larry David have written an apology for him? It probably would have been hysterical, funny. You know, I'd like to A little know Pratt fall he could have done in the middle of it. <laughs> I would, I, I'd like to know why the black community didn't boycott Mike Tyson. When he was not only accused of rape, he was convicted of rape. And mm. I don't remember one... Uh, person of the black community saying, I'm not going to his fights because of that. I don't remember. And that was a behavior. That wasn't just yelling. I want to remember not one person. Mm -hmm. Not one person in the white community either. Of course. Absolutely. No. Absolutely not. Why wouldn't you? I love watching that guy. Please, please. Maybe love him more. Crap out of people. That's what he should do. Of course he should. Your job is to punch people in the face. Why should she be any different? <laughs> little snotty beauty contestant.
Hey, uh, <laughs> we're talking about Kramer. E Rock, I want to play that rap song over here. Tell, yes. Oh, I boy. know. I did you hear that? Whoa, whoa. whoa. Yeah, Iraq just went whoa. Tell the uh, tell the boys here over at uh, Free FM to grow a set and let us play this stupid rap song that is uh, all over the internet. It's 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 viral at this point. Good luck. Keep up your good nature. You don't think it's gonna happen? No. We played it at XM and uh, we got uh, rave reviews on it and and, and the feedback was uh, unbelievable. It has the N word in it. It has the N word in it. But it's from his uh, actual. Um a dialogue there. It's from his tape performance at the uh, Laugh Factory. Diatribe. Go bring it. Diatribe. Go bring it to Al and see if we can play it. <laughs> what do you think, Al? What do you think, Al? <laughs> okay. Can you can this make it through, Al? Al. <laughs> okay, <laughs> Al. Hit the dump button. <laughs> Al, for any new listeners, is our dump guy. He sits down the hall and hits a little button which stops you from hearing certain dirty words which will get us in trouble. One, unfortunately, is the N-word. Right. Yeah. So whenever you think we're in commercial, that's just us being dumped out of as we scream and 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 right. So this might have to go over Al's head. But yeah. well, we want to play this thing because uh, go yeah, run it past Al. <laughs> okay, Pookie, I can eat. <laughs> play the Kramer song. <laughs> I can almost do that one too. Al, Al, what uh, do you say, Al? <laughs> 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 We're a bunch of asses. All right, here's uh, Monique, a little more from her. That was so ugly because there are people in my family, in my family tree, that's been hung up to a tree with a fork stuck in them. What? Because they were black. Holy stop How it. The hell no do one, you know. Who hung your relatives with a fork in them, stupid? Yeah, the, yeah. Let's challenge her on that, please, dude. I don't even know who my great grandfather was. I know. Stop, <laughs> Monique. I was thinking about that the other day. I, I I don't know his name. I don't know what he did. I don't know where he lived. Yeah, I would assume somewhere in Queens. Yeah, I know nothing. Yeah, I was thinking about that the other day. I know nothing about my family past my parents. But she knows about her family tree going all the way back to slavery. Slavery days and a fork? I challenge her on that. Where did Kramer <laughs> pull that fork thing out of nowhere? I think it was a, a like a, a sight gag, you know, of the mind where he conjured up an awful image. Uh, probably looked down at somebody eating saw a fork and decided that was what he was going to use in his mind in this scenario that he pulled up. And she's saying that that actually happened? Yeah. That someone from her uh, family or her ancestry was hung in a tree and a fork was used? Yeah, let's continue with the clip. Stuck in there simply because they were black. Not even a public apology can help Monique oh, forgive yeah, Michael. If Michael Richards went on the highest mountain and said, I'm sorry, I believe you're sorry because you got caught. It would be you're very sorry cold. because you got caught. That's just how it works. How would he be able to apologize on the top of Mount Everest, by the way? Yeah, yeah. First, how would he get there? I don't think he's in shape well, to do serpa. the climb. A serpa would get uh, him up there. Uh, yeah, but still, you got to be in like really good shape. I don't think Kramer can make the climb. Nope. I it, think uh, and the, the apology, lack of oxygen would get to him. I was going to say the apology would have to be very quick because you can only last a certain. How long of time. do people stay on the summit? They uh, they get to the summit, they go wow the summit, and then they have to get right down. Has anyone does anyone have enough time, especially in the stupid slow Shatner delivery that he's been giving these apologies to actually apologize from um, from uh, the uh, altitude that airliners fly? No, I don't think so it, either. It was, She's just being silly. He would have to be a speed reader to read his yeah. apology. Yeah. And Monique still, still wouldn't accept it. Frostbitten toes, probably. Probably Kramer toes, just having to be cut off when he gets back. I'd like to see Monique climb a mountain. She is a mountain. <laughs> I would like to see her. Let's see Kramer climb Monique. I would like to see her climb a, a little hill. Mount stupid. <laughs> oh, what a... Just throwing her fat face into the mix. That's what I'm Why saying. do you need attention? This has nothing... I'm a black... We know it. This we my, know it. But this is my new favorite thing because they're coming out of the woodwork. <laughs> Let's see who comes out of the woodwork next. Is you, that a new saying? People are t saying, stick a fork in me, I'm black. <laughs> Too good to pass up someone from their cell phone. I bet if uh, if he wrote the apology down and stuck it to a cheesecake, she would accept that. <laughs> uh, Fontaine, what's up? It's time for Norton and Friends. Jimmy, you are amazing. Oh, thank you. Fontaine hey, loves you, Jimmy. Well, thank you, Fontaine. I do indeed. Guys, I'm a black 
listener and a big time Monique fan. I think she's the funniest chick comic ever, if there is such a thing. Mm. I'm not following any. <laughs> I'm not following any boycott. I just. No. I, I think Anthony, you pegged it for what it is. She's just trying to get that name out there, and I'd probably do the same thing. Guilt by association is uh, ridiculous in this case, especially. Yeah. Stop yeah. it. Yeah, I love you guys. Thank, uh, you. thank you, sir. Let's say hi to Dave in the Bronx. Dave. Yeah. Sorry about Tracy, bro. What's that? Sorry, Sorry about Tracy, Tracy man. Morgan. Well, you know, Pee Wee, he still lives there. He's still representing. He represents the Bronx. You know that, Dave. <laughs> How you guys doing? Good. Good. What do you got? I just want to thank you guys for finally having the balls to say what I think everyone should be saying about this Michael Richards thing. I mean, why is it that, you know, the blacks can make a movie called White Chicks, and that's not racist, but if we had a bunch of white guys, blackface, and named it Black Chicks, oh, they would go crazy over that. You are correct on on, on, on the, the theme of what you're saying, but I will say that there was a movie called Soul Man, which was a guy in blackface getting into Harvard. And plus, look, dude, I, I, hate, to, I hate to say it, but you know, those are done as to be funny. Michael Richards... Did something to be vicious. It is kind of different, but I've had enough of it already. So he apologized, and the black community should stop yeah. using him to all of a sudden dredge up other things that they want to talk about. Yeah. It's like let it go. We ha we've had enough of the story as well. But what we're finding funny is uh, the celebrities that are now yeah. coming out of the woodwork to get some exposure mm -hmm. for themselves. So, all right, Dave, thank you. Thank you. Has Jimmy JJ Walker made a statement yet? Yeah. I'm looking forward to that. <laughs> I'm sure I will. Jesus. I'm sure that he won't say dynamite in the middle of it unless mm. you pay him an extra thousand. <laughs> That's what I heard Jimmy Walker wants on stage. He won't say dynamite unless you give him like an extra grand. A grand? I love that. Yeah, good for him. Really? Yeah. He's an ass. He is, but I mean, you know, I'm he sure really sick of is saying an it. Ass. Hey, he has some some projects on the back burner. Does he? Yeah. Hey, uh, yesterday we started this bit. We, I think we have time to do a few more. Now, with this whole Michael Richards, Kramer thing. What happened? Well, the latest thing now is, uh, you know, the black leaders, they want to ban the N-word from entertainment. Yeah, from uh, everything. Every everything form from, of entertainment. From movies to to uh, to rap lyrics. Never to hear the word ever, ever, ever again. Banish it. Uh, they're just blah, blah, blah. It's not going to happen. Stop. Right? It's just ready. not going to happen. Stop not it. until behavior changes. <laughs> so... Uh, <laughs> We, uh, we're taking a look at uh, some of the greatest scenes in movies mm -hmm. and how they would be different if the N-word was banned from these fine movies. Yeah. Hmm. It takes something away. Like, here's an example. My orders are to weed out all non-hackers who do not pack the gear to serve in my beloved core. There is no racial bigotry here. Here we do not look down on African Americans, Jewish people, Italian Americans, or Mexican Americans. Here you are all <laughs> equally worthless. Is that understood? Yes, yes sir. <laughs> Listen to us. <laughs> we sound pathetic. You really do. <laughs> Arlie Ermey. Giving us the drill, and we're just, yeah, yeah, yeah sure. You're all about to invade and take over a bathhouse. <laughs> God, I'm glad I wasn't here for that. <laughs> Embarrassing answers you gave that real man. I know. Sir, yes, sir. Hey, a great movie out there, True Romance. Yes. Ah, the N -words. famous scene. Yes, well. It Where you could not possibly do it without the use of the N -word. Well, you know, if, they, if the black leaders have it their way and we ban this word, uh, that scene would be drastically different. It's absolutely amazing to me to think that to this day, hundreds of years later, that uh, that Sicilians still carry the African American gene. <laughs> now this, <laughs> no, I'm, no, I'm quoting history. It's written. <laughs> it's a fact. It's written. I love this guy. <laughs> Your ancestors are African American. <laughs> hey. <laughs> yeah. And, and your great, 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 great grandmother <laughs> an African American. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And she had a half African American kid. Now, that's a fact. Tell me. Am I lying? God damn. All that makes me want to do is see that movie. Again. I know. Yeah. What a great scene. Could be the best scene in a movie ever. Because Dennis is just like watching them act. Is like because Hopper's doing this thing with his right hand where he's going, eh, he has a bloody rag and he's just yeah, yeah. It, like to and fro. Eh, yeah. eh. Eh. 
And Walken isn't playing it ang angry or tough. He's laughing. He's laughing, smiling. but he's fuming inside. How great of a choice is that just to smile and be happy? Oh. It's menacing. Yeah. <laughs> oh, I oh. love this guy. <laughs> he gives him the little tisk tisk. Yeah, finger. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the tisk tisk you. And then he puts a bullet in his head. And Hopper just knows he's dead at oh, that point. Dead, knows he's dead. Trying to get killed quick. Yep. <laughs> True it's romance. Great. One of the best scenes ever shot. Yeah. Going to watch it tonight now. Absolutely have to yeah. now. And finally, we got one more example. If they uh, ban the N word from movies, this scene would be a lot different from uh, Do the Right Thing. Boy, do I have a great clip to bring in tomorrow. Yeah? Oh, yeah. Ooh. Yeah, let's continue this for another day. Mookie's talking on the phone. People are trying to call in orders. He's making us lose business. Mookie! 20 minutes. How come African Americans are so stupid? You see an African American kick his ass. You and stay off the phone. Hey, Mookie, forget about it. Can I talk to you for a second? What? Pino, okay, who's your favorite basketball player? Magic Johnson. Who's your favorite movie star? Eddie Murphy. Who's your favorite rock star? Prince. You're a Prince Ross. Bruce. Prince. Bruce. You know, all you ever talk about is African American this and African American that. And you know, all your favorite people are so called African Americans. It's different. Magic, any prince. I'm not African Americans. I mean, they're not black. I mean, let me explain myself. They're, they're not really black. I'm, I mean, they're black, but they're not really black. They're, they're more than black. It's, it's, it's different. It's different. Yeah, to me, it's, it's different. <laughs> and there you have it. I love Spike Lee. There you have it. Someone is uh, asking if we did Blazing Saddles. Yes, we did. Yeah, we did Blazing Saddles. We did that yesterday. You got to listen longer. I think I know you're bringing. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> no, you're not? What'd you think? I'll tell you. Which one are you bringing, Jimmy? Uh, psst, psst, psst. They're whispering. Brady? Psst, 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 psst. Oh, my God. I forgot that. Come on. That's a perfect Which one? Get that clip well, of... Uh, we, uh, it's one yeah. of our favorite ones. You'll, you'll know it as soon as you hear yeah. it. All right. In case, I, have, I have one that no one in this room will know. Oh. All right. Jimmy will bring that in tomorrow. In case We're you missed it. Home videos? <laughs> yes. Me and my dad talking and laughing, <laughs> accusing my mom of being a something lover. <laughs> uh, yeah, we did it yesterday, but once again, here's the Blazing Saddles one. Hold it. The next man makes a move that the African American gets it. Hold it, man. He's not bluffing. Listen to him, man. He's just crazy enough to do it. Rob it, or I swear I'll blow this African American's head all over this town. Oh, Lordy Lord, he's desperate. Do what he say. Do what he say. <laughs> yeah, it kind of changes the movie. Oh, a it little takes bit. away the uh, impact. <laughs> but, you know, hopefully, hopefully that'll uh, go through. Uh, everyone will agree. And uh, that awful word will be removed from uh, everybody's vocabulary, movies. Let's all just calm down. Re-edit movies that have the word in it. Let's just calm down. We can't start banning words. Oh, I see a picture of Jimmy Norton and Spike Lee. I'm a Spike fan. I like him. Eh. I met him at the Jeter dinner. You're a Spike lover? I do love Spike. Right. I have for many years. Hey, still lots of show to do. Uh, we have another... Uh, Maybe you should sit down segment from Kenny. Oh, Should wonderful. we do it again? Uh, Why not? All right, we'll do another uh, Maybe You Should Sit Down segment with uh, Club Soda Kenny. We had some of the biggest successes of our careers drilling things into the ground. <laughs> well, Why should we stop? Well, when we get a new bit, we get very excited, and we push it hard in the beginning, and then it'll just calm down and, and have a life of its own. By the way, we got an update. Remember, uh, first half of the show, we needed to ask Gal something. Ow. Ow. <laughs> We never, we never got the answer. Well, we did get the answer, but we didn't tell the listeners. The answer was no. No. Al took it to his place. Boss. We got a no, so we want to play it over here again. Yeah. It's a very funny rap. The beauty of XM. They're just being stupid over at uh, Free they Radio. They are cutting their own fucking throats, commercial radio. This is a funny thing. You'd be in and out of it in two minutes, and they just... They don't understand. It was very They don't very understand. Frustrating. We just sit there and go, all right, whatever. Fine. Play we, it don't, XM. we don't care. We'll just bring it over to XM. You're, you're hurting yourselves in the end. Yep. So here's a, a rap that uh, is all over the internet. Has something to do with, of course, uh, Kramer, Michael Richards, and his uh, tirade. This you had a tirade? What happened? This was put together. <laughs> that is racism. I'm not a racist. That's what's so insane about this. That's what's so insane about this. Oh my god. I'm 
not a racist, that's what's so insane about this. I'm not a racist, that's what's so insane about this. I thought he looked Irish. What's his last name? That's not Irish. <laughs> I'm not a racist. That's what's so insane about this. I'm not a racist. That's what's so insane about this. He's black, isn't he? I'm black. I'm not a racist. That was the worst part you've ever seen. Oh my God. I just say that I don't have to worry about working for a while. A long while. There you go. Mm. That is uh, put together really, really well. And that's up on opianthony.com. Nice. Very good. And they don't want us playing it over at uh, Free FM. Idiots. Bunch of dummies. <coughs> dummies. Yep. What's wrong with that? Huh? What's wrong with that? It goofs on the situation. It's not uh, nasty. And it's kind of catchy. Mm. It has a beat to it. And it's a rap song. Which is fine. I'm sure we could play a rap song over there. You think we'd be able to play a rap song with Not Nick now, in no. it? No? Not right now. Can't? No. no. Can't? No, no, no. Not until uh, February. February. How about... February 12th, I believe. How about hip-hop stations? Can they play songs with that word in it? No. The, the CBS self, owned hip-hop? They're self-editing. Yeah? Yes, and they're self-editing, yeah. Uh, that would be uh, something to find out. We were just discussing this before the show. That, uh, you know, regular radio, free radio, which we are part of, mm -hmm. is really, really out of touch. Out of touch. And we're working with, like, like Joel Hollander here at CBS Radio and other people. We're trying to show them the way. We're trying to wake them up before it's too late. We're trying Bring to do them, them a favor. Bring them back. Take them out of those boardrooms and, and a corporate... Uh, the corporate mindset and all that stuff and get back to the basics that this is all about entertaining people they gotta wake up we have xm satellite radio mm -hmm. so you know we go over there and we do everything and whatever we want whatever we want and that's how it should be for the most part and the, and the people that are listening to our show right now on these free radio stations mm -hmm. are also the same people that have myspace accounts that love going to YouTube, that love going to Break.com, and many, many other uh, sites, okay? Yep. We have this uh, this rap song, this uh, this Kramer rap remix. Yeah. Oh, it's a it's a bit on the dirty side, because you hear the N-word, because it's it's Michael Richards saying the N-word, and... Uh, they took his, uh, his tirade from the Laugh Factory right. and cut it up uh, into a rap song, and someone did a really good job on it. It sounds like a really good rap song. And it's, it's funny. funny. And it's funny, is right. It's a great um, parody it's, of the situation. It's not insightful. It's not hateful. It's not. It's taking what it, Michael Richards did and making humor out of it. It's funny. And it's extremely topical because this is yeah. one of those uh, one of these uh, uh, stories that that has uh, legs, as they say, and it's and, catchy. And it's still just going every day. There's a, there's more angles of the story every single day. Yes, it's catchy. Exactly. Yeah. It's not some dope that just decided <laughs> I get a chance to say the N word a lot. Watch yeah. what I could do. It's well well done. We've been trying to play this stupid thing on this show. For three days now. We play it on XM every afternoon. Yeah. Uh, why am I saying uh, afternoon? Every uh, every day after we leave here. Because it feels like afternoon by the time we go yeah, over to XM, true. I guess. So we play it over there. We can't play it over here. And I say to the CBS bosses, wake the F up. Yep. You're going to get passed by. Wake up and understand what the listeners of your radio stations are doing in their spare time yeah. when, when they're not listening to your radio stations. They want you to uh, entertain a certain demographic. That's what radio is all about. And the demographic that we are uh, supposed to be entertaining is very savvy with this stuff. They go online, they, you know, they find stuff, and uh, this would be 
really funny to play. Yeah, we, uh, we've we thrown it up on opianthony.com, and I just got really annoyed because I do check out break.com and YouTube pretty much every day, just like our listeners do. And I go to break.com this morning, and there it is on the front page. Break.com adds like three videos a day. You know, they control it a little more than uh, YouTube as far as uh, uh, videos go. It's mm. right there on the front page. It's only been up there an hour or two. It already has a quarter million views. Yeah. A quarter million views. Well, why would we play that here, you know, where people would want to hear it? Why, why do that? That's why they got to wake up. There can't be this... Uh Zero tolerance Ugh. policy. Ugh. There's nothing worse than the zero tolerance policy. It's like you know, if you if you blurt out the n word uh, with with hate or inciting, I can understand that. There's a problem there, but it doesn't mean it could never be used in any way, shape, or form, especially when it's used on hip hop stations uh, with the songs and in uh, other comedy acts, depending on what race you are and things like that. This is. This has nothing really to do with that. Of course not. It's just uh, taking a news story that is huge on the front page is everything and uh, putting it to, to song in a very funny way. Yeah. But they don't get it. And, and maybe some people will be offended. Oh, well, that's yeah. what creates talk. That's what creates talk. Yeah. That's what creates some of those water cooler moments. Right. Because know what happens? Big bosses of CBS Radio, they hear the Kramer rap on our show. Guess what? Oh, my God. Did you listen to Opie and Anthony this morning? Did you hear that Kramer rap thing? Oh, you have it? Well, well, they ha and then they'd start discussing the show. Yeah. The show. That, uh, Is that one dumb Kramer rap uh, thing going to make or break the Opie and Anthony show? No. No, it's not. Of course not. But these, uh, these people have got to wake up. Yeah. You know, we've been arguing that we should be able to use the... Uh, you know, the N-word, if it's in a news story. How do we, as a talk show, mm -hmm. discuss the Michael Richards thing, but we can't say the actual word? Or play the audio? No, can't even play the audio. That is so stupid. Which is, has been played everywhere. The lawyers. We've all heard it. It's stupid lawyers. Lawyers ruin everything, by the way. Look, in the end... They really do. In the end, we got XM. So, you know, we'll be okay in the end. But I, 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 I'm, I'm doing... I'm doing CBS a favor today. We're doing CBS a favor today and telling them to wake the F up yeah. and understand where your listeners are when they're, when they're not uh, listening to, to radio shows like ours. The they're on break.com. They're on YouTube. Go there yourselves and see what they're, they're watching and listening to. The people supposedly they're finding in, charge, in charge of the creative end of this whole thing. Have to uh, just get out of the uh, boardrooms and oh. meetings with lawyers and everything else and really get down to uh, uh, street level, if I might say, street level. And it's not an FCC violation, by the way. No, it's all. not. No. No, it's absolutely not. No, and it's, maybe you might think it's just one lousy bit, but no, this is the way it's going. Yeah. So I want to at least, you know, uh, jump on my little soapbox. Try to give them a little wake-up call. And wake people up because this, uh, this is where it's all going. Ugh. People go to break.com every morning. They go to YouTube. They check out MySpace pages. And it's a lot different. They're getting away with a lot more stuff on those uh, on those sites and other sites. Yeah, it's Speaking, making radio more irrelevant. Right. You know, they ought to, they, they have to embrace that. And uh, I understand. You're not gonna, we're not going to get on the air and blurt out those seven dirty words or, uh, you know, talk graphically about sex in a way that's, you know, pandering and goes on and on. And, and, and you know, we're, we're not talking about that stuff. We're not talking about losing a, a station's license because of uh, FCC complaints. This has nothing to do with the FCC. I don't understand where this rule came from. What's the background of this ruling? Who made it and why? That's what I'd love to hear. I'd love to sit down with those dopey lawyers and find out who made that decision and why. They're afraid of upsetting blacks. They're afraid of upsetting a special interest group. It's a bunch of dopey, older white guys that are completely out of touch. They're a bunch of frightened white guys who are terrified. They just want to retire quietly. They don't want any problems. They have no hunger for the creativity, and they wonder why yeah. it's getting its teeth kicked in yeah. by every other medium. Well, outside. let's look at something then. Let's look at... Um, what happens when you anger a certain group? And let's choose, because it's in the news with Kramer and everything, black people. Okay. You anger them uh, with his tirade. 
you call for a boycott of season seven of the Seinfeld DVD, which has just been released. Right. Um, I got. I info. guess sales have just plummeted. Yeah. And uh, Jerry is uh, uh, actually out on street corners with duffel bags, <laughs> trying to sell his own uh, DVD because. Uh, they can't get rid of them now because of this boycott, yeah, right? This is, this Isn't is that what, what happened? This is what controversy does. This is what edgy material does, okay? It's in the paper today. Seinfeld soars on racist uh, uh, rant. The the K.K. Kramer scandal murdered Michael Richards' career, but it's doing wonders for sales of the latest Seinfeld DVD. Season 7, the one they want everyone to just boycott, right? Yeah. Um, is outselling season six, which was released on the same day mm -hmm. last year, yep. by more than seventy five percent. Seventy five percent. Everybody wants to They're pick up Seinfeld killing. season seven and now watch Seinfeld uh, and go, oh wow, look at Kramer yeah. here, look at Kramer here. They're killing. And this situation could be in recent history, in recent news, one of the most offensive things to uh, hit uh, uh, the black community. Uh, by somebody. And look at what it did. Look at what their calls of anger for apologies, um, all the publicity that he got, uh, and, and a boycott. Look at what all those calls did for the bottom line, which was the product, the entertainment product that they were trying to get rid of, that they were angered with. Sales 75% more than last and, year. And more than 90% over season five, by the way. Don't you understand? By the way. There you got Jason Alexander gearing up to attack the Jews next year. <laughs> <laughs> there you have it. Controversy sells. Edgy radio sells. Edgy radio gets people listening and talking around the water cooler. Not talking about so when FCC you tell us here. So when you tell us you can't play that 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 edgy you know Kramer remix rap thing, you're just hurting yourselves in the end. And yep. we got another gig, man. Trying in the end, we got out. another gig. We're trying to help you out here. You know, if this doesn't work out for us, then we go back to XM and we're still radio stars. And what are you left with? You got to wake up because these same people are in the boardroom going, oh. Listenership at all our stations are down. I don't, I don't understand what's going on here. You've cut back too far because you're scared of nothing. None of them you're have any. Scared problems. of your own shadows. Uh, I, I, like I said, totally understandable. FCC, you got to watch out. You could lose a license. You could get huge fines. Understand? We get it. We get the FCC portion of this thing. Don't worry about it. But when you you enact these other rules because you're scared. You're running scared, crapless. Uh, it's time to really reassess and look at these policies that are in place and see that it it is really destroying radio. Yeah, listenership is down with all the music stations. Know why? People have iPods. Know why people have iPods? You've been using the same effing playbook for forty years. Yeah, you got to update the playbook. Update. Get out of those offices. Get out of your cubicles. Get out of the friggin' boardrooms and out of the meetings with your lawyers. And and look at what this is supposed to be all about: entertaining people, making some noise, having fun, a little controversy. That's it. So there you go, Seinfeld season seven, selling <laughs> seventy five percent more. Seventy five percent than season six. Good boycott, people. Selling like it's pig really intestines. <laughs> Uh, I th I think the only explanation that could be is that it's 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 there's what is that it's that doesn't make sense. I think the only explanation that could be is that it's there's a Kramer curiosity factor. I guess that's a is that there's a mm, I should have is that there's a Kramer yeah. All right, I can understand that after what happened, there's a resurgent interest in Seinfeld, and that seems to be expressing itself through people watching the show more and buying more DVDs. I even watch Seinfeld more. It's on TV, and it, yeah. it, it's just, I don't know why, but there's a, the, you look at it a whole different way now. And speaking of which, speaking of which, because we're on break.com every day and YouTube, and actually Anthony brought this one to my attention. I think it was on, what, Drudge? Mm -hmm. Where did you find it first, the the, the uh, lost episode? Oh, on uh, actually on Whackbag. Oh, oh Whackbag or on Whackbag? Yeah. One of our fan sites? Yeah, and then, uh, but it was up on, I'm not even sure where, another one of these, you know, video sites. Yeah, it, uh, it's, someone put together a great little remix thing of uh, video, put it together of Seinfeld episodes and the controversy, and it's hysterical, really funny. 
Yeah, they they uh, they take the uh, video of uh, Michael Richards at the Laugh Factory and and, and yeah, s- splice it into put some, it into Seinfeld episodes. It's unbelievable. Yeah, really funny. And and to the big wigs uh, here at CBS Radio, you might want to go to break dot com. That will be on the front page tomorrow, if not later today. Yeah, we uh, already have it up on OpieAnthony dot com. By the way, you really should check it out. It's called the Seinfeld Lost Episode, and uh, it's it's great. Could we explain something? To the idiot on uh, line three. Uh, Could we please explain uh, something? Yeah. David, David from Dallas. Hi. This good, is me. Good morning. Um, why don't morning. you just Why don't you just throw out what you want to say? Why don't y'all just play it? Why don't we have the balls? It says to just yeah, play it. Just play it. Just play it. Why gig, Why can't we just you got play it? Gig, right? What? Y'all do you got another gig, right? do you know what would happen if hold on let, 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 let me let me explain to you for a minute ahead. do you know what would happen if we played it I, I have no idea yeah obviously you have no yeah, idea so instead of just calling up and calling us pretty much pussies for not playing it let me explain to you what happens we would play it there's a guy down the hall that has a button and he would chop it to pieces you would never hear it. Why play it if no one's going to hear it because they would dump out of every time the N-word is used? And it's used so many times that they would, what is called, run out of dump and have to remove our show from the air for a, a short time, which is what they do. And knowing, uh, you know, and knowing this station, it would probably go into commercial. So, yeah. So yeah, all you would hear is all you would hear you as a listener is, all right, we're going to play it. We're going to have the balls to play it. Here it is, the, the K.K. Kramer rap. Boom. We'll hit the button. You'll hear a commercial. Yeah, All right. that's you how it you would work. Hear it. it has nothing about uh, you know okay. having any courage or. <sighs> it, just, it wouldn't go over the air, dude. It yeah, you'd never it. hear it. So what we, we would play? Believe me, we were talking about just playing it, but no one would ever hear it. So what we tell people today is go to opianthony dot com and uh, you can also go to break dot com because there's a video version of it. All in, right. In fairness to the caller, I said to Opie, they're like, just let's just play it. No, but it's like, why? It would be stupid. You'd never Nobody hear, would hear it. a word of it. No one would hear it. It's not like the the dump guy would trip and crack his head open and we could just play it and get away with it. All the joy that would be. Ow. Go to hell. Ow. 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 What are you, you're going to jump out of it, Al? Ow. <laughs> okay, Al. Al just wants to get through the day and get home to whatever smooth little Asian fellow. Oh, of course. Yeah, of course he does. <laughs> All right, we're just getting started. So there's the latest on, well, almost the latest on Kramer. We have a Mel Gibson item today. Oh, uh, Mel Gibson. Didn't, didn't we say Mel this Gibson yesterday? On this. We said it yesterday that celebrities are coming out of the woodwork to jump on the Kramer thing to get yeah. their own kind of publicity. But I'm sure in, in Mel uh, Gibson's uh, case, you know, everyone was uh, searching him out because it's kind of similar to what he did. Yeah, and he's got a new movie coming and, out. So, And finally, he's commenting. I guess we could uh, give you that comment after the break here. Yeah. You know, Monique was yesterday, you know, mm. and most people when we played that audio yesterday were like, Monique, who the hell is she? That's a, that's the point we were trying to make, by yeah, the way. Exactly. That's, They're all coming out of the woodwork. Especially, doesn't matter how big or small. Yeah, especially celebrities that uh, you know are looking for a little pop, a little publicity. You know, they they see this as a as a uh, opportunity. Yeah. To get their names in in print and on TV. You know, yep. you're not going to get like Tom Cruise commenting about what Kramer did at the Laugh Factory, but no. you will get celebrities like Monique doing it, and that was our uh, our point yesterday. Mm-hmm. By the way, Hi. I was discussing uh, the iPod phenomenon with uh, with the uh, the gang in the store, and they're, they're saying this holiday season it's completely out of control how many iPods they're selling. Yep. And then I told them when we do the walk from uh, you know Free FM here in New York City to XM every day on the sidewalk, all we see. All we see is iPods. People walking down the sidewalk with the, the, the iPod buds. It's unbelievable. They don't want to talk or deal with other people. And this uh, continues with uh, how we started the show today. Then you got these executives in these dumb boardrooms, and they can't figure this crap out. Yep. You know, they know this uh, iPod phenomenon is happening, so what do they do? They use the same playbook from 40 years ago to program their radio stations. I believe you got to give people something that they can't get. Right. Anywhere else, right? So somebody, <laughs> the trick. Somebody invented the playbook for music radio. Here it is, the playbook, and it worked for many years. And when they invented the the playbook, people were walking around uh, with transistor radios. I was going to go with the the clunky like Walkmans, 
Oh, the, the the big headphones with the antennas sticking off? I'm talking, the, you know, this is how long ago they, they created the playbook for music radio. People were walking around with transistor radios that had to hold up to their ear. Yeah, you listen they, to the ball game. Yeah, they didn't have headphones. No. And radio. They had the one little ear thing that went in one ear. <laughs> that little, <laughs> like, ivory-colored, yellowish thing that you stuck in one ear and plugged into your transistor radio. Yeah. That, that was years later. They didn't even have that in the beginning. But stupid mm. radio, they've been using the same playbook since then. Even though now yeah. it's so much easier to carry around your own music. Yep. Just pop it on your uh, iPod. They're just a bunch of, go. bunch of dopes. dopes. Out of touch dopes. I Dude, I do different stations and different... It's not CBS or Clear Channel. It's all of them. It's everyone involved in it, and they do the same thing. It's not just one company. It's a bunch of people who have been in it too long who just want to retire without a problem. And I'm telling you, it stinks everywhere you go. It's the same crap... The same schlocky nonsense, the little faggoty music bed you got to talk over there. Right back here. We got to play five in an hour. We got to play. It's, it's awful. <laughs> They're just panicking cowards everywhere you go. The people in the business, the DJ, no. nobody yeah. has one ounce of balls yeah. or desire to do anything creative. And, they just yeah. stink and they wonder why nobody wants to listen. And this has been boiling under my skin since the Kramer thing because, you know, they want us to be an edgy talk show here. And uh, this is a massive story, and we can't even say the word. And then we can't even play the other stuff that is happening because of this, like that uh, that you know uh, rap song. Yep. It's just amazing. How are you supposed to be edgy and you don't even say the word that's in the biggest news story of the year? And it's not a, it's, a violation. It's beyond stupid, and they got to oh, wake yes. up. Because in the end, we have another job. In the end, we have another gig. So, you know, it's not going to hurt us. It's going to hurt you guys, though. I'm trying to wake you guys up. There's just too big a gap between uh, talent and, and upper, upper management. Like, they don't understand each other. There's no real communication there. They have an agenda, and uh, talent has an agenda. And uh, it's so far from each other these days, uh, it's very difficult to um, do what you want to do. There you go. What are they afraid of, an, an advertiser? Yeah. Is going to run away because you played that? Yeah. Again, you saw what happened with the Seinfeld DVD. Any type of controversy, people don't care. People aren't that affected by some stupid boycott. No, no one cares. Not. No no one participates in boycotts. No one. Uh, no one. Yeah, if you're just tuning in, we just said it, but uh, the and Seinfeld Season 7 is uh, outselling Season 6 by 75%. <laughs> and this is an, an outrage. Outraged people calling for a boycott. For something that was so highly publicized that if any boycott would have worked, this should have. Yep. But no, it doesn't. Boycotts make things sell more. <laughs> That's how it works. But why should and believe me, I'm sorry, Rich, I'm sorry. Yeah. Believe me, we, we know that you know Seinfeld is being bought by a lot of people. It's not being bought by a bunch of... <laughs> oh, Jesus. <laughs> sorry, man. And uh, the Kramer rap already up to 250,000 views on Break.com. That's where the listeners of this radio show go to. Mm -hmm. But how can we So the suits have got to start uh, you know figuring out what the listeners are doing when they're not listening to your radio stations. They go to YouTube, they go to break.com. We can we can list a ton of sites that you've never heard of. myspacecom Jim Norton. They're all over there. It's all oh, the fun wow. stuff is up. There you go. Heart goes out to Kramer, Mel uh, Gibson says. <laughs> I bet he does. I bet you Michael Richards is reading this in Hollywood somewhere going, oh, great. Well, I, Mel, I, will you shut that up? I, I don't need you on this one. I got one supporter, uh, Mel Gibson. He's coming to my corner. Brother, I'm screwed. <laughs> That's his only only support is Mel Gibson. Uh, Michael Richards may still right. be reeling from public react. Hold on a minute. I'm reeling, Jerry. He's reeling. Him and Tom Metzger. This is the most publicity he's had since he was on Seinfeld. Let's say hi Even to, more. Let's say hi to Craig at Woodside. Craig. Hey, Craig. Guys, can we move on already? Let's go. Why don't you move on to another station? <laughs> oh, that's a good one. That's a good one, Opie. Oh, he's right, that's dude. That's a good one. Ah! Oh, I've tased him. That is a good one. Yeah, if you don't like it, don't listen. Bye. Uh, Michael Richards may still be reeling from public reaction to his racist rant at a comedy club, but he should know he's not alone. Mel Gibson feels his pain. I bet he does. Uh, I felt like sending Michael Richards a note. <laughs> a note. I wonder what that would read. <laughs> no kidding. It's like, uh, the Jews are the problem, not the blacks. <laughs> 
<laughs> or they, they send funny notes back to each other. Uh, I think they smell more because of, no, they're st stinkier because of. Yeah, but who's running the media? <laughs> yeah, but who's committing all the crimes? And they elbow each other's ribs. Huddle, huddle. Ah, see you next week. <laughs> I felt like sending Michael Richards a note, Gibson says, and a blah, blah, blah. I feel really bad for the guy. He was obviously in a state of stress. You don't need to be inebriated to be bent out of shape, but my heart went out to the guy. The 50-year-old uh, actor-director told Entertainment Weekly, Richards will feel the heat for a while, but the scandal will blow over. They'll probably torture him for a while and then let him go, the Braveheart actor said. The and Braveheart th actor. And then he, he ends it by saying, I like him. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> I like him. I'm sure Kramer's It's a good like, egg. Oh, come on, man. Mel, just Jenny, stay out of this Jenny one. Jenny sent Mussolini a note. <laughs> why, why does it look, the guy, it's like people are so afraid of getting like a, a boycott against them or something. Why can't people just apologize? They always have to talk about healing and all this crap. Oh, the just healing. Shut and, your mouth. I have to go uh, into therapy uh, for this. I'm, I'm, uh, I'm just busted up about it. Just apologize like you did and move on. Right. He said, Look, Leave it alone. What I said was awful. I, I, I got crazy. I wanted to hurt the guy because he was heckling me, and I went for the absolute most hurtful thing. I never should have done. If there was a human apology, I bet you Jesse Jackson and them wouldn't even have called for a boycott, but his apology mm -hmm. stunk so much that black people are watching it going, could you at least give us a reason to move on? It was, black people couldn't even. It was so awful. They had to call for a boycott. They usually don't call for a boycott after you apologize on Letterman and a black show. Yeah. Normally people move on. But he was so terrible. Uh, Katrina, and you guys run around, and your toes look like macadamia nuts. All right, we get it. <laughs> he didn't know what he was saying. No. You hear the uh, latest on him, though, yeah, that he was uh, accused of being anti-Semitic also. And he said that he's Jewish. And they researched his background, and neither of his parents <laughs> are Jewish. He took it on. Then he said, <laughs> he he just, oh. "Yeah, he never converted or anything either." But he said he was mentored by people that were Jewish, so he considers himself Jewish. Oh boy, oh. that's it. Take on the religion that's most hated on the planet. I'm not a real Jew, but I want people to hate me like I'm. I don't know. What you don't think Muslims are? Kidding me in show either. business? Very think, risky to be a Jew. Shut up. Oh, I, I think Muslims at this this day and age kind of um, wrong. The number one hated group, especially in this country, are Jews on any white supremacy list. Paul, he's right. Any list. right. Wait, wait. No, okay. as far as white they supremacy, the list, there's you, ten white supremacists that are organized these days. And they think Jews are at the top of the Jews list. Jews are more hated than Muslims right now Throughout the in world. America. Yeah, it, America and the you world. You said America, too. Yes, America and I, the world. I don't oh, Not in America. Sure. There's because no way. Not in America. I don't know about America. You, I, I don't you, know. You fell down because, to number two. No, you want me to I know. You not in America. Because Muslims do not affect people in the Midwest and the South like it did on the East Coast, okay? They, it, it really didn't affect them as much as it did here. I'm tell, I know it isn't. My only, my only argument with Voss on this one is that in, in America... No. Well, Oh, but, <laughs> Are you adding in self-hating too? No, I, I knew Voss. I knew Voss was going to say something dumb because his hand came out. Whenever his hand comes out, the little no. stiff thing won't bend. Oh, I know. But no, you, Rich. It, it, it's like, look, the Jew, they, they attacked America, and that, the Midwest. They, they didn't get hit, but that tapped into that whole. They, you know, they hit old glory. Believe me, the Midwest felt it. Dude. I, I think Jews might be number two by Muslims here, but in the world, it's absolutely Jews. The, the whole Middle East hates Jews. Yeah. they're all Muslims. Yeah, I, I don't know about the world, but I, th I think I know a little bit about America, and I, I would have to say the Jews are in second place at this point. It, okay, it, it just has point. to yeah. be. Has to be. You'll do something. I mean, well, you know. when they find out we orchestrated the whole thing. <laughs> yeah, well, we're already working on that. Uh, Stephen from Bayshore, Gibson's uh, note said, keep up the good work. <laughs> <laughs> okay, and what do you feel about them suing him? How bad that would be for That's, comedy? Who oh, pay money? If Kramer paid any money, how bad that would be? It wouldn't matter. Nobody else would pay. Let him pay. No. Hey, by the way, Jamie Masada, the uh, the owner of the Laugh Factory, I forgot to tell you this. Uh, he called me yesterday, I, and I was unavailable because I was getting my teeth scraped. Oh, brother. Sweetie. I want to say hi to the gang at the uh, the old dentist office in Huntington. I was oh. scraping my teeth yesterday afternoon, but I don't know what he wanted. I guess we should call him and see what's going on. The same reporters who report, you know, murders and child abduction and things, just horrific crimes, were actually looking like, this isn't funny. <laughs> what you're about to see is horrid. But, you know, they'll show a dead body or this, that. They, but that was over the line for them. Dude, you made the news. <laughs> oh, yeah. It was, no, it was so funny. 
Because then they showed they showed the clip. Of course they did. I love when people have to say this isn't funny. What you're about to watch. Yeah, this what, isn't like funny. Yeah. What you're about to watch tw- when we play it twenty times here on the news. Like, if I'm laughing, it's funny. Who, right. who do you say what's funny? Yeah, yeah. exactly. It's like when uh, when uh, Kramer was on uh, Letterman. And yeah. Jerry Seinfeld told the audience, "Stop laughing. Yeah, stop, stop, stop laughing. What are you talking about? I'm laughing. Yeah. Yeah. It's funny. And did you? Hear how Don't tell me what's yeah. funny. Yeah. I, I, I've I've watched that clip too many times. And the way Jerry goes, no, stop, stop laughing. It's Not like funny. he even knows, all right, I, I know you got to <laughs> laugh at this, but just could you please for a second not? And it's the first time anybody's uh, laughed at Michael Richards since he walked yes. off the set of that show. <laughs> right. No one cares about it on stage. Take your conceptual <laughs> dreck and shoot And don't himself. be mistaken, Jerry Seinfeld's laughing really hard in his yes. own head. Oh, now he's laughing, too, now, the, now that uh, season seven is selling 75% more. And it's in season six sold. Yeah. Really? Because 75% of this. Because of the boycott. That's hilarious. <laughs> yeah. Uh, why don't why people understand great? that? They, uh, uh, if people are outraged and boycott and this has been on the news and then the DVD comes out, you couldn't ask for that. It, it, if it wasn't what it was, you'd almost think they planned that. Yeah. It was yeah. perfectly executed. The timing was perfect. There, there he is on Letterman with Seinfeld. Uh, apologizing as Seinfeld is plugging his brand new DVDs. It's brilliant. Our friend Brent was over at the Laugh Factory when it was happening. And he came running back over to the comedy store. It's right down the street. Yep. And he was like, whoa, it got crazy. Over there. <laughs> 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 and we were like, Michael, I mean, he, would, he had been on at the comedy store just like an hour before. And he killed. He went, it was going it was crazy. One of those and, weird sets. Yeah, yeah. I was screaming. And you, did you see it? Did you see a set? No, Jeff told Wait, so before the Laugh Factory is at the comedy store. Yeah, we, he went to the comedy store just only a couple an miles hour apart before. These, yeah, not two, even. A mile, maybe. One. Yeah. And, and is he uh, a yelling guy? Is that his no, act? Well, I can't tell. We, 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 we think you might have been uh, on some sort of a substance. Yeah. That, it, that causes you to be uh, aggressive and, and, and uh, confident. Right. You was know? he yelling the N word? Aggressive and confident, <laughs> okay. Was he yelling the N word at. Uh, no, 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 no. At the he comedy was, store? But he was being uh, really loud and animated, and he had some little hot little bimbo with him, and uh, then he ran out down the street and tried, the tried it over there. And <laughs> didn't work. Oops. Yeah. <laughs> he had a chick with him? That, you know what? That explains something, because if his girl saw him bombing, we've yeah. all bombed in front of a broad before, it's That's humiliating, and saw him being emasculated by that table, that might explain why he went so mm. crazy, because he had a broad with him. That makes a lot of sense. Yeah. Maybe, she, maybe she told him a little secret about her past yeah. on the way from point A to point B. <laughs> <laughs> how did you I want to tell you guys how I lost my virginity. <laughs> the state oh, football Jesus. team. Wait, I'm <laughs> going to go <laughs> Jamie said if you say the N-word, you get fined there. Buddy, I find so you. I, I take the laugh. money away from your body. So there buddy, your, you can do this at my place. <laughs> there goes your Sunday show right out the window. Yeah. The urban show. What are Talk they going to do? Yeah. Is that what he's saying? He's, he's finding people now? Yeah, That's he's hilarious. hilarious. Yeah. Oh, he's banned the word from the yeah. laugh Somebody needs to duct tape Jamie and tell him to stop. He called me yesterday. I don't know what he wanted. So buddy, trying, I got to talk to you. Yeah, we're trying it's to get him on the show. Uh, I phone. find people, when they use that word, I say, That's fine. <laughs> I don't really have a problem with it. <laughs> I, I actually sided with him. Because uh, I don't work the club only because I, was, I think he's afraid to get his club burned down. Because out there, there's a, yeah. I, I think I don't think it's a reaction like a PC reaction. I think it's like, well, if I don't do this, self preservation. Somebody's going to take a shot at somebody. I got them. hate email over it. Somebody thought what? it was me. How'd you do? Some, some bark dude thought it was me. I Sent thought it was you. Why? Rogan. You are the was furthest like person apart. You are in opposite ends of the spectrum. But I'm white. <laughs> oh, okay. So you can't every white apart. comic got like hate mail. <laughs> right. Hey, I saw what you did. He sent me the left factory crazy hate mail saying you're the n word and this and that you know and then I sent him I go is that a good thing <laughs> With a question mark and then he sent me back and you know are you that guy that did that I go no the whole thing goes sorry <laughs> jackass <laughs> so and then and then you wrote back and called him an n <sighs> no anyway the whole I said you have a good day it. sir the What's whole sweetie? good thing about this whole incident it might push, put Lisa Lampanelli out of work. That's what I'm saying. How nice would that be? She goes, she's just five minutes and he's going to get off stage. All right, no more chink spook. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> nothing else. In, uh, you know, no other groundbreaking. Why, does she stuff. use that word? Oh, I don't oh know. She's God. fresh, though, Joe. I don't All get tangled up with her. <laughs> I don't need that kind of controversy. When one doesn't have something yeah. in, her, in her mouth, she uses it. <laughs> I'll, I'll say one thing for Lisa, though. She does take her act home with her. I mean, yeah. She doesn't just walk out of the club and all of a sudden start talking to her peers. It's right <laughs> yeah. in the car with one of them. Blah, 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 blah. <laughs> 
<laughs> you hear what I said? <laughs> 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 there's, there's a lot of expressions like that. Like blew his wad. That's a gambling term. Right. You know, that's about a wad of cash. It's a wad of cash. Yeah, yeah. nothing to do. Uh, not I just keep it there. Okay. All right. Yeah. yeah. It's a wad of cash. Joe knows what he's doing. Yeah. yeah. That's it. Oh, like, got a thumbs uh, up on other, that one. Yeah. Okay. Unlike other yeah. people in the studio. That have no clothes. That have to over explain things. Rich the dump boss. Rich. We could sit there and and just artistically maneuver our way around a subject so the listener gets a picture we're in like, their head about Joe, exactly what on. we're talking we're about. We're like black ninjas. We're moving. And <laughs> yeah, moving, just making sure. Now, now, the people know what we're talking about. Everything's fine. And he'll just go, oh, her pussy. <laughs> <laughs> and, and you're like, Rich, I just spent like 15 minutes painting this picture, and he drops like the oh, pee bomb. I, I got the best Voss story ever in regards to uh, words you're not supposed to use. We were at Dangerfields once, and this was, what was it, like 12 years ago or something like that? And uh, we were downstairs, and he tells this joke, and I go, dude, tell that joke on stage, please. He goes, oh, I can't tell on stage. So he goes, <laughs> he goes up on stage. The joke is, he goes, uh, he goes, was, uh, before she dated Mike Tyson, Robin Givens dated, uh, what is it, Eddie Murphy? Go ahead, tell the joke. <laughs> she dated Eddie Murphy, Michael Jordan. Is it me or is she an end lover? <laughs> <laughs> and the audience just stares at him. <laughs> they just stare at him. All you hear is me over by the bar, bar laughing my ass off. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Never forget that. All right. That is was funny. Awesome. He was killing. He was killing up until that moment. They just decided to throw uh, it in there. Uh, I don't know what Al jumped out, but basically, yeah. Oh, I think he's fine with that. Yeah. We'll skate all around and then uh, Boss will, will yeah. bring it over the top and explain what we were... Voss will just blatantly throw the word out that we were trying to finesse around. Right, so everyone was would stay on the same page. You never so fail. ridiculous. Grown adults and you have to skirt around words. Now, how ridiculous does it seem to you guys after doing the XM show for a long time? Yeah, it's 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 one of it's those an things where it's like... Oh, hence the uh, conversation I just had in, in the corner yeah, with Tom Chiasano. Right. <laughs> uh, by the way, they dumped out of that word, Ant. Yes. They oh, well, I know of, they dumped out of that I know. One. It's too bad because you got a huge laugh. That's why I want to yeah. re-explain it that... You know, we skate and maneuver, and then Voss will take it over the top. Blurt out the word. And wreck everything. It was a part of the female anatomy. I just blurted out that yeah. that well, isn't or, a friendly or word. Or a kitty cat. Right, right, or a kitty you cat. You can say it that way, right? Exactly. You're you can good, say, Joe. Can't you say, like, someone's being one? Yeah, like, you can say that. Cat? Yeah. You can say that. Yeah, yeah. but but now, oh, really? because of what we just did before, you can't say now it. we can't. Now we can't. <laughs> Until <laughs> later, when we change subjects, uh, perhaps. This is very complicated, Joe. It is oh, so crazy. complicated. I'd, I'd rather go eat some worms or something. It's so Hilarious. Yeah. You still have to do this. 2006, and that hasn't changed. It's amazing. Amazing. Yeah. That was the know. point I was making. But Horse I, femur marrow or something. But, <laughs> I'm, but I made my point too well, and that hence the conversation I had to have in a corner. Was that it a was scolding? Nice. Mm -hmm. It didn't seem like a scolding. It was a little bit. I didn't see him yeah. wagging his finger at you. It was I a little said, scolding. It would have been so funny. I said to Aunt, like, if he took you over in the corner and just tried to make out with you. <laughs> <laughs> totally disconnected. Listen, you want to keep your job, right? You want to keep your job? Come here. Yeah. Come, oh, come he's here. He's in the baby. whisper and put your tongue out a little bit. Neck. I'm just going to touch the tongue. A nuzzle. You. What are you doing? <laughs> what? <laughs> Grabs you around the waist and the back of your head. Yeah. We started the show by showing uh, some passion for what we do. And why do they always pick me out, man? You were agreeing with what we were, what, what I was saying. I'm, 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 I'm likable. <laughs> <laughs> That's the truth, Joe. Because Ant's right with me. He's right with me, but Tom said, I want to talk to you. Not, I want to talk to you guys. What, what was the subject? Yeah, you know, just... Uh, uh, let's just say it was... The differences between two mediums. <laughs> That's all. Okay. I think that pretty much spells it out. And something about making his job tougher. I don't know. Oh. Yeah. And we'll continue at uh, 11 o'clock today. And I had uh. just got done... Uh, Conveying my fantastic experiences I had with Mac so he the night loves before. You. So everyone of loves Anthony. Ugh. I'm lovable. You, you certainly really are. are. Except my neighbors. All right, Joe Rogan uh, <laughs> at Caroline's all weekend long. We got your videos up on our website, so really? people can check it out. Ari, right? Yeah, Ari. What's your last name again? Shafir. Yeah, right on. Uh, his amazing racist videos are up on OpenAnthony.com. He's a Jew. <laughs> <He's a Joe. laughs> I can't how to say it. <laughs> so Joe, we can play this over here. We can't play this on regular radio. Listen to this. It's all over the internet. <laughs> that is racism. I'm not a racist. That's what's so insane about this. Bigger, bigger. I'm not a racist. That's what's so insane about this. Bigger, bigger. Talk, 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 talk. 
I thought he looked Irish. What's his last name? Digger. That's not Irish. I'm not a racist. <laughs> what's so insane about this? Digger. Digger. I'm not a racist. That's what's so insane about this. He's black, isn't he? I'm black. Digger. I'm not a racist. That was the worst part you've ever seen. Digger. Oh, my God. Just say that I don't have to worry about working for a while. A long while. <laughs> What do you think? Yeah. Mm. That's pretty good. That's good. It's hilarious that while this is playing, John Kerry's on TV saying it's time to move on from the botched joke, his botched joke about Iraq. What are you oh, about? God. Yeah. Oh, yeah. stop. That's Enough. hilarious. All right, let's get Jamie Massad in here. Buddy. <laughs> buddy. Buddy, <laughs> seriously. We buddy. have to do something about the N-word. Take it out of dictionary. For the people that don't know, Obviously. Jamie Massad is the uh, owner of the Laugh Factory in L.A. where Kramer did his thing. Obviously, uh, two nights Joe ago, Joe Rogan has heard him a lot. <laughs> What's up, brother? Uh, how are you, Joe? Wonderful, Mr. Masada. Um, and yourself? I'm doing okay. I'm doing all right, I guess. Uh, yeah. Trying, trying to do the best we can do with all of the comedian they are surrounding you guys. And, you know, the special Joe and everybody in here, they think, you know, of what I did with uh, banning the N, it was kind of like a... You mean the word nigger? Please, please be nice. Can't say it. Uh, you know, uh, just say that it's we're a word. Talking about the word. Uh, no, just we, a word. The whole, I know, but the whole Not thing. Not calling anybody. It. I know, I know, but the thing happened. You know, you guys, you were here. You didn't see it. I mean, I was in the Los Angeles. The time is South Center. All of the sudden, everybody they're trying to have a riot and all of that stuff happening. You got to do the best you can to stop it. So, are you doing this for self-preservation? Is this pretty much, please look, I'm trying, don't burn my club down? No, 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 no. It's not only that. Or is no. it a personal no, decision no, no. that yeah, you're actually making no. through your own morality or something? Yeah, because we mean, can't start banning words there. No, yeah, you yeah. can't. Yeah. Uh, no no way, no, start no, no, the no, word. no, no, no. I'm not banning a word or anything like that whatsoever. What I'm trying to say, we got it as a comedy, as a comedy community, we got to come together somehow. You know, calm the whole thing down because of it sounds sense to all of the people, all of the sudden up there. They're all ready to do the riot. Oh, come and on, we did still, have no way. On the, still, on the they're brink. still angry about a, a is it, sitcom guy from years ago who said a bad word to a heckler trying to hurt him. And, and then they really apologized poorly. And then fall, fell apart on television over and over again uh, with Al Sharpton and Jesse Jackson and David Letterman. I mean, is there, if they're really ready to riot, if they're going to riot, they would have already rioted. No, no? they were going to riot. But they're not going to riot now? No, no. They were going to riot. I mean, at the time we were, uh, day before Thanksgiving, I was on the TV Wonders radio, a bunch of places. Was There were five, 6,000 of people that were outside. Mm -hmm. They were all kind of like a, it was like a dynamite. It was ready to blow up. Right. And so what we do, we have to do something because in Los Angeles, they, these people, there are a lot of people, they are unemployed. There are a lot of people, they don't have no jobs or anything in South Central. And they were, it was just going crazy. So what do you do at that point? You got to do something the best you can do, calm everything down. I think, I think you calm things down though by telling Michael Richards maybe that he can't perform there anymore because it was more, not, not so much for the language, but just for, like the outburst and the turning away of, of your clientele. You know, you, he turned away uh, people from your club. That is a reason for you to say, hey, you're not welcome back here anymore. Yeah, but for reasons. using words, I mean, it's like if, if Mencia comes in and says, Beaner, 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 uh, is are you going to ban him? Is it, is it something no, like that? No, no, no. I mean, none of he that. You know, uh, no. But yeah. you know, the whole thing is what we trying to do. The time you see the whole thing happening, what's happening in again in Los Angeles, you guys all see it from outside. 
the time I was mm. involved with it, the time I saw it in Los Angeles. Oh, I can figure out what's going on out there. I just, it's figure, hard to figure, figure, figure out. Yeah, I'm sorry. Yeah, yeah. I can figure out what's going on out there <laughs> just by uh, what I hear in the news. Oh, they're applauding you on things like that, but uh, I'm sorry. It was just a Freudian slip. But, uh, you know, I don't think it's as bad. I'm but there. Again, I'm not well, out I'm there, there too. It's not know, but, but you guys, you are all, you know, everybody, Joe Rogan, everybody, they are there. They're living in Beverly Hills, B- Brentwood. Buddy, I don't all, live in Beverly Hills. Oh, okay, wherever. You're not living in South Central. The time you go in the South Central. If I is, lived in South Central, would it make more sense? Uh, really think I, so? I think you would be agreeing with me if you leave there. I think Jamie is afraid of his club. This is why I, I, I didn't hate that you banned it. Only because right. I didn't look at it like it was a political correct decision. I think he just didn't want his club to be a focal point of this rage with that big insignia on the side. And that's an area that has a history of really shitty racial violence. And look, if I own a building... I just don't want people fucking Molotov cocktailing it. I mean, so that's that the only reason I sure kind of sided with, with you on that. Huh. I don't think banning a word, I think it's disgraceful. But here's, here's it's how, to preserve your club from being burned down, you know, you got to do something. Hey, here's think, how it could have been think, stopped way, way earlier. Why didn't you get rid of those fuckheads but when they were heckling other people? Weren't they heckling other people all night? No, no, they was not. That's what I heard from other comments. No, I was, I was there. Nobody I mean, else? I, I, I mean, the, you, you're just hearing all people, they exaggerated. I was there. The guys, they were ordering drinks at the, by the time... I and a couple of them, they were talking. I was right there. And one of the guys, and Michael looked at the people. He said, what's going on in here? And the guy said, nothing. And he, Michael kept on asking, what's going on? Why you talk? And the guy, he said, hey, my buddy think you are not funny. He said, what? He said, my buddy said, he's not, you're not funny. And at that point, the rage is came in. And, you know, comics, they are, you know, I mean, all of you guys know you're coming from insecurity. You're coming from, you need a lot of love on the stage. And that's what it is about. Yeah, and but at that time, point, it's like you make fun of the guy's shirt. You could talk about his big yeah. head. That's the thing. Like, you're saying, it's like, you should never do what he did. You no, should never do that. No, no, He's because he's so he, incompetent. That's what it really yeah, is. Now you're yeah, you know, yeah. And, dude, yeah. it's like, yeah. if you're bombing... That's what happens in comedy. People say yeah. you're not funny, and then you have to deal with it. Right. What you don't do is is what he what he did was fucking wrong. Well, I had heard from uh, he had did a set at the comedy store before he went up at the Laugh Factory, and the guys who saw him at the comedy store, my friend Brian was talking about it, saying he was like a different guy. He was like yelling and screaming and swearing. He just seemed like all amped up. You he had know? a chick with him, right? I heard yeah, he had a chick yeah, with him. Uh, that might explain why that rage came out, because there's nothing worse than bombing in front of a girl. You know why it's that fucking chick embarrassing. She's living at Poe's house. Oh. <laughs> She's being protective. Sad. She's in a cage right now. <laughs> Wouldn't it help with the Laugh Factory, though, if they wanted to cut the problem, if they just banned black patrons? There, yeah. That's an option. Uh, I, I mean, I, well, you call a white guy a nigger, they very rarely even flinch. <laughs> I, I, I don't think so. any of that would have been. <laughs> He's actually answering it. No, I don't yeah, think that would actually be the right way to do it. Buddy, that's not the way to handle it. I got a question. I Start not slow Drinking fountains in bathrooms. <laughs> <laughs> Four different restrooms. No, but, you know, the whole thing was the time this whole rage went on. Mm. And all of this, I didn't know what to do. And all I did, I mean, after 28 years of being in the business, I decided I'd give everybody's money back. And a lot of people, they start taking advantage of a lot of opportunities. Uh-huh. They were there. Yep. You know, a guy coming in, he said, I have $400 worth of drinks. I said, $400 worth? You drank them. I said, I mean, $400. I said, show me the bill. He showed me a knife. I said, okay, here's $400. He showed you a knife? Yeah. Oh, I mean, I wish boy. you were there that wait, night. Wait a minute, wait a minute. The guy yeah. pulled a knife on you? Yeah. yeah. Why didn't you call the police? Here's because my bill. Because at that time, it was going to be a riot. Yeah, right you, I mean, all of the you guys you see outside, you see them from outside. You don't see what what was going on up there. It was amazing stuff was happening. All of a sudden, a lot of people, Jesus. the opportunists, they are standing up there. They looking at everything. It just doesn't make sense for you guys. You know, sitting up here. Why don't you? At that point, if I, by the time I call the cops and that and that and that. Listen, it's yeah. pandemonium. I totally understand. I totally understand you giving people their money back, apologizing. I totally understand you banning Michael Richards. I totally understand all that. I, I just. I, don't don't understand you printing receipts on knives. No. <laughs> you <a> fucking move. <laughs> Handing out a Laugh Factory knife. Jesus. <laughs> Complimentary <laughs> Laugh Factory <laughs> switchblade. <laughs> a lot of engraving going on. Thank God. Paul Monio carried around. <laughs> oh, please, homie. I, and, uh, Put the knife away, homie. Wait. And, uh, of course, Paul Mooney get on all of that. And Jesse Jackson yeah. and all of those guys, they're all coming. Have you gone on a radio show with them? All of them, they have their hands out. Oh, you got to do something for my church. Well, this Paul guy Mooney, gotta, I think, made a great 
great point. You said the guy had a nervous breakdown. I think that's exactly what it was. He's just yeah. not a funny guy. I mean, that's the reality yeah. of it. He got all that love all those years from those sitcoms, and that's look, man. I've been in that fucking world from news radio. I've seen those people. That's they want their bagels and their smoked locks, and they're there at the table read, and everyone's clapping and laughing, and there's all this extra love, and everyone waves to them on the red carpet, and it's a bullshit world. Yeah. And you go from that bullshit world to the fucking trenches of Saturday night in front of drunks at a comedy club, dude. That's a different animal, and it's man. His, and it's his words coming out of his mouth, not yeah. Larry David's or yeah. Jerry Seinfeld's or the writers. Not only is it his words, he doesn't have that much time on stage. He's right. only been doing time. I mean, how long has he been doing comedy? He, about six months, yeah. seven months. Oh, no, no, he's been no, doing it longer, longer than that. I saw no, I've no. seen him at the comedy store several years ago. No, he's, no, no. He, he came in, but he came in. He stopped. He came in for one month, two he's months. Been he's been doing it other places. He's been yeah. doing other places. Because yeah. I saw him at the yeah. improv n yeah. at least a year ago. Yeah, so he's been he's been scattered back and forth going on stage. But the bottom line is the guy is up at the one of the biggest stages in the country as far as stand-up goes. You know, you're going there. You're going to go up after all these major national acts who are going to fucking slay. And then you're going up basically an open micer who's a superstar multimillionaire. And on top of it, he's got this fucking tremendous attitude. Mm. You know, I mean, you know, the, 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 all the, the shit that he said was just, that's insanity. I mean, you can't say that. I mean, yeah. none of it makes any sense. Yeah. I mean, you know, someone doesn't think you're funny, so you're going to hang them up by their ankles and stick a fork in their ass and look, I found a nigger. None of that I makes any sense. the funniest part was in the, in, in the middle of it where he tried to turn it around and try to play it like he was trying to teach hey, people something. Hey, they're just words. Oh, those words. We're still, it's like, no, dude, you, you fucking no. yeah. snapped. You yeah, snapped. Yeah, that was he he was in down. your mind. It's like, you Mooney yeah. hit it the best. Mooney said he had a, a, a nervous yeah. breakdown. Yeah. And is did. in a way he did. He did in a point. He did have a nervous breakdown. And then he wanted to come in to talk to the people Did outside. you let him on stage the next night? No, he told me he want to come in next night to go apologize. I said, okay, Michael, come in. And CNN, they came in with a camera. Jennifer Wolf came in with a uh, CNN. They wanted to have him on the stage to apologize. He went on the stage, and he was on the stage for five, six minutes. He didn't apologize. We gave him red light, and you know what's the red light? <laughs> people, they don't know out there. He didn't uh, apologize. What did he no. do? And he ran off the stage, and he went to Jennifer. He said, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. And Jennifer said, we wanted you to say it. On, on the camera he said no and he ran out of the door that's the end of it so he went on stage what did he talk about for six minutes <clears throat> the Japs five, about four or five minutes he just when uh, he what's the deal you know I mean, <laughs> <laughs> yeah what did he do though this no, is he, an interesting he, question you no know, but he did, went on he was nervous and I think he was doing some of the jokes but he was uh, I mean the time he goes on the stage First of all, you know that, uh, Joe, uh, because you've been into it because you were a star and uh, you're a star. The time you go on the stage, people, they go crazy because of you go on the stage. And he went on the stage for five minutes, three minutes, people, they went crazy to see him. And, uh, they went crazy all, to see him. Did they know about the, the night video before? Wasn't out yet. No, no, wasn't out no, yet. Yeah, wasn't some out. of them, they do. Some of them, they Did do. anybody boo him? Uh, not really. Not really. They were waiting for him to apologize. You know, and then all of a sudden he got off the stage. He ran off the oh, stage. Oh man, he blew it. You know, it was. He should have checked into rehab. I would have said I was on yeah, a fucking that's the best way to go. A pound of coke. DMT. Hey, don't you think? Remember that night? DMT. I'm pissing blood. You put Velcro DMT. on the ceiling. This is the last thing you say. <laughs> yeah. You you wet their lips and stick them to the wall. Yeah. <laughs> Nothing, people. <laughs> you, uh, three, if you slice them thin enough. <laughs> don't Gary? you think banning words though starts sets a real bad precedent for club no, owners? No, I, I, I don't. You know, is is not a, You know, it's just like a pro, pro. Uh, you know, I mean, again, all of you guys know. And you're in a really, Joe, you know, you're in a tough to, uh, position though, because the other. Yeah. All the races are going to come out and say, "Well, you got to ban spick, and you got to ban this word, you got to ban that." Gook, think, faggot. Yeah, you know, what about I, hacks? How about uh, ban hacks first? Ban hacks. Or do you let, yeah, no, what, what it really is. Or do you let is, the word appear eventually on that stage say, again? You can't say that shit in anger. Like, right. yeah, no, just I, deliberately trying to piss. But there's, there's I get the way around shit. that is if someone does that, you don't right. book him again. That's yeah. all. No, but, yeah, but, no, but it's no, not but, like people are thinking, right. he's dealing with the fucking media circus. Like, he's yeah. he's got to do something. Yeah. He's don't also got to deal with the fact that uh, t 20 Asians aren't going to come to his place if someone says chink and uh, stab him with chopsticks. Well, they, uh, they got the Chinese stars In certain on, situations in the area you're in, there is an element that might be a little angry and riled to the point where they might do some what about, physical damage. No, Jamie, the, what, what about Black Knight? You do a Black Knight. Yeah, well, there, right? we do. We do a chocolate so how Sunday. How are you going to do that? I mean, chocolate, we, it's chocolate Sunday. Sunday. You doing chocolate Sunday? They're not allowed to say the N word. Yes. And what? No. Oh, oh, never gonna oh, work. Wait, 
that's you. hilarious. No fucking you I are, bet the first guy so gets done. up there. Oh, no, 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 no. I mean, no. even Paul home Mooney home came home in home. on Wednesday night. <laughs> Paul, Paul Mooney came <laughs> last week. He Zach did not three minutes long. <laughs> no, he did not use one word. How about that Elizabeth Taylor? Oh, please, homie. That Negro is crazy. Why did the cameras leave? Oh, homie, I'm ready for my question, America, please. But I just got to finish what I'm going to You know, one thing I'm going to say is it was like, a, you know, pro uh, sports. They say you got to be nice to fan if you are going to be a little bit crazy. I don't fan, think those gotta, guys were his fans. Well, you know, yeah. the people, they come in in the club, they are uh, comedy fans. Um, comedy fans. Yeah, yeah. not Michael Richards uh, fans. No, I'm, uh, I want to say, I mean, uh, every other uh, people, they come in in the club, they shouldn't use the word because of, we say, if you do it, we take some of your money from your paycheck, we give it to charity. That's what we're going to try to do. And that's right now calming people down. You've got to do something. You can't just, you know, say, no, we are not going to do much? it. You yeah, how wait much? Wait a minute, you get like 50 oh, bucks a set or something. What do you get a set at the left hand? Yeah, like 75. Not that I'd like another. How much the fucking comedy store? They rip you off those cocksuckers. I never got a check from anybody in LA. No? I never got paid in LA. I, I don't get paid at the. You never store. got paid from Laugh Factory. No, from no one. No one's ever paid me in LA. Oh, you better go in cashier booths. Always your check is there. Buddy, oh. it's ready uh, so for somebody, you. Somebody, let's say someone gets on stage. Buddy, Unless uh, one of the black you. people steal. <laughs> no, no, no. But someone gets on stage. Someone hang them in in yes, a very comedic context. Yes. They use the word nigger. And it's going to happen. How much is it going to cost? One of the boys uh, are going to do gonna, that. Uh, first, he's going to take, take their paycheck, go to a charity. Their whole uh, paycheck. A whole so paycheck. It would how much money is that? Uh, $75. $75. Uh, $75. So $75. Bucks yes. If you That's blurt that word it. out. If it's worth yeah. it if you get a good laugh. And wow. what, what if you say it twice? Does that affect your next set? Yeah. And then you go then you're going to be, for three months, you won't be able to come <laughs> wow. back to the lab factory. That's, That's crazy. What's That's what you're say. So first time you find them, then the second time they're you know three what, months though? off? Yeah. And then then, hold on. Using, but it's so worth it. There's a comedian out there that's going to do it just for the yeah. exposure. Yeah, what about going to be the guy yeah. that breaks the band and he's going to be all over CNN? Have you uh, ever done something similar to this with guys who steal material? <laughs> well, I've done that ah, many times. Yeah, you know yes. that. Does the Mencia yeah. perform at your club all the time? Not true. Uh, hello? Hello? Don't even go there. Doesn't you know he? that. Yeah. Doesn't he? he no. 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 Thank you. you. Stop, they were, you stopped were, him? Were, no. It, from first day, come on. What? You know better than that. Come on. Yes. The yes. Mencia you know better than that. You work in the party, so with you. Oh, dude, you know, come on, man. You know, He's I mean, there. He goes there. Yeah, but, you know, not, not in, you know, most <laughs> of the people, they do anything like that. It's what about just, Dane? What about Dane? Dane Cook. Yes. What about him stealing people's material? Dane, he does not steal any. <laughs> what are you talking I, about? What, what are you talking about? That's hilarious. Go on the internet. What Go on the internet and we'll watch all the videos, listen to all the people talk about it. See, you ever see the Louis C.K. clips? Yeah. When Louis C.K. was working out his material for uh, his HBO uh, special and Dane did three of his bits on a CD? Blatantly, I again, again. Uh, who took from who? No, 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 no. Dane takes from everybody. Uh, no, I stop. Mean, Louis no, C.K. No. doesn't steal from anybody. No, I've never I, heard Louis. No, I Louis C.K. is a great comedian. I, I've never I, heard I, any. I love Louis not one C. person C. ever say that he steals from anybody. I, 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 Every I, comic that I know says Dane Cook steals. No, Dane Cook. I have not seen buddy, something. Just because he's your number one guy, buddy, does not mean he doesn't steal. Joe, 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 I tell you something, Dan, Dan Cook, he's a most hardworking guy. Yes, very hardworking, very ambitious. Everybody, and let me tell you, everybody jealous of him. They're trying to yes, undercut him. True. Oh, he's this, he's this. Very okay, true. what else you can come in? Because he have number one record, he have one number yes. one everything. But, but, but what? They've everybody always said jealous. he was a thief way before that. No, no, nope. they yes, didn't. They did. As soon as... Yes, they did. Bro. As they soon did. as he made no. it, everybody no, jumped. No, 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 no. On, way, way it. before. That's not uh, true. I, I never heard of it. No. Uh, as soon Jim? as he made it. Have you ever heard this? I have heard it. Well, the problem was when, it, when, the, when the clip showed up online, it got to be ugly because between Louis and Dan, and the clips were there, and it was like, oof. It's obvious. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Not with the internet. But it's not it's just really, him. Really, really it's yeah. Jim Brewer. He's stolen from me. He's stolen from a million different comics Maybe in L.A. Like that cutting at times. Like, like you said, Chappelle. I mean, when comics make it, a lot of times comics aren't jealous. No comics were ever jealous or bad about Dave Attell yeah. or Louis no. Black. There's a lot of guys that or make CK, it. Or CK or, or, or Chappelle. I mean, Chappelle's oh, enormous. Oh. Chappelle's a good example because he's yeah. so Nobody, nobody, yeah, nobody. Nobody says he steals, ever. Everyone yeah. says Dane steals. Yeah, but uh, let me explain something. You're not telling the truth. I'm telling the truth. No, you're I not. Know. Yes. Bro, but it's not no. true. It's no. not tr It's not a truth. I'm not saying you're a liar, but I'm saying you you might not be aware of it. It's definitely I not might true. Not, I mean, the only thing I'm saying, as soon as 
I see his record, his his CD came number one, and he went on the chart. He became after Steve Martin. He was the first person going up the chart. Nobody ever done and it, and everybody got jealous. Everybody started calling. Well, yeah, well, 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 but that doesn't mean anything. You're, you're still you're avoiding the. No, the I'm point. not avoiding yes, something. He did. He did do a, a tremendous thing, and he was very successful. But the fact remains, he stole material. No, I. On that CD, he took stuff from Louis C.K.'s HBO special from years before. That's a fact. But uh, yeah, show it to me. Show it okay. to well, me. Yeah, yeah, I mean, I mean, I, I, I mean, you know, I, hey, when you say, come on, Jamie. Hey, you're a great diplomat, by the hey, way. Hey, Joe, where is it online? You are. I'm not. No, I'm not. Uh, you yeah. can find it online. I mean, anyone can I search it. I think you go to redband.com. I think he's got it up. I think, uh, the, you know, there's a whole uh, a Radar Magazine is oh, printing it. They're doing an article right now about him stealing. There's like a bunch of, uh, they're, they're, he's been accused of it on CNN, had a whole thing about comics saying that he steals. I mean, it's all over the place. Where there's smoke, there's fire. I've never met a single comic ever that People say steals that doesn't steal. Have you? Have mm-hmm. you? Bill, have you ever met a guy that everybody says is a thief, and you see the guy and goes, no, this guy's completely original. I've never well, heard one. The only one. thing I, I remember was, was guys, uh, I'm not going to say names, but just one guy who made it, and it's just everybody where I was at was saying, this guy took from me, this guy took from me, this guy took from me, and I was looking at their acts, and I was... It was. I didn't see it. Who, well, who is this? This doesn't make sense unless you give us context. Uh, yeah, if you, if you didn't think he was a thief, you could say it. You're not yeah, thinking. Leary. Like everyone's saying, Leary took Oh, this, Leary took dude, that, the and, Hick and stuff? The Hick stuff is pretty I don't know uh, anything about it. I'm just saying that they Well, were you guys, never listened to the Hick stuff, they, they, they then. They were guys... I saw Leary steal over and over again back in Boston. Early in the 80s, in the late 80s, rather, the early 90s. I saw it. I saw it with my own eyes over and over and over again. Well, I, I saw him do I saw Ray Romano's who, material. I saw, guys, saw him do Tony V's material. I saw with my own eyes in clubs. I saw him do Bill Hick's material verbatim. Then I saw Bill Hicks do the same material a month later, and I was baffled. I was an open micer. And I said, what the fuck is going on? I what I saw was guys confused. who stunk in their acts nobody would steal from were walking around saying it. Okay, that's... I'm sure like, there's the a lot of that. Of course there's so delusional I never people. Saw. That's delusional, of course, yes. Of course there's that, but the fact remains that guy's a thief. That's a fact. Uh, is, uh, yeah, uh, I mean, Joe, I said, I never Larry, saw it. for sure, I've seen it over and over again. I saw it with my own eyes. I mean, he doesn't anymore, but if you look at the difference between, you look at his, his first No Cure for Cancer, then look at Locked and Loaded, pre- and post-Hicks being dead, dude, there's a monstrous difference in the level of the material. The material post-Hicks being dead is fucking horrible. The stuff that he did before, when No Cure for Cancer is some brilliant shit. Yeah, the, it's a completely different thing, because he was taking the ideas from someone else. That yeah, is a fact. Yeah, but uh, Joe, uh, I, if I can say something here, you, you're very fast to jump in a co- in conclusion of somebody. Do you somebody know why? Do you well, know why? Explain, because, uh, you know, I've been the victim of it. No, let I've me seen explain. it happen yeah. over and over again, and because I work very hard on my material, and I write a a lot, and I sit in front of my fucking computer for hours on end, and then I go to the comedy store, and I have little pieces of paper, and I go over it in my head, how's which bitch am I going to do, I'm going to go into that, and then I go into that, and I work on this shit over and over and over again for months, and then some fucking douchebag goes up, he sees me kill with some bit, and then he reworks it, and then he goes on stage, and you know what, club owners don't do shit about it, and then they get on here on a radio show, and they say, no one steals, he doesn't steal, he doesn't steal, what and it's not true, no. you haven't looked into it at all, and you're defending someone who is widely known throughout the country. Country of being a thief through the fucking comedy community. You talk to club owners, you talk to people in HBL, you talk to people everywhere that I talk to people, they know he steals. Okay, let me explain something. It doesn't mean you telling me you, you thought of a material. Doesn't mean somebody else, if you thought of building a helicopter, yeah, and right. doesn't mean another person, another That's place, does do that not be able to. There is to a thing see. called parallel, parallel thinking. thinking, yes. yes. Yeah, but it's, uh, and then I've you, had that you happen can, to me. Yeah, but you sure, cannot. I've had that happen too. I had that happen recently. We were just talking about it. A buddy of mine in LA said, dude, I got this bit. It's like your bit. I go, don't even worry about it. You know, I know you're not a thief. You know, if you know a guy's not a thief, it's like you don't even have the conversation. You know, if you've got a, a comic that you know you respect, like, dude, it's a fucking common, it's something happened in the news and you thought about something and I thought about something and they're similar. But I it's think sometimes if people are already jealous of a guy's success and then that parallel thinking happens, it just becomes, once you get to a certain level, it immediately becomes, he's a thief. He's a thief. Without a doubt. There are definitely Thank crabs you. in a bucket. Thank however, you. with the Dane Cook thing, they were, ta- they were calling him a CD. thief. They were calling him a thief for years. Years ago, they were calling him a thief. I was, uh, I had a problem with him way back when. He was doing one of my bits on Premium Blend. He did my bit about tigers fucking on the Discovery Channel. He changed it to rhinos. I called him up. He told me his own fucking agent told him to stop doing the bit and he was going to stop doing it. Then I came to the Laugh Factory and he's doing one of my other bits on stage. I confronted him and that was the last time I worked at the Laugh Factory. I don't work there anymore because I didn't want to go up in front of him and see him doing my shit and, and, and have him go up and do it. But I never thought Dane was going to make it. I, like a lot of people, thought that Dane was like a medium.
mediocre comic. I mean, he's a fantastic uh, self salesman, a, a great marketer, a genius strategist as far as like marketing himself and promoting himself. I mean, you got to give the guy massive amounts of credit for that tireless worker in that regard. But I never thought he was very funny, so I didn't I didn't worry about the repercussions of him stealing material. I heard it from everybody over and over again. Comics were saying that he's stealing their shit. He's telling them to stop doing bits that they've been doing for years because that's their bit. They're gonna he's gonna sue them. I mean, I heard it from everybody. You've heard it. We, we've all heard it. It's like it's not uh, because the yeah. guy got famous. That's bullshit. He was getting this this reputation long before. For sure, there's crabs in a bucket, and for sure, there's when people get famous, people try to drag them down. But that's not what's going on here. Yeah, but again, you gotta look at it of the way I look at it. Yeah, you look at it as a club no, owner, and he no. puts asses in your no, seat. No, that's no, how you're looking that's at not, it. That's not. That's he's not. He's not, that's not the reason. Come on, uh, what's been, the reason? He been, he been working there twelve years, right? And a lot of people they came to me. The same time he came with a joke, another person came out with a joke. The joke you're talking about, Discovery and uh, Tigers and all of that. Everybody can do that joke. And you saying to me, well, somebody see that sh joke. It cannot be done. Another person. I got a call from Jim Brewer. Jim Brewer was working with Dane Cook in Canada. And Jim Brewer called me up and he goes, dude, bro, dude, fucking Dane Cook's doing your material. Oh, verbatim. In Kent, seven, yeah. eight years ago. It was a long time ago. And well, then I heard he did it on Premium Blend, and that's when I called him up. And I, Dan and I used to be friends. I was friends with that guy. He used to open up for me back in Boston when he was with Al and the Monkeys. He was a, a sketch group. And, you know, I, I've known him for a long time. He's always had that reputation. He's well, always had On that I, CD, there's three bits from this Louis C.K. HBO special. That are yeah, nearly word for word. He'll change I'm, one word and it's almost and, exactly Dude, I'm a same. huge comedy fan and I love it when people make it and I, I love being inspired. I love watching good comedy and I'm not one that believes that if someone becomes successful, that means that other people aren't successful. I think that it, there's enough success out there for everybody and I want everybody to be huge. I mean, I want everybody to, who's, who's a great comic to get out there and have a bunch of people enjoy their work. But that's not what's going on here. Well, to me, again, maybe some of a lot of stuff, I'm not saying you, a lot of comics that I spoke to I see they're coming from jealousy. You they're think Louis C.K. is coming from jealousy? I don't know. Louis C.K., for example, one of the jokes that he particularly talks about, I seen it. Dane Cook was working on the stage much before Louis C.K. How long? How long? I don't know, about maybe eight, nine, uh, nine months before Louis Yeah, he, Louis had those jokes for about six years. Okay, six years. But and Dane's seen those jokes. But you don't know if Dane's seen it or he saw it on the, t on the TV course, or some, course something course came in. Or you saying, oh, he, he went and he took the... He saw him. Louis was in the audience, and oh, Louis was on stage, and Dane was in the audience. Louis talked to Dane after he did sets. He, he talks about it. About a Dane saw him do the material. Uh, again, again, we all make an acquisition without, you know. I no, mean, no, no, all no, 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 we're not. We're not making acquisitions. No, let's, let's have Louis and uh, Dane start talking to each other say, this has happened. you saying stuff. Well, well, I mean, why, I, why are you defending him? Why are you the, openly because, defending because him? Because I'm openly defending him because of, I think, a lot of, I mean, a lot of people, they went, they came to the club. I'm the only club. If I see. You're proof, the only club? I'm the only club. The only any club, other, what do you mean? The only club are ban people. If uh, Carlos Mancio, any of that stuff, Paul Mooney came in, said Carlos Mancio did uh, his jokes. I was in Laugh Factory. I said, Carlos, you cannot do that anymore. But he you still can't. performs at your club. No, he doesn't. He doesn't ever perform at your club. Except, uh, no, no, only one time he came. Come on, he wasn't there recently? No, he came one time with a showcase for the, uh, what they call it, uh, for, uh, uh, what was Okay, that? well, I'm being lied to then because someone told me they saw him here very recently and they've seen him at your club a couple times. Well, I mean, if they've seen him, I don't know, but personally. So it's I, when you're not there that he No, performs. I mean, I'm there all the time, but if Okay, so you're admitting that Carlos steals. You know Carlos steals? I don't know Carlos, again, <laughs> Carlos, but let me explain. No, no, I admit it. I admit it, Carlos, let me explain it to you with Call us. Call us. I admit Let's it. Call him by a slave name. Okay. Okay. <laughs> call him Ned. Ned or whatever. Whatever. Is is the whole thing is I'm just t trying to say I saw Carlos and George Lopez. They were upstairs. They were, you know, almost killing each other. Yeah, was that was actually in the lobby when George Lopez grabbed him by the neck and threw him. No, it wasn't in the wall. lobby. It was upstairs in you my sure? club. It was upset. I thought it was in the front, bro. No, 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 no. I mean, might have happened more than once. Yeah, I mean, well, again, again, you get. I mean, I saw it. 
I saw right. it. Uh, I, you know, I tried. What to... happened with Lopez and Carlos? I don't get all the Lopez. Skinny. This Carlos stole all Lopez's shit and did it on his HBO special. Lopez Carlos is so more subtle about his stealing now, but in the early days, it was fucking horrible. It was just blatant, verbatim, just just giant chunks of material. He's not a creative guy. I mean, if you talk to the guy, he's not very intelligent. Doesn't have an unusual point of view, and he just steals. He's oh, so him and Lopez had a beef. Yeah. In, in the he's club. had a beef with yeah. everybody, bro. Mooney, yeah, Lopez. Mean, you know, I mean, I've seen. I mean, I've seen a lot of people. They get in a fight and everything and the time they came in to me they told me about it and I'll find out if they did it then I try to react on it and do whatever I can mm -hmm. and to come in to tell me oh as soon as somebody make it and everybody jealous and trying to put him down I I I, I I'm a you can't I'll say, I'll say that, something about though. Louis though Louis did not push I will say this because I yeah. know Louis well yeah. he didn't push Louis that Louis, well Louis didn't push that issue he actually uh, we were talking about it one time on the set and he's like nah man I don't want to get into it and, and and talk about it publicly just because then it seems like you're bashing the guy who's getting famous so Louis actually yeah. tried to be very low key about that whole thing he I tried to be big purpose. about it I, like, yeah, I, yeah, I had a conversation I, with him about it and I said dude you're not going to come off bitter if you're just honest about it you don't have to you know just it's, you don't have to like let, let a guy get away with something like that you can talk about it and not come off bitter it is possible yeah, but again, okay, everything, all right, he stole this, he stole that, but everything he's made so far, he made his movie, became number one, that's this all, came that's number all, one, that's these are all, all he stole. That doesn't mean anything. Time. No, bro, we're not talking about the fucking movies, man, we're talking about comedy. But yeah, we're talking about comedy that's a big deal? and everything, everything. You're, you're making it like it's not a big deal. A lot of times people don't know, always do, stole I, until they see these CDs that become number one on, on, on the charts. Once they see it, once it's out there, they're like, oh, that's the real cool, that The real cool. thing about Dane is Dane would have made it without stealing. They, Dane made it because he's brutally ambitious and he's a no, very he's smart a guy. He's a talented, too. He's a very talented performer. Yeah, yeah, I, mean, thank I, you. I, I believe all that. Yeah, I, but you're not. Leaving, okay. All right, I'm, ba I'm back. I'm sorry. Louis C.K., uh, Dane Cook. <laughs> okay. Got some audio. Because you okay. haven't heard this yet, right? Let's see it. Yeah, please. All right, let's see if you have a comment. <laughs> so this is Louis C.K., obviously. Listen closely. One time I saw a guy in a bicycle, and he was about to get hit with a car door. It was horrible. And he wasn't looking, and the lady opening the door wasn't looking. It was just, like, just for me. And I didn't know what to do. I was like, ah! Like, I, I wanted to yell something, but what do you yell? And I'm trying to, like, a time slows down. I'm trying to choose the thing to yell that will have all the information that he needs. Because it was happening really fast. I had, like, that much time to yell, you know, what can I yell in that much time? This, hey, you got to buy Oh, no, you know, that's not... <laughs> She's going to open the door again! Shit! <laughs> I, I just yelled out, bad thing! <laughs> <laughs> Wasn't really specific enough. <laughs> oh well. So there you have it, Louis C.K. Now, the, what's that from? You know, offhand, Joe? Oh, it's I don't know. It's 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 one of those HBO specials, or is it a CD? This goes back a while. A I've seen. I saw Louis do that years ago. I actually don't know. It's like from. two thousand. It's like from two thousand. Two thousand one. They're saying. All right. All right. And now here's Dane Cook. Three weeks ago, one of my dreams came true. I finally got to see something I've always wanted to witness live. I finally saw someone get hit by a car. I did try to help this man. As the car was coming towards him, I reached out and I said, oh, oh, that's all I could think of to say. There's so many things now in retrospect that I would love, I'd love to have been like, you're about to get struck by a vehicle. I did not have time to say you're about to get struck by a vehicle. So I went with, oh, which is like a concerned moan. That's from 2005. Okay. Can I comment on that? Yeah, yeah, of yeah, course. Absolutely. We're playing it for you. Okay, okay. That particular thing, I know Dane Cook. He came to me. He said he saw an accident really happen. Now, you guys coming up say because of, you know, it, it was rec recorded so much. If he, something happened to somebody. But dude, he saw that bit. That's the same bit. No, he it, it saw this accident happen. That's that's all well and good. You see an accident doesn't mean you're allowed to take someone's bit to describe the accident. And that's what he did. He described it exactly the same way he saw Louis C.K. describe it. That's a stolen bit. Well, I um, to me, the time he described the accident happened to him. That doesn't mean anything. That, that does mean to something because no, if something happened to you, Joe Rogan, if somebody punched you in the face or something, and you're going to talk Are about you it, you can't me? say you can't say no. I, no, no, no. Are you and you falling can't, apart here, Jamie. No, no. I mean, I'm saying somebody. somebody Jamie, you're something. falling apart no, here. No, no. That, that's a stolen bit. No, that's it's not. Can, I, can we get a consensus that, here? Who, how many people believe that was a stolen bit? 
It's very close. Man. Yeah, it's pretty yeah, close. Yeah, if everyone in the in the peanut gallery just raised their hands, everyone out there, Here's Bill the, Burns so had a stolen bit. See, if you have something happen Dude, to you, I see I, people on stage and they'll do a bit. I'm like, oh my god, the same stuff happened exactly to me. You know, Dude, I, I, I had a bit one time, and I swear to God, another guy came out. He had a bit, and it was like fucking the setup That's that possible. we had were like word. For fucking word, and I got all paranoid. And I started inventing this conspiracy. Like this guy's on a TV show. He had writers, and they they were in this Chinese restaurant that I was performing in out in fucking Worcester, and they saw it. And then I just <laughs> after a while, I just realized that like that is possible. Like parallel thinking. We we were yeah, discussing that. And, uh, but this is not a case Greg of Girolo parallel had, thinking. Had a bit about again. Uh, we're George. talking about six years before, and during those years, and before that, he was doing the bit. Before he recorded it in 2001, he was doing that bit before, and he's been doing it, and then. Dane comes along and puts it on a CD in 2005. You don't think he saw that? This, Joe, you, know, Joe. You, know, you know what the thing is? The, the pro people definitely steal. They definitely swipe shit. They definitely switch shit up. But actually fucking proving it is what sucks. Yeah. Oh, sure. Yeah. Because, Absolutely. Because thank people you. rewrite things. They or being steal a paranoid. Being a paranoid, Jamie, Joy. there's nothing paranoid so about that. It is that. paranoid. That is Jamie, paranoid. there's nothing paranoid about what you just heard. I, no, because I heard the other part of the story. You don't want to face the, the, the other, other part, part, part of the story. Doesn't mean the anything. guy, he was, he was almost in an accident. You don't want to hear that. You want to hear what, what okay, happened. Okay, let's look at it this way. Uh, oh. You know Chris Rock's joke? about uh, tossing your salad you know that joke he does about uh, watching that prison yeah. show now what if I watch the same prison show and I go on stage and do a joke very similar about tossing your salad even though I know Chris Rock had done that show that joke for five fucking years about tossing your salad that would be stealing material Jamie that's uh, what that is okay, let me even though that. I okay. saw the show okay. Okay. even though I saw the same show he saw it's still stealing material when you know another guy did the exact same fucking yeah, that's thing that okay, okay. who got there first okay. right. no, no. Oh, now, I understand. I understand. It's the same setup. I listen, listen, that could have been parallel thinking. Let's uh, go to another. Can I make it? Can I make one no, comment? No, 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 what do you think? No, that's way too close. Well, let's it's stealing, right? Yeah. You think yeah. it's stealing? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Thank okay. okay. you, okay. Anthony. We what do you think, Joe? We have a yeah, that's too close. We have a soft spot for this because in radio, the same shit happens to you guys all the time. Okay. Can I say something? One example. Let's see what happens. Okay. Now, well, here's another like, example. You have to say it too. Like, I never jumped on the Dana stealing bandwagon. Only because I know a lot of people attack somebody when a guy's getting. You have to see how many instances it happens in. Like, if you hear one bit and you go, like, it was one, one bit. bit absolutely. There is something thinking. that can be if very you have close an open on mind, one bit. All right, fine. Parallel. Let's try another one. Okay. Let's try another okay. one. Okay. You don't okay. okay. want to here's listen to me. Louis C.K. Well, you'll have your say. Okay, thank you. Here's another example. Louis C.K. first. My wife and I were thinking of having a baby and. I like to have a kid because you can name your kid anything you want. I like that part. I like to give my kid an interesting name, you know, like a name with no vowels, maybe, you know, just like just like forty Fs. That's his name. Go clean your room, you know, something like that. <laughs> All right, so that's Louis C.K. Yeah, from 2001. Special. Louis About, is a fucking yeah. an original guy, man. Louis yeah. is a very, very out original. there original yeah. guy. Yeah, weird. All right, here's Dane Cook. Very weird. I think about having kids. I'd love to have some kids. I've been thinking about kids. I want to have, like, 19 kids. I think naming them, that's going to be fun. Whatever the names that you come up with, that's exciting right there. You get to both decide, hey, do you want to name that? No, I don't like that name. Right? It's like a little game. You try to come up. I already have names picked out. I don't even know. First kid, boy, girl, I don't care. The first one that comes out, I'm naming it. I think it's beautiful. It's feminine but strong at the same time. Time for bed. I said time for bed. No cookies. Oh boy. Well, uh, what do you have to say about that? Uh, that's, <laughs> right, that's what I'll say. Yeah. This, what, this, this is what I'll say now. One can happen. I don't know. This is, you know. <laughs> Where like, there's like smoke, so awkward. there's fire. Yeah, Look, I, I used to like good. the guy too until he stole from me. It's not. It's not an uncommon discussion amongst comedians. That's almost word okay, for word, Jamie. Okay, what do you got to say? Okay, let me explain something, you guys. We wouldn't be surprised if you just start yelling "nigger" a lot. Stop. Stop. Stop like even going there. 75 hey, bucks, Opie. Hey, hey, 75 hey, bucks. Why are you going there? Why are you going there? Oh, buddy, not that oh, word. Okay. Buddy. Okay. okay, let me let Yeah, me we'll say. see. Uh, we're okay. going to watch okay. it. Let me tell you. Let's let Jamie. Learn that Jamie, word. That was Jamie's, a lot cheaper back in the 1800s. <laughs> okay. Jamie, okay. Jamie, 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 J
is one thing about Dane Cook. He goes up there. He talks. He's not like a comedian that go write the material. And he talk, like accent happen. Like the time he goes on the stage, there's somebody who is talking to him about kids and something like that. And he just blobs whatever comes to his mind. Maybe the thought of the same thought was going on. He doesn't write the material. He goes up there. He make, make up the material right on the spot. And he's not like, he's commenting what's happened to him. And again, this one, I would say he went on the stage and something happened to the kids or something. He come. One time, I got to tell you one thing so you uh, clarify something. Let me explain something. Oh, you're in denial, Okay, bro. no, 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 no I'm deep. not in denial. This, this is me. a little deep Jamie. denial. Okay, Jamie. okay. Jamie. Can, I, can, I, can I finish First of all, it? Jamie. Can I finish it? You're, 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 it's not true because okay. he says that joke all the time. Okay. It's not like someone yelled at him. What about kids, Dane? And then okay. he just said, okay. uh, I want to name a kid with a lot of letters together. Even though I've never heard anybody do that before. Okay. And I will okay. say, even though the bits are very similar, I, I did kind of enjoy Dane's bit, too. Did you enjoy it? <laughs> Fuck you. Uh, one time, one time a, a guy... <laughs> 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 one time, well, i got to tell you something. One time, Los Angeles Times was doing an article about uh, Robin Williams Robin William being taken material from other people. Yeah. True. And I... They call me, everybody, they talk to everybody in the industry, everybody. They say, yeah, Robin doing that. Robin did that on Tonight Show. Robin did that on from me here. Robin did that, that. But for Robin, my only thing is seeing him to what he's doing on the stage and how long he's been doing it. Robin is a type of person, he's addictive to laughter. And that's what I said. We'll call attention whores. I don't know if it's a. It just doesn't like a, a drug addict. Is a, uh, he need a fix? The time he's on the right. stage, he need a laugh. Right. And, and that's as know, opposed and Robin, to what? As opposed to every other fucking so, comedian. As yeah. opposed to what alternative comedy? Yeah, that's, that's not Jamie. Jamie, Jamie. <laughs> Dude, that, if, if you're defending, that's one of the shittiest. Uh, no, no, I'm if, not if saying. You're defending it because he's addicted he loved, to love, no, love, no, love. I'm saying he took it. He took it. He took it, and he took it. Robin Robin Williams is a joke thief. Absolutely, yeah. Okay, so we have Robin, but Dane no. Still Dane no? It's still Dane no. Let's hear the third one. Hold on, hold on. Treat, treat yourself treat to yourself my material. To number three. Okay, <laughs> let's see. <laughs> treat yourself. Wait, Aaron, what was your thought? Buddy. These are two. Wait, we got to get him to do it now, right? All right, let's third. hear it. Hold on a second. Hold yes, on. Right, we got Aaron, we Jimmy, got... can you do me a favor and just say treat yourself? Treat yourself. Uh, well, treat what did I say? What did I do? Nothing. Uh, you're still Why are you there. picking on me now? Well, right? yeah, you are. sound like you really know. Buddy, listen. You just sound more, like someone we know. One more bit, buddy. Someone that I... Whatever. All right, here's oh, the third Somebody example. Somebody took your right? material? Here's another one. <laughs> no, I jumped on his cake one day. Uh-oh. After he said, treat yourself. Uh-oh. All right, here's the third example. First, Louis C.K., the bit is called Itchy Ass. And I had an itchy asshole for like a week. And I could have won a million dollars. I still would have been going, fuck my asshole! It itches! <laughs> I wanted to like eat bad food so I would like fart to scratch it. Oh, that's a damn funny bit. Oh, that's hilarious. Yeah. Yeah. We're, we're going to do that one on the radio Monday when we have an, a different audience. And uh, here's uh, oh, Dane Cook a few years later. The other day, I don't know if you've ever gotten this, about, uh, it was about 2.30 in the afternoon. I got the itchiest asshole I've ever gotten on record. Oh, it's the worst, isn't it? Oh, you just, you feel, usually you're at work or someplace that you can't focus on it. You got to do some other activities, right? And the entire day, you just kind of bounce around and try to, try to shake it out, right? <laughs> oh, man. Just rewriting material, man. Here's the deal. Here's the question, Jamie. These are three bits from a Louis C.K. HBO special that all three bits appeared on Dane Cook's CD four years later. Okay. Now, that's you telling me... Well, okay. you, wait a minute. Do you think it's even possible that he stole... Wait, 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 wait. Is it possible? Uh, let, let, I mean, let me finish what I'm okay, saying. Okay, but just answer that question first. Is it possible... I don't know. I don't, uh, you know, I, I personally, I don't think he's that type of person. He's not that type of person, buddy. He's not a, buddy, a person. He buddy, 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 he's he not is. a thief. Okay. Hey. Well, hey. I mean, you said Lucy CK, he get a uh, itchy asshole, and but Dana, he would never have an itchy asshole. Maybe he never. <laughs> <laughs> 
That's what we're saying. That's exactly what we're saying. He got us right. I was going to say it. I was gonna buddy, say it. itchy asshole happened to everyone. I have itchy asshole right now. Right now. I'm talking to you. My, my ass, ass is itching. Kill so, me. So I can't say anything. My yeah. ass is itching. It's, because it's, I, I want to yell nigger. Hey, hey, hey. That's not That's I, not enough of that word. I got to say one bucks. thing, man. He, Jamie is punching in his way out of the corner. You got to give him some oh, credit. Yeah, he really is. Fucking swinging blind, bro. Oh, yeah. He had... <laughs> you know, no, it's like one of those old school fights where it's like 98 rounds. <laughs> right. You are 100% knuckle. right that people will always be jealous of successful comedians and they always wish that upon themselves. But you're 100% wrong that that happens with every comedian. That's not the case with Chris Rock. It's not the case with Dave Chappelle. It's not the case with David Tell. There's a lot of very, very successful, very funny, very famous comedians that no one ever says a word about them stealing material. See, and like Dice, smoke, Dice and Kinnison both were accused after they became huger than huger. Thank you. Kinnison oh, thank you. Stuff. Thank never you. Kinnison being Th accused. No? No, Kinnison well, accused yeah, Dice. Really Kinnison accused Dice of one bit. There was a, yeah. a bit that, uh, you know, Kinnison used to do a bit about gays. I don't know. How does one guy look at another guy's hairy ass and find love? How does that happen? Yeah. And then Dice did a bit. How does one guy, you know, see another guy's hairy ass? And it was a very similar thing. Right. They'd work together. Who knows? But it was really like one was bit. one. I, know, no, I, was, I was in a club the time they start fighting. They start punching each other in the face. Yeah, and I try, I try to separate yeah. them because of, mm. you know, again, people that come <laughs> close to <laughs> each other. You know, it just, uh -huh. you know, really you cannot, you know, I mean, if you know a person, <laughs> if I, you know, I mean, if I know Dane, as long as I know him 12 years or 13 years, he is not that type of person stealing. So maybe is they're close. But why he's so not that type of does? Why, have, why have so many people say he does for like 10 years? Why is that? I have no idea because of you. Maybe the people they don't know him. Jamie, do I know three him. bits Jamie. from the same guy from the same HR right, special. Listen, we're not going to solve this okay. year. Yeah, we are not. No, we no. do have a plan to catch at one thirty. I like uh, it though. Jamie Masada has a uh, quote. Uh, another yeah. version of the Laugh Factory here in New York, right? It's on, yes, sir. It's yes, on Forty Second Street. It's actually got a really cool vibe. It's over Show World, which is a really. It's, it's like a lot of the same uh, uh, interior was kept, like the fucking lights, and it's really a cool place to go, man. Uh, I got a cringe. Whites only, only though. Whites only. Absolutely. Whites only. That's right. That. Who's at the Laugh Factory in New York here? Why are you guys? Are you brought me in here, roast me, or you're trying no, to I'm pick on me? No, what did I do wrong to you guys? Jamie, what, I'm, 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 I was under a misconception, like like That's what I, I mean. Heard, I'm, but. Jamie. I really, I love comics. I love everybody. I love Joe. All I right, love Jamie, everybody I love in here. You, you know, <laughs> I mean, you got to understand the Opie and Anthony show. You, you say, I love you guys too. You I listen to you guys all the time. You do Yeah, I do. I do. My buddy from my buddy Tony Vodetta called me. The show, Jamie. Like when you listen to this show, what's your favorite bit? Yeah. The time that all of you guys, comedian, they're on it. I love that Very show. Very generic. Oh, yeah. Wow. Very Very generic. generic. Right. Name really one thing we've done. Said what? Name one, one, one bit one we've signature done. Signature bit. One signature bit. I mean, the, uh, for example, the stuff you do all of the time you do. <laughs> oh my uh, God. No, no, no. Wait, wait, wait. The time you were in another station, you, you were doing. I was fight. getting in Los Angeles. Was getting a whole thing about you guys putting competition, sex stuff. Was going mm, the guy having right. in a church and all of that stuff. Yeah, it's it's, 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 it's oh, yeah. O&A party rock. Does that, does yeah. that mean anything? O&A party rock. Yeah. yeah. Do you know what Wow is? Yes. What is, what is it? it? Wow! 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 Yeah, wow! W O W. What is yeah. wow? Yeah, wow! It has something to do with our show. Yeah. Wow! No. Wow! No. Yeah, no. Mm. Right. Wow! Well, we just started. That's we, do, we, we don't do it that much. Been, so yeah. We don't do it that much. You might recognize it as Flash Friday. Okay. Oh, Speaking like of ripping story. off, don't yeah. who's even Flash started. Friday? Yeah. Fucking like us. Oh, That's stinks. stupid. Tom Lick ass. <laughs> anyway, who's at the club this week in New York? Uh, everybody. Good okay. con everybody. <laughs> everybody. I mean, I don't want all of the seven Mike, stars. Michael Richards? Huh? Oh, Michael Richards? Yeah, plug. No, because you guys, you all, uh, I even want to say. Name one comic who's there, I Jamie. know, I know, I know. For example, oh, hey. Jamie, name one comic who's there. Jamie, just say Michael Richards is going to be there. You, Dan Cook is my friend, buddy. Yeah. Jamie well, could be, know you could be the president. Here. You <laughs> could be the fucking president. <laughs> Why? I can see you at a podium getting asked a question and just fucking going like, if you Aries. Want, when are we getting out of Iraq? It's a big country. Did you just say Aries Spears? Yeah. Tremendous thief. Oh, Tree here we go. I knew I, if I <laughs> said only guy anybody I said he's going to That's pick not up. true. That's what? not true. I'm a huge supporter of comedians. It's yeah. not true. Yeah. yeah. Aries Spears is a thief. And you know what he is, don't you? Oh, yeah. Former cast member of Mad. That's right. TV. Yeah, and he worked with Damon Wayne right now on his new show. Uh, you know what Damon Wayne's is? 
A brother of other uh, Damon Wayne's, uh, Wayne's uh, brothers. Mm -hmm. <laughs> what the fuck? Hey, Excuse go. me. Excuse me. <laughs> you guys going All right, me. listen, we got to wrap I should have just said nigger. <laughs> oh, 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 man. Oh, R. Nelson. <laughs> <laughs> what do you say, Jamie? Say it once, just Buddy. for old time's sake. Say it what, what shall I say? Bigger. The word. Say bigger. The, bigger. 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 Yeah. Okay, guys, you picked on me now. Now no, say, now say no. no. Now say no. nickel. No. No. <laughs> and we will edit All that right. together. <laughs> All right, guys, no, you're buddy. great. Thank no. you very much. Right, Jamie, say I no love you guys. Hold on. Hold on, let me wrap this up. Yeah. Jamie, before you come back on the show, you got to do a little research. You got to understand our show. You, you don't listen to our show, which is fine. You're a busy guy. No, but, don't but I, forget. I'm working at the 2 o'clock, 3 uh, o'clock in the morning. I'm, yeah, I'm right. fine. You know, I mean, you've got to look at this. In L.A., get an XM. Listen for a couple of weeks, and then we're going to test you. Why don't we get Jamie okay. an XM? We can get Jamie Miss not an XM. No, yeah, let's get, get him, him an XM. I, I get an XM, right and right next time right. I'm in here, I'll you test me everything. We have one for him, then? Because we're very yeah, sharp here, right Jamie. Now. We know when people Stop. are like kind of... Okay, okay. Don't get on my case, please, right. guys. Jamie I'm going to do it. No, we, uh, we <laughs> one of the best clubs in L.A., if not the best club. Beautiful fucking club. The Laugh Factory. Badass place. Once he gets rid of all the hacks, it would be a really good place. Hey, hold on. And we backed you up on your N-word, Ben, even though I don't know like it, but I, I we, know why you did it. I, I backed my boy uh, uh, for that for that reason. Uh, so right. we, Jamie's yeah, always been cool to Thank me. You, uh, I've been perform I perform. Right. Jamie, just right. try to try to banish from my car. All right. <laughs> yeah. Good luck. All right. <laughs> I drive home. Opie, what do you got? You going to the phone or something? <laughs> yeah, we have to because uh, it was a very busy day. We're almost forgetting that we did the eggnog drinking contest today. Right. Uh, eggnog, yes. Pat uh, <laughs> Pat won it again this year. Yes, he did. set a new record: seventy five double shots of eggnog. We did the the baby bird. And we got our own Sam that we sent home early on Hi, the phone. Hi, Sam. Sam, what's I, up? I, uh, I got the video. It's uh, compressing now, and it'll be up in YouTube in 15 minutes. Oh, All right, here's the, problem with, uh, here's the problem with the video, though, because, I mean, with YouTube, it's going to hang out for about 24 hours before it's available in the, uh, in the, in the search, search. In the regular put a, search. Put a link up on... Uh, on uh, Opie and Anthony dot com, and then we'll put one on Whack Bag and put right. one on other message boards, and it'll be great. And Everyone also, they it. could uh, search it out by just uh, searching out your account, OA Videos. Yep, that's the username, OA Videos. All one word, OA Videos. But uh, the first video clip and many more from the eggnog drinking contest are going up as we speak. It's to Sam spread on the like wildfire. This yeah, you one. guys, help us out on this one. Let's make this really viral. I don't think it's going to have much of a problem, but let's really push no, this one. No, I think uh, the puking on the face. Hey, where's that? You show face. Jamie that picture from Pat. Yeah. He wasn't over at Free FM. This yeah, this is, happened, this is what happened today. Show. The pictures this are a real photo. The pictures are up on Opie and Anthony. A guy com. throwing up on another guy. That's eggnog. Throwing up in his mouth. Oh, my God. I saw it from the other room. Yeah. Oh, it's amazing. Fantastic. Isn't it, this is, it's almost beautiful. Yeah. It's almost beautiful. It's art. It is beautiful. That is artwork. Is Sam is going to be working on video clips all weekend long, so thank can, you, Sam. Can I, can I, can I do Rapidly. something? Can uh, I uh, can I yes. plug something in here? Absolutely. Laughfactory.com. Go see Joe Rogan. Go see everybody. They are wonderful guys. I love all of the comedians. We love you, Jamie. You know, it's just, uh, please, don't put me on the spot like that, nah, Joe. Jamie's good. Uh, I love you guys. One in Los Angeles. And to support the Laugh Factory here in New York on 42nd Street, it really is a cool club. When, I mean, he, yeah. when he said, uh, can I plug something, I was going to hand him a fork. Uh, <laughs> oh, oh, no. Oh, 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 I love a God. Bobby, no. <laughs> just, <laughs> we all just <laughs> get along. I was a little confused, that's <laughs> all. All that shit could be stopped, though, if you just stop hecklers. That's what people need Yeah, you got to stop hecklers. That was quick. And ban the video. Phones yeah. there, Jamie. Yeah. I I have a, a band that they they cannot. Don't come you in. dare ban. No, them. they have a sign in the club. You cannot videotape. Yeah. Yeah. Those people can't them. read signs. And Jamie, yeah. well, yes, sir. I will no. end with this. I have yeah. been your, I have been your club, and I, I love your club in LA. <laughs> I'd love club. to have you back again. I love anytime. your club in LA. Thank it's, you, it's sir. A, it is a good place for comedy. Okay.